everybody, and welcome to the AWC Grand Finals. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Aya. I'm going to be your host today. We're with Zico, Venruki, and Super Tease. So many teams in both EU and NA, Ven, fought long and hard to get here, and it's all coming to a head. Today, we're finding out the EU and NA champions. Yeah, still everyone in this top four is in the tournament, but it's going to be a long road for some of these competitors. I mean, they're going to have to win series after series after series. For some, yeah, they're, they're kind of just chilling right now, like Echo in the grand finals, just having fun, relaxing. They get to see what's going on. Same with Where's Gordy. They had a stellar performance yesterday. They're going to get to see, kind of feel out their competition as the day progresses. Uh, but yeah, we're in for a very exciting uh, day of games. Yeah, most definitely. And, uh, you know, obviously a new meta at the moment, Super Tease, kind of some new compositions. We're seeing a lot of players adopt new specs as well. Oh, <laughs> we are, we're cursed again. We are cursed. Uh, much like my microphone, we didn't see any Rep Paladins uh, <laughs> yesterday in competitive play. Uh, the teams that made it to the Grand Finals, Chanimal, Meh, and Waz, they focused on this rogue Destro preservation evoker in North America. We saw Where's Gordy with the Mage Lock, Miss Weaver. So these types of compositions were doing surprisingly well um, with Echo advancing against the agents in this series, just with insane play. They just completely neutralized z -Pi. wasn't able to get anything going in this game. They were able to completely eradicate him stay ahead on mana, stay ahead on pressure. I really loved watching how offensive Echo was playing together. Matt was utilizing his utility on this evoker excellently, getting crowd control like this moment onto Asgrath to win the game, then getting aggressive with Fire Breath and closing the match with just raw damage. So really good synergy between those teams. We saw insane games between Liquid and Luminosity Gaming. Sidu had this kind of hero moment in this game where he kept his team alive at 43% dampening with absolutely no mana left to buy enough time for Mez to go for the kill when he was on nothing at this point. Definitely the highlight game. If you missed this game from yesterday, you're going to want to see it. Uh, and I believe that we've got them potentially up on the lower bracket as a rematch. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing these kind of Titans possibly going head to head again. Absolutely. And it's really high stakes as well today, Zico, $300,000 prize pool. So that is a, uh, that's 70,000 for first place. So you can bet these teams are going to be bringing their, their best performance to the table. Yep, every match counts here, you know, and also the medals are going to be handed out today. So we got first place, second place, third place medal. If you get that uh, fourth place, you don't get a medal and you get uh, still, I think, $15,000 for fourth place. <laughs> you still uh, got $15,000. Yeah, I mean, it's still a decent chunk of, uh, of money for sure. But uh, compared to first place, $70,000 there's definitely quite some difference right there. So. I uh, definitely want to be bringing your A game today, and uh, it's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, exciting games. We have our first elimination series, you know, like you guys mentioned, nobody has yet to be eliminated. Yesterday was all about that upper bracket business, but today it is going to be do or die for all of these teams. You know, none of them really feeling too confident, uh, you know, except for maybe Echo uh, over here in Europe, uh, sitting in the best seat in the house. Yeah, that's really true. I mean, we've had a chance to talk a lot to um, many of these players and these teams, just kind of how they're feeling, what they're going to be running. This was, of course, before we headed into the weekend. And you're definitely right, Zico. Just like a, kind of a common theme of everybody just being kind of nervous of what these players are going to bring in with all the new compositions that people are implementing. But first up, it kind of already got mentioned. We've got My Way facing off against Admirals Esports Ven. I, I'm, I'm really pumped for this team, Admirals Esports. You know, they came up from the the gauntlet earlier this weekend on Friday, and now they're kind of just really showing up to play here. Yeah, I mean, there's really no doubt about it. They had a perform uh, phenomenal performance in the, uh, the qualifier rounds, like you mentioned. Um, and I, I think this team just looks really prepared. And uh, looking at Twitter after their losses, they seem like they have a really good attitude. They had some really close games against Echo. And I feel like they might be the team to beat that goes through that lower bracket. I just feel like that with the way they're playing, with how much practice and preparation they put in with their different compositions, I think they're going to be kind of a deadly force for all of these teams. That being said, my way is also kind of adapted. Uh, we've seen Tony actually pick up the Retribution Paladin. They've been playing that Cupid. They were looking good also, um, but I, I do worry for them because they did lose against the agents. And I would say Admiral Esports is very closely mirrored to the agents in terms of their compositions and strats and uh, skills. So I think they're going to have to figure something out for this first game if they want to have a chance at winning. 
Yeah, I mean, they've got the definitely the capability to do that. We know that they did tremendously well um, over the course of the Cups in AWC earlier this season. So we'll see what they do here. But like we've said, it's elimination bracket. They are facing uh, the possibility of getting knocked out of this tournament in Admirals Esports. They, they already got knocked down here by Echo. So quite quite a lot of sharks in the water, as you would put it, Super Tease, for the for the lower bracket. I mean, every team is a shark in the top four at this point. And with the meta shift, basically any team has the possibility of making a run through this bracket uh, and claiming the championship. So very excited to see what types of compositions come out from this. We've got our predictions here. Uh, it looks oh. like we're actually mirrored similarly. Vinriki Zika the same, I am myself the same. I'm almost wondering if I should change mine now. Uh, Admirals Esports though, I feel like that one game with Rat <laughs> Warrior, like. If that game, Waz was one HP, like we got a screenshot of a Blizzo, Waz was one HP. If he was dead, they're in the upper bracket, and who knows, maybe they're the ones in the grand finals. So I'm still kind of leaning that Admirals Esports uh, could have a deep run through this lower bracket and take it all. Uh, you guys seem to think the agents are going to take it, um, which I'm pretty curious about, Van and Zico. Uh, what is making you think the agents could take this entire thing? Well, I made a prediction before we actually saw anything. But just <laughs> now you want to change it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to. I don't want to change it. I think I'm going to still uh, go with this. I feel like you know the agents. Uh, they definitely did not look ready for the rogue Destro lock that we saw yesterday. You know, they tried out a bunch of different comps, but I do feel like agents is kind of one of those teams that always rise up. And uh, you know, in Europe, always it's always between you know Echo and the agents. It's always between these two kind of titan teams going back and forth. In some metas, Echo are the better team. In some matters, the agents are the better team. And, um, you know, even now, I think if the agents get a match against Admiral Esports, it's going to be a close one. And honestly, anyone could take that one. And then I think the agents are going to take those lessons that they learned and apply them uh, if they do make it to the grand finals. So uh, I definitely wouldn't want to count them out, even though they did get 3 0 by Echo. I think they, they did gather a lot of intel there. And yeah, number one, don't mirror them. Like, just don't try that again that that looked very bad and uh, yeah number two maybe have a little bit more faith in the uh, warrior and yeah just see what they can do uh knowing you know a little bit more what echo actually will pick well sid you said you wanted to change your prediction what what would you change it to i'm starting to lean more to echo just a little bit maybe not though and then i second guess uh, that change easy now my own speech um <laughs> I, I think admirals esports can do a, a lower bracket run here curious to see what their comp's going to be for red hunter because red hunter is a little bit different than a lot of the other current meta compositions are they going to start with some sort of spell cleave are they going to bring in uh, their ret warrior um, I'm, I'm kind of imagining they're going to be playing their ret warrior just because of the agents utilizing their ret warrior um, against my way yesterday so it's probably going to be the same kind of case here um, and my way really struggled with that like we saw them bring in Eritros they tried Warlock at a certain point that didn't work so uh, I'm thinking my prediction here is probably Admirals Esports can take close this out 3-0 yeah, it might be proved to be a pretty difficult one for my way, but we'll find out soon enough if they are up to the challenge. But one thing's for sure, I mean, even if you do end up winning this one, then you have to go on to face the agents and then potentially Echo. Like, there's just no more easy routing for today. Like we already mentioned, there's a $150,000 prize pool for region, so $300,000 on the table of, of prize pool money in first place seventy thousand dollars so that is uh, i mean even every every basically everyone's getting a chunk of that today so even fourth place gets fifty thousand or fifteen thousand dollars like zico mentioned earlier so quite a lot of pressure on the line i mean this is the this is basically the finals for for every every for both regions so this is kind of what every single player has been working for today and there's just been like there's so many moments i feel like over the season these teams have really been developed just like looking back Zico do you have a favorite moment from this season um uh, that's a hard question I, I, feel I know like I'm sorry general... I just threw you a big one <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, uh, it's been it's been interesting to see a lot of these teams. I feel like it's been a story of a lot of new teams kind of coming together because uh, at least in Europe, it's been kind of, you know, we got Zipai's team kind of clumped up together and then we got Waz's uh, team kind of clumped up together. But now we've really seen a lot of new players. Well, not necessarily maybe new players, but people who haven't been competing a whole lot kind of get added into the mix. You know, we've seen uh, players, uh, you know, returning as well, like Luxia. If you uh, remember, he was a competitor back in the day and then now he kind of joined my way my way kind of went from that being that jungle only squad to really branching out and trying other things and uh, you know uh, 
uh, Echo picked up Matt. You know, a lot of these teams kind of, the, there was a big roster mix up. But here are our beautiful uh, medals that we can Ooh. see right here. The gold medal for first place, silver second, and of course bronze for third place. And uh, they're obviously dragon themed as well, which uh, just fits the expansion perfectly. Those are cool. I like those. Little, little dragons on the side there. They look like the Blizzard art bars. I wonder if that's kind of how they're modeled after. The, like <laughs> the things that are, is that what they're called? The things that are on side of the, the side of the abilities in the default UI? I don't yeah, know. But remember yeah, if they yeah, changed them from griffins to dragons. I think they're still griffins. Oh yeah, they are griffins. Oh yeah, never mind. Wow. All right. Well, anyways, game number one getting started. It's my way versus Admirals Esports elimination round here. First up series for the EU championship. Yeah, and this is very similar to what we saw yesterday. My way um, having a really difficult time with this composition, so not a surprise that Admiral Esports locks it in blind. Let's see what they can get done. I think a huge adaptation uh, for Admiral Esports to actually win this one is to just make sure they're hitting anyone. Like, go after any target if they can. If Cassie's doing too good of a job kiting, make sure you're making swaps on Luxia, make sure you're making swaps onto Tony, and eventually that consistent damage from this uh, kind of punch monk uh, is, could potentially- Whoa! Oh, Swap he's dead! What? Well, so much for my prediction. Uh, oh. So there's a big difference between my way yesterday and today. Luxia is also a fist weaving monk. He was playing Preservation Evoker yesterday and just running out of mana, really struggling, having a hard time. Tony, Tony's he's, he's putting on a show. He's loving oh, it. Oh my God. All right, so Luxia coming on Miss Weaver Monk gonna be really important here uh, in this series, putting the first point on the board. And you love to see it when the reds don't bubble. Like that's, that's the best feeling ever <laughs> at that point. A lot of stress is off the table. You get one win, but I, I, I'm imagining that, you know, they're not gonna let that happen uh, more than once. This is a really quick uh, kill from my way here in game number one as we're about Watch to check it, it out in the replay. So next in Luxia, look, Luxia's playing the Fist Weaver. He's got the Fey Line stomped down. It's just a dog pile of damage in the midfield. Luxia did a great job just walking off himself being the target and then just immediately sets up damage uh, onto Swapsy. So what could have next done in this position? Swapsy has Shield of Vengeance up. Yeah, he's got Divine Protection, but then that defense falls, I think, and then he just immediately dies just right after that life cocoon here he really needed to make some sort of trade it was still the avenging wrath from tony still the beast of wrath from Casu, still luxia getting uptime no crowd control onto any dps so you've got to be really heads up like you have to trade cooldown after cooldown and otherwise you're just going to disappear yeah i mean yeah he had restore he had life cocoon I, I feel like the beginning of the game is the most chaotic too like during the avenging wrath like you just got to make the appropriate trades and uh, unfortunately, they didn't. I feel like they timed their burst really well. As soon as that Divine Protection faded, he just instantly died. It looked like Blizzo wanted to intervene him, but it was just a little bit too late. So I would say next, Swapsy and Blizzo probably caught off guard from that one. It's unlikely we see another game like that play out where it's like a 30-second death. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. 500k DPS? 500k? That, that's... That's, yeah, that was, wait, that was Swapsy's team? Swapsy's team hit 500k DPS? I believe it. I mean, think about it. The Mistweaver monks are cleaving. There's pets, right? Like, there's a lot of pets when you're fighting against a BM hunter. You have two uh, extra targets that are cleaving. Okay, so that's fake damage. Possible. There's no way it's possible to hit 500k DPS. Like, each player would have to be doing 100 and something, 175. There's no way. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Lots of cleave in this particular matchup. We have a, the four targets, and this is, I just... These like these rep paladin uh, fist weaving, a mirror matchups. They're so chaotic, right? Like the amount of burst damage that can come in, it can be very unexpected. Like you have to really be prepared to make those trades. You have to stay ahead of the damage, um, make the trades preemptively so you don't fall behind because it's really momentum based. As the misweaver monk, you do not want to have to run away. Uh, you want to stay in there as long as possible. And the best way to do that is just try to rotate through your damage mitigation. Uh, so there's not any of those panic moments where there's overlap, but it can be really hard to avoid. I'm just ch chuckling at uh, Tony Farrell to taking a look at the the details for swaps over there in the bottom right. But yeah, definitely go check out Luxia's stream. Go support him. We've got uh, a couple streams from my way going on at the moment. So what do you what do you guys think of his UI? We haven't done this before. Nothing. You can't really like see it. right now since he's not it's a game. It's clean, but, simple yeah? UI. 
Maybe like, maybe like, I know some players, like he's got it some t some of his abilities, like his paralyzed, he got three times on his action bar, healing elixirs, a few abilities he got multiple times so that he's reminded that they're off cooldown. So like, the only thing I could see is maybe duplicating other ones as well, like leg sweep and life cocoon a few times with the visual on the action bar, just so your eyes can glance down and see immediately. That's why they do that? Yeah, yeah. that's why I do it. I have, no. I have, I have incarn on my bar like 30 times, so I remember when really? it's off cooldown. Yeah. Oh, new tech. I just have like a weak aura for my most important rotations, like directly under my my tune. That's, That's more of a PvE way. thing. My, mine is yeah. just like the bootleg, no add-on method of <laughs> putting a bunch <laughs> of tooltips on the action bar this so I can see my cooldowns that are coming up. But both teams are staying uh, with the same compositions here. This is going to be a slugfest. This is going to be dirty. This is going to be nasty. <laughs> this is going to be brutal. Um, both these teams are risking a lot here, right? Like you, you're getting $10,000 on this series if you win it and $15,000 more dollars if you win the next one. Like you're... you're like what is it seventy thousand for first like seven xing your money almost if you can make it all the way back there into the in the grand finals so this is this is tight this is going to be insane between these teams that they're both bringing these all out aggressive compositions right now and their last chance uh to make it in season one yeah i'm excited Absolutely. to see no you I go gonna, i was gonna say i'm excited to see how this one does play out it's just such a chaotic matchup I really don't feel for these players in this particular situation because really anything can happen. Players' health is spiking. As a Mistweaver Monk, you're just having a panic attack the entire game. So who can navigate those waters better? Right now, my way is up 1-0 with a quick win over Admiral Esports on the Grand Arena. Let's see if they can strike back here in game number two. Immediately just charging into the midfield here. Uh, next is going after Swapsy, it looks like at the moment. Uh, and we can see Luxia as well in the fight. They're going after the Hunter Kasu. Immediately trading some defensive cooldowns, trying to reach some damage and avoid the fight. He needs to kite and avoid as much as possible here. Life Cocoon immediately onto Swapsy. Next is not making the same mistake as game number one uh, during this initial cooldown trade, but they're caught in a triple leg sweep. Excellent setup by my way. Are they gonna be able to close it out? Big heals come in and Swapsy looks like he will recover the initial exchange. Now Blizzo on that Arms Warrior, he gets his Warbreaker way faster than any other class in this game. He can immediately start bursting, but it's actually Swapsy still on the back foot. Divine Shield. And Blizzo goes for a fear at the same time. It's a bit of an overlap. If they don't net a kill onto my way, I, I mean, I think it might be over for them. Yeah, this is big trouble for Swapsy. He has the blessing and protection, but he's on forbearance. He won't be able to access it for just a little while longer. Lots of pressure here on Akasu, though, as he's forced to try to kite away. Just taking way too much damage. At the same time, though, Swapsy is getting low. Might have to trade out the aspect of the turtle. No, it's like because oh. Swapsy's just so low. Big heals coming in from next as he connects a triple leg sweep. Nicely done there by next, saving the day. He's got the life cocoon, needs to make the trade potentially at the same time. Luxia is getting low. So back and forth. Finley Mash are these two teams. But it looks like Luxia might fall. He needs to get some heals. Maybe the blessing of protection. No, he will stabilize. It's just such a chaotic matchup. Uh, just back and forth, ping-ponging health bars. Kasu now down to 10%. Caught in Stormbolt. Trinkets out immediately with Roar of Sacrifice. But if they get a trap on next, it's game over. Triple Exu! I think this is game over. Blizzo Trinkets, but he's got nothing really to assist Swapsy. Divine Protection seems like it's enough for Swapsy. Bolstering his defense. Triple Blinding Light from Swapsy. Blinds the whole team, preventing the, the win here. Now Luxia into the stun. Tony crossed as well. Has Sanctuary for this. Trades it a little bit late, but better late than never here. As Luxia is finally now able to connect. And they still need to look to secure that freezing trap. Six seconds away. Can they kill him with no CC. That would be absolutely insane here. Gas is still getting blasted. They've got Blessing and Protection on both sides. Double Leg Sweep on DR, though. Luxia, is he going to be able to survive here? One second left on that Leg Sweep for Tony. He's got Bop in his back pocket. Is he going to trade it? Luxia is bravely just going at him with no Blessing and Protection at the moment here. Swapsy's activating the Avenging Wrath. Luxia trades with Diffuse. Now they're going after Swapsy. Swapsy trinkets right away to break the crowd control onto his healer. Double Fear out from Blizzard to try and slow it down for this last second of the Freezing Trap into a Paralyzed. Is that enough? Huge heals come out. Swapsy he survives now. Luxia is behind. He ports back behind the pillar. Blizzo leaps after him to try and close the match, but Swapsy can't stay on target. He's going after Tony Farrell instead. Tony's cutting away from Swapsy. Luxia is now the one in trouble. Has Trinket, but basically no real cooldowns to trade. They're just going to bop him preemptively. Keep him aggressive. Keep them going for the kill because they're so close to it. Swapsy once again gets low. Trades Divine Protection. A full trap on his healer. They need to not break this freezing trap and connect damage at the same time. They're not forcing the protection. They need to get bop on this push. Blizzo might just die randomly. Bop is forced onto Swapsy and he survives. Kasu still has Turtle. Oh, Luxia no. still has Trinket, but Swapsy is just outright taken down in my way. Our brute forcing their way through this series in the lower bracket. They're trying to cross kill Kasu with one second left on the leg sweep, but 
I don't think they're gonna have the damage to do it. And Kasu will recover. And my way have leveled up from day one to oh, day two. No. They, they took that defeat against the agents personally. And Luxia is bringing in a Fist Weaver Monk of his own and showing what he can do. Could I call him the One Punch Man with how many times he's one shotting Swapsy? I mean, this is just incredible. And I feel like, even though, you know, it's not completely over yet. My way, they're up 2 0 right now. Admiral Esports can obviously battle it back. But if you're the agents watching this, like, uh oh. Like what? You're gonna run the same composition, and I don't know. I don't know who's supposed to win this matchup. Um, but it, my way is definitely doing a good job so far with this hunter. Cast is doing a devastating amount of damage, and it's put them in a position where now they're up two to zero. Oh, and uh, unfortunately for Swapsy and Blizzo, they uh, they're potentially about to be eliminated in this next game. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, they were definitely the underdog coming into this my way, but here's that second victory on hook point, Sid. I feel like it's so fast that I basically missed it because I was looking at the other team thinking like it's turning around, but then Swapsy just dies out of nowhere. This is a little bit earlier on in the game, I think, where they got Divine Shield or the Freezing Trap, uh, but they overlapped Fear and Divine Shield uh, is the only main criticism I would see here is I feel like Fear and a Defensive was used a couple of times. Uh, at the same time, now fear is not a hundred percent safe because sometimes you know the enemies will trink it out and just kill you. Um, but I would have maybe liked to have seen those cooldowns a little bit more split up. Looks like he got pressured pretty heavily, but he always made sure that he was in a, a good position to be able to escape to his portal. They trade blessing and protection preemptively so the monk doesn't fall behind. That's really important in the matchup. You want to keep your monk aggressive. That allowed Luxia to get a triple stun at this point. And I think this is the triple stun that got blessing and protection in a few seconds uh, after the freezing trap. And with blessing and protection out of the way after this, there's just nothing left for him to survive. Divine shield and uh, blessing and protection are the only buttons that are really going to save him from potentially dying so this is where the busted protection happens and they actually purged it off is what i think that i missed so they purged it off with casu's trank shot and then just killed him outright uh with that he thought he was going to be safe but you're never safe against my way apparently no i mean this is this feels like a night and day difference from from yesterday i mean i, I i'm curious what they i mean obviously they've changed up their composition but do you think they just like practiced all night then to get here to get to this point Probably. I mean, that's what I would be doing. I'd be yeah. getting into the war games, playing against that composition. If that basically they knew, okay, so we lost to Warrior, Rhett, Mistweaver. If we can't beat that, we have no shot. So if I was them, I would have just been practicing all day, all night um, to try to figure it out because they know they're basically going to be going back to back against Admiral Esports and then the agents. So obviously that practice has paid off, uh, bringing in the Fistweaver Monk of their own. I think it provides them a lot more just overall healing provides a lot more overall damage and instead of them being the ones on the back foot the entire game they can actually play aggressive and having castle on the hunter allowing him to use that trank shot to remove you know blessing and protection is a nice little advantage that you have as that hunter you can actually get those dispels off uh, and that can really aid um your offense a lot like we saw in that last game it really confuses me when they do this view with uh luxia and cassu's camera i'm like wait a minute what why is why is Luxie on the right side? It's just my way. The only ones with cameras, I think, today. Uh, so they're yeah. trying to put on a show, exactly. right? Like I, I feel like Luxia is always streaming. Same with Tony Farrell, uh, Casio occasionally, I think, as well. Um, so they're definitely mm -hmm. here to like put a performance on for their fans. I know there's a lot of Luxia fans out there right now, and I feel like <laughs> if, you've got to be pretty happy with this performance right now because oh, yeah. Admirals Esports, man, they were one game away from eliminating or sending Echo down, go down to the lower bracket, and now My Way is up 2-0 here. Like these are huge names, like Swapsy, Blizzo, Next, Jamie. Like this is a big team. And this is going to boost their confidence on the side of my way if they can win, because this means they have a comp that can also beat the agents' Rhett Warrior. So they might be shaking a little bit if they can take it here uh, on Runes of Lordaeron. Perhaps just going up for a second to, to maybe take a little bit of a <laughs> breather here. walk off some of that nervous uh, energy. <laughs> maybe go to the bathroom a little bit. You don't want to have to, you know, in the middle of the match here, because this is going to be really intense here. Uh, game number three, Runes of Lordaeron. It's match points. You couldn't ask for a better conclusion to a series possibly, but Admirals Esports, I'm sure with every round is just figuring out something better that they could do uh, in the matchup. So in my opinion, my way, they just want to end this now, you know, don't let them get a second chance to figure this out and come back in the series. Definitely. I mean, you you nailed it when you said said Admirals Esports. I mean, this is a big roster, multi BlizzCon champions on this team. Um, and they're my way, basically one game away from sending them out of this entire tournament. And these two games, they kind of just made it look like, like 
like butter. Um, so game number three, I mean, it's going to be, yeah, I, I think you, you can see how intense it is if you look at Luxia's camera just on the right side there. It's definitely like bouncing his foot or something. Really intense conversation. Looks like it's happening uh, behind the scenes here. I, I imagine one of the teams used their delay timer just because the draft has been uh, finished for a couple of seconds and we're still waiting. But I mean, there's probably a lot of discussions been heading, heading, happening behind the scenes. I mean, think about what's on the line. Uh, winning this game means you get a medal first off and then a, a lot more money. So if I was Admiral Esports, I'd be taking my time, like trying to assess what is going on. Like what, what can we do better? I do, I think there's a possibility and this is kind of like, this is a cheese tactic that I use sometimes when I'm playing solo shuffle and a lot of hunters are gonna hate me for this one, but I kind of oh, wonder if they could abuse the pet, like just go after the pet a lot more in the matchup. Um, it's difficult for Mistreaver monks to heal it. So maybe putting pressure on the pet. If you do end up killing off two pets, then you can just train down the hunter. He loses a lot of damage. Um, so that's maybe one tactic that they try to put uh, it in their favor, but um, it, maybe they just can't. If Cassie just has too good a pet control, uh, I'm not really sure. But Admiral Esports, one thing's for sure, they got to figure something out. Here we go. It's match point. It's Runes of Lorder on. It would be a fitting final resting place as it is a cemetery. $10,000 on the line in this singular game as my way look to secure at least third place here in this best or top four. Will they be able to do it? It is going to be an absolute bloodbath, an absolute slugfest in the middle of the map, and they need to be careful. This damage is so high, so intense. Swapsy immediately trading his Divine Protection and Shield of Vengeance, but they've already cut through that defense quite quickly. Is next ready for the next hit here in just a moment. They go for a fear out from Blizzo on a Tony Farrell. Good crowd control nice setup on the luxio with that leg sweep although he has pre-dampened harmed and diffused magic so he's looking all right in this position now swapsy caught in a stun next caught in a stun a blast of damage across the board a blinding light on the two players swapsy is all by himself on match point right now and next immediately respects this trading his medallion and life cocoon onto swapsy to keep him aggressive kasu trying to kite away from the fight they're going after the hunter a lot more here in game number three a scatter shot on the blizzo holding him back for now kasu trying to reposition double stun luxio in trouble Trinket Life Cocoon comes out. They're trying to shred through that shield. Looks like they're going to switch targets instead now. On to Kasu. Wait for that Life Cocoon to subside. Swapsy now on the back foot. It's match point. He can't afford any mistakes at this moment in time. And next takes the gamble and gets a big heal just in time. Yep, nicely done. Swapsy's topped off. Now they're continuing the pressure here on Deluxia. But anyone could fall at any moment if they're not paying attention. Luxia really has no defense. He's incredibly low. Might want to trade out the Fortifying Brew. Might need something here from Tony to actually keep him alive. He doesn't trade out the Blessing of Protection. Looks like uh, Luxia will be able to sustain himself during that moment. A swap here on a Tony. He's going to use his Shield of Vengeance to try to just bolster a his triple. defense. Beautiful triple life sweep coming in from Luxia. And those are just such key moments in this match where you can really isolate a target. A full trap now on the next, but it is Luxia Luxi that's still in so much trouble. What is he going to do? Blessing Protection gets traded out there by Tony to keep him alive. Good backup. And now it's my way looking to get aggressive here on a Swapsy. I mean, Admiral's Esports are in a good position. They got Trinket out of Luxia. They got Blessing and Protection out of Tony Farrell. They have a win condition on swapping to the Mistweaver, and they still have two major defensives, Divine Shield and Blessing and Protection. Dispel on that hammer adjusts. That's trouble for Luxia. Swapsy's going for it. War Stomp out, but Life Cocoon will connect. Luxia will survive the stun. Now he's the one to get aggressive, and Tony Farrell's got Avenging Wrath available. When is he going to pull the trigger on this? Wake of Ashes is coming up in two seconds. Beast of Wrath is already rolling. Cassius' damage is going to start mounting. Luxia's falling behind. Next is falling behind. Is Luxia going to fall first? Tony's in a fear. He bubbles out of the fear. He knows they need to win the game, but Swapsy eats the freezing trap, but they go for the triple. They're swapping to next. Can they kill him here? They need one more second. They oh, might be able to do it. It's oh. match point. They're so close. A huge heal comes in, I think, from Swapsy at that moment in time to keep next alive for a little bit longer as he's managing to power through. His life cocoon is coming up in four seconds. He's going to have Trinket. Their team is in such a good position. Tony has no bubble. They could swap to him. He goes for a defensive blinding light. They're trying to pause the game. My way are trying to find their composure, but they've basically got nothing left to keep this game going. Shield of Vengeance comes up from Tony. He's down at 30%. They're trying to go next. after next, but will they be able to take him down? Triple blinding light out from Swapsy. That's going to let them set up to possibly finish this. No stun lock, though. They're holding on to the stun. And next now is in trouble. Life Cocoon has already been cut through. Double leg sweep here. It looks like he's going to survive to it. One second left. Needs to trinket. He gets through it without trinketing, but they actually broke Life Cocoon. They broke right through it. Luxia is just dying through it at this point. Somehow now recovering and trying to keep his team offensive, trying to keep them in the match, but they're still so far behind.
Ooh, nice triple sweep. Now next could be in trouble as he is the main target in this match. He doesn't really have many defenses, but Luxia is falling further and further behind. Hammer of Justice trades in. Blizzo also getting low. There's so much damage for both of these teams. His dampening is getting higher, and cooldowns are just being burned through on both sides. Swap here on to Tony. He's forced to kite away, but he could easily fall. There's no cooldowns left, and that's it. That's a paralyze onto Luxia from next. Slowing down his healing. That was a beautiful setup. Tony was forced to use the Divine Shield earlier to save Luxia, and uh, Admiral Esports really capitalized on that opportunity, keeping themselves in the match. We're just so far behind at a certain point. I, I, it was when uh, Tony Farrell had to Divine Shield to aid Luxia. It's just at that point, like, you could basically kill either target, and it's become so hard to heal uh, as a healer when you know two targets are basically in a checkmate position. If either one of them gets stunned, they could die, uh, and you've only got, like, one cooldown, or in some cases, zero cooldowns. You just really don't even have a decision to make at that point. It's so tough uh, to be able to survive, and with how bursty it is as well, like, I think it was right around this point where we see Tony uh, utilize the Divine Shield, maybe in a little bit from now. Um, it might have been this setup right here because he got no medallion. Looks like he has no medallion. And it was so scary, this double fear. So Tony bubbles this double fear. And, you know, did he need to, right? That's, I guess, the big question. Did he need to? And if that freezing trap, you know, if that freezing trap landed uh, onto next, maybe they get a clean setup. They, they're so close to killing him. Look at that. He's at like 10%. I think Blizzo must have got like an intervene off at that point they had any cross cc for him there like all these little tiny things um do you think switching to next like that's probably like a, just a desperate thing right because they're just so far behind because i don't know if i liked it i feel like they spent too much time on him at a certain was, point there's a lot of close calls on next but i mean it's just yeah this is such a different game than what we saw in game number one and game number two swapsy obviously being that main pressure point but in this game a swapsy was really stable so I don't know if they just totally changed their strategy. I don't know if it was just my way going after different targets or what it was, but Swapsy was able to hold on to his Divine Shield the entire game. Um, and he just looked really, really solid in terms of defense. So um, I wonder if they maybe could just put more attention onto Swapsy and pressure him, or if Swapsy is playing a lot different that makes that a uh, you know, really difficult strategy to pull off. But Dude. this game looks so much better for Admiral Luxia. Esports. Luxia is getting so much damage off. What? Like, and that's not pad pet damage. Like, he's almost a ret paladin. 4.4 million damage on the Mistweaver Monk here in this game. Like, oh my yep. god. Like, the fact that we've not seen him play it either in tournament play, like, I think he was I, just playing Evoker and Druid. Like, he's coming on this pretty strong. I almost wonder, like, I, I don't know if you've noticed it, but I feel like Tony is playing really defensive. He is. Like, yeah, he's playing game. at range the whole game. I don't know if I like that. I, I like feel yesterday like yesterday, too. You're spending so much time playing at range. Like, you're getting healed anyways by your monk. Like, I don't really know what the point of sitting out is and not actually getting out damage because Wopsy actually brutalized him on overall damage that game. So I wonder if that's something that he really needs to change up or I'm, I'm trying to understand like what, what the point of sitting back is. And he's doing it intentionally, right? He's not getting like CC'd away and just can't like catch up. It's a feral a mentality. I saw feral druids do that. You know, they like go in, poke their bleeds, and then like run around in circles away from the target a little bit. I feel like that might be like a little bit of the feral druid in him uh, when he's on the <laughs> rep paladin. That's still kind of lingering. Um, but he might also be just trying to dodge the fist weaving, maybe trying to make it like a little bit awkward because there's there's times where they need to like spread the enemies apart so they can get a freezing trap without it breaking to AOE. We'll see them drop like a ring of peace to bounce next away from Swapsy, and then they go for a trap out of that. So maybe they're trying to keep their distance to bait them to spread out because the monk's more mobile than the ret. So if the monk chases um, Tony, then they can land the trap. They're, why Why are they bringing Luxia off? There is no way that Luxia on the Mistweaver is the problem. Bro, there is no way that him on the... Dude, he is carrying on, on Mistweaver. Like, he, I want to say he's like the best Fistweaver we've seen so far based on like scoreboard overall pressure and like maintaining in, in the brunt of ret warrior. Like, why are they why? bringing him off the Mistweaver? He is this carrying is really right now on the Mistweaver. The, the map is this bigger. Is... I don't know. This, this is one of the, those decisions where if it works, we're going to be like, wow, like they are really <laughs> smart. Like we didn't see that one coming, but if it doesn't, it's going to be like, what is going on? I mean, you're up 2-0 <laughs> in the series playing this composition. You, you lose one game and you're going to throw it away. Uh, this is the matchup we saw yesterday and it did not go well for them, but maybe they feel like there's some sort of improvements that they could make. I, I feel like if that is the case though, like, Let's just think about it. Like, if my way actually thought that this was a better matchup, what what was the point of playing the Mistweaver to begin with, right? Like, wh why all of a sudden are we locking in the Evoker? Uh, is what I want to know. Like, why didn't they just lock this in blind if they got like a bunch of practice on this and the matchups looking better for them? 
Uh, why wouldn't you just lock it in blind? So uh, I, don't, I don't know how much faith I have in this, but if my way can pull it off, uh, I mean, they're going to look like geniuses. Yeah, because you can't even can't even like make the, the comfort pick argument because this is like a new respect for him for this expansion. And like he like you guys were saying, he looked really solid on Miss Weaver. So I mean, he was up 2-0. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. looking pretty solid. I mean, he's just one away from eliminating Admiral Esports. Admiral's mm -hmm. Esports. And there were so many close calls, too. It's not like that wasn't a close game. That's why, I mean, if I was them, I would just run it down mid. Do it. Just keep running it and just hope you, you know, the game goes a little bit more in your favor and you pull off a win. But uh, with the Evoker, they're going to have to rely on, you know, kiting a lot more. Um, what we saw yesterday from the agents against this composition is they kind of struggled when all they did was go after Kasu. But as soon as they like really mixed it up and they went after the Evoker, they went after the Rep Pout and as well, and kind of just all cleaved on one target at the same time. Um, and just make sure they're doing overall as much damage as possible. The matchup went a lot better. So I kind of wonder if that's what Admiral Esports uh, is going to be going for here. Yeah, definitely uh, a mystery, especially... Uh... Yeah, I mean, if you like, looking at the damage breakdown too, it was like twice as much damage, same amount of healing with with Lexia compared to Next, and uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm super curious. I can't wait to get this one started here. I think we're on another delay. Obviously, these teams are both taking it extremely seriously, and uh, which is why this draft, this particular draft, is uh, taking just a little bit. But I mean, versus you know, super teams. If you take like in a vacuum, a Miss Weaver, fist weaving Miss Weaver versus a uh, preservation evoker i mean what are the the key differences that are going to be really obvious in this matchup here um i mean it's going to be you're, you're going to be tankier like i don't think the evoker is going to be a target in this particular matchup the main problem is your mana your rep pound is going to take damage the whole game you're going to run out of mana and you'll lose a long game so what are the paths that they can navigate to win a fast game is really the question here. You're also going to avoid getting like triple leg swept because you're going to be all spread out as opposed to stacking up with the Rep Paladin on a Mistweaver Monk. So maybe they just want to spread them out, isolate them, and then go for a burst kill, something like this. But they're on a short clock. Like bringing in the Evoker defensively is going to feel better, but they'll have less time in the match overall. Hey, here we go. Yep, gates are open. Blizz is going to be charging in onto Kasu. Let's see if they can stay on target. It's just so crucial. You got as much damage as possible for Admiral Esports. Luxia going to be playing in the back line. But they're actually looking for more of like a crowd control strategy here. So a full trap here on next. Can they get a sleep out of it? Doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Kasu in a little bit of trouble as he gets rescued away by Luxia. Beautiful fire breath coming in. Remove some of those heal over time. In fact, Swapsy, 10% health. That was a close call. Do not want a repeat of game number one. Almost throwing it away there. What an insane amount of pressure coming in. And Nex has been having a really difficult time actually getting up healing. He's in a hammer of justice right now. He can't really connect to his target. My way is looking pretty good in the early stages of this game. Ooh, triple blinding light. How are they going to set up off of this here? They're purging. They got the oppressing roar freezing trap. Next is going to trinket that right away. He can't sit a 10 second crowd control. Luxia flying across the team, knocking them away from Kasu, trying to buy some time to get some space here. Swapsy's getting low. It's match point. $10,000 on the line. He can't afford not divine shielding again in this series as he is trying to stay on top of the hunter and keep the pressure rolling. Fire breath hits the entire team, purging off those renewing mists, trying to put him behind. But Kasu's struggling. Big spirit bloom comes out from Luxia. Living flame spam now as well, trying to get a Offensive. That's going to be the life cocoon force. Kasu's in trouble. He activates the roar of sacrifice, but it's a leg sweep on the Luxia. Tony trades the shield of vengeance. They're swapping to him on that roar of sacrifice. They cut through the shield of vengeance. Are they going to take him out at this moment? Luxia is not CC'd. Going for living flames, keeping the team aggressive. Freezing trap on next. This needs to be a big moment, but they're not finding enough damage to force the divine shield. Maybe now with the sleepwalk, they might be able to do it. They're so close. Swaps you down in half. He divine shields my way in such a good position. If they can keep Kasu alive, he rescues Kasu back to the pillar, pulling him away from this blend ball that is admiral's esports in game number four yeah this is looking really good they're isolating swaps they get the crowd control on the next he just can't get the healing out based on here on the Kasu, though at the same time swaps getting low hammer of justice on the next can swaps remove it doesn't look like he's going to be able to Kasu just not in a position to get the crowd control he needs there's a sleepwalk on the next once again Kasu's just so incredibly low luxia has to play catch up they do have the aspect of the turtle but a big amount of damage here on a swapsy with a trap on the next is swapsy going to fall 
Doesn't look like it just yet. Blizzard with the Spear of Bastion on the Kasu, trying to reverse the pressure. Beautiful oh no. double leg sweep coming in from next. That was so nicely done. Blessing Protection has to trade by Tony, but slowly but surely, Admiral Esports is getting through these cooldowns, and you can tell the pressure is just so immense. Luxia has to play catch-up. Tony incredibly low. Forced to trade up the Divine Shield as Admiral Esports is not messing around. They get oh my. everything, including the turtle, during that exchange. Oh, man, this is so t tense for my way. They need to win the game basically right here. Can they do it? Big heals come out from next with that restore. He's into the scatter shot. I don't think scatter is long enough to win the game right here. Swapsy still has blessing and protection in his back pocket. Shield of Vengeance is up. They're going after Tony. They're going to rescue Tony, but he's just immediately going back into the fight. Now choosing to run away on that Divine Steed. They swap back to Kasu. Swapsy's getting a bit low here. Still has cooldowns. He's going to trade the blessing and protection and just stay healthy at this point. Next still has a medallion to break crowd. That ring of peace on the disengage from next bounces Kasu back into their clutches. They're looking to try and reconnect. That was a sick ring of peace by next. Luxia going for the nullifying shroud. He's going to be immune to crowd control a freezing trap on the next he trinkets right away he knows this is it he needs to be out of cc he gets caught in a sleepwalk caught by luxia they're going uh -oh. for the kill here on match point and swapsy is so close to going down next rolls over clutches cocoon. out some heals life cocoon comes out they cut through the life cocoon like butter are they going to be able to just kill him with just nothing but damage at this point tony trades the shield of vengeance swapsy is trying to stay alive his tournament live is on the line the entirety of season one could be decided right now in these next couple of seconds next is into the sun. He's got Sanctuary. He sanks them out. He needs to dodge the trap. They're dogpiling on top of Nex to eat this freezing trap. They have to eat this freezing trap. If Nex gets caught in it, it's going to be game over. Kasu disengages over. He's trying to snipe it. Is he going to be able to find it? No, it doesn't look like he was able to. It's coming up in about 10 seconds. Spear of Bastion on the rescue pins Kasu as he trades his last defensive. And Kasu is starting to fall apart. Swapsy is starting to fall apart. This could be a cross kill. Stun onto Nex. No way to break it out. Swapsy standing on top of Nex to try and eat that freezing trap. And Kasu is the one that will go That's down. It. Admirals Esports, stay alive and bring it to a game five. Oh my goodness, this is just so <laughs> back and forth. I can't believe Swapsy was able to actually hold on in that situation, but he did it. Admiral Esports, they battle it back. Well, what a close match this was. I could not be feeling comfortable for either one of these teams. So chaotic, but we are going to be going to a game five. And now I wonder, I mean, I'm just thinking... I feel like that was a really close game. I didn't actually mind the Evoker. I'm really curious to see if we do end up seeing it again. But, I mean, this is the very early stages of the match. Cooldowns being burned through. I like the strategy that My Way implemented in this one. They were just really isolating swaps. They, these sleepwalks uh, from these, evo these Evokers, these Preservation Evokers, are quite nice in this situation. I'm starting to see why a lot of the teams in Europe are using the Preservation Evoker. You just have the ranged crowd control with the Sleepwalk. Um, you can deny a lot of healing from the Mistweaver Monk uh, by using Rescue. You have the AoE Purge, which can put the Mistweaver Monk behind on those Renewing Mists. So there's just a lot of disruption to make it more difficult uh, for these Punch Monk Mistweavers to actually get out healing. So uh, that was definitely showcased here in this match with Luxio. If that Spear of Bastion didn't hit the Rescue on Kasu... I wonder if they win the game right here because they if they had like an extra mobility spell they're not on top of him uh, and he's might be able to get some distance they might still be able to win the match so that spear bastion from blizzo was definitely like a, a hero moment for him to clutch that out right there right when they have damage nothing left uh damage is a lot closer here Casu and tony uh out damaging blizzo and swapsy and i think that's because their comp is more based around kiting right next. that's not there's not a target that they can really attack. And even next, I mean, he's getting crowd controlled. This is really a much more limiting composition than with they run the Mystery Vermont because there's always going to be a target next to them to attack. Um, so just limiting their range. I can see the advantages to both. And honestly, Luxia is looking really good on both. But in tournament play, usually the team that has a comp that can last longer ends up winning. So if you're running the Evoker, you're not going to last longer. The, the game, if it's, it's you're going to run out of mana always and lose on mana. And I feel like every team that's in that position where you're the team that can lose on mana, you don't normally win in a tournament. Uh, so I don't know if I like it. Uh, but they picked a big map, so I think they are going to go with it. Can I still say that uh, Tony is playing really defensively? I mean, he looked like he was kind of holding back from like above melee range, but still had a lot of damage in that breakdown. I think, I think Tony played it uh, appropriately. I think maybe uh, part of his tactic um, is to not uh, break traps. So I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure exactly what it would be about the Rep Paladin like being melee range that would break, break traps, but it's also an advantage to just make it more difficult to next, right? Like if you have a hunter who's playing at range, you have an evoker who's playing at range, and you have the Rep Paladin who's playing at you know the 20 yard range, then next it makes it a lot more difficult for him to actually hit an effective target. Like sure he can hit the pets to heal, but all of a sudden all that additional damage he's doing is kind of irrelevant. 
um, in terms of their yeah. offensive pressure. So it's, I think what it is, is just really limiting uh, Nex's ability to actually get off healing. And we saw it in that last game. That That is... That was remarkable. I mean, the next on the punch monk actually did less heal or less damage than Luxia on the evoker, which I I think is a bit unprecedented. Like that just shows you that my way strategy is really kind of disabling him in the match. All right, Tony's UI. Let's take a look. I think it's clean. I like the duplicate of Wrath, duplicate hammer, of justice, duplicate freedom. Like you, you can see all of his important abilities when they're. Off, maybe Divine Shield is the only one that's a bit sketchy. He's only got it once, you know, and that's kind of the button that Rets tend to not press. Like, maybe put that on the on the action bar a couple of other <laughs> times uh, is the only thing. But, I mean, it's clean. It's simple. I think this is a good type of UI to have um, for competitive play. We've got the lock-in, and Luxia is staying with the Preservation Evoker. Like, they played a really good game again, but they just lost on mana. So... I've seen it in, in enough tournaments now that if your team is the is the better dampening team and you can win on mana, usually that team ends up winning. It's it's because it comes down to like pressure and stuff, the likelihood of making mistakes. Um, so you you've got to play a perfect game on the side of my way here, and, and to think that they were on match point um, at, at a point in the series and actually switched healers despite how good they were looking uh, in the first two games it's gonna be tense man and th this is making <laughs> me think that the entire day is gonna be like this because i, I so. thought this was gonna be a 3-0 <laughs> i thought admiral's esports easily walks away with this but no apparently not uh, and i don't think any team is easily walking away with anything now after this yeah like when i was looking at the schedule of this whole weekend because we had eight matches on friday and then six yesterday six today it was like oh you know Friday is going to be the long day. You better buckle up. But that one was like relatively short. And like yesterday was pretty long. Today is probably going to be pretty long if you if you're right in your prediction, Sid, that these games keep going like this. But yeah, I was the same thing as yesterday. Multiple game fives, lots of them going into dampening. Um, but yeah, we, we're getting left. I would love to interview them after this, uh, if, you know, maybe at the end of the day or something, just figure out like why specifically they are locking in Evoker. I mean, obviously you guys already said that you think it looked better than you maybe would have predicted um it's still go ahead i i feel like i like i would be having nightmares about playing mystery of ret mirrors like when, when i watch them it just seems so chaotic and to me it feels really hard to like have a consistent strategy with how you know how often your teammates health are just going 110 percent. you have to panic and use cooldowns like it, it's an absolute nightmare in my mind so I feel like I don't blame Luxia. He wants to get off the Mistweaver Monk and play more <laughs> yeah. of a strategy where, you know, they can crowd control next and it's just more consistent, I think. Like, they can actually, like, come up with the strategy and, like, pull it off. And um, I, I feel like for my way, that's the kind of team that they are, right? Like, they want to be able to isolate a target. It goes back to them even playing, you know, the Jungle Cleave with the Feral and the Hunter. This is just the kind of strategies that they like. So uh, I think it's smart. Uh, I think what we saw in that last game could definitely work. It was a really close game. I mean, Swapsy was barely able to survive multiple times in the match. He got down to 10% health where he could have easily fallen like we saw in game number one. Um, so I, I definitely don't mind this from my way. I think Luxie is playing uh, this Evoker really well. Yeah, he's definitely uh, really developed just from from yesterday and today. I mean, this this team especially has developed. I feel like they've they're kind of like the last standing jungle team, if you can even call them that anymore. They used to be multiple in EU. Uh, you know, there were a couple over in NA back when Dilly competed, and it's like it, they're kind of the last one standing, and they've completely redefined a lot of their strategy as well. Um, you know, bringing in Leanne and kind of diversifying their comps quite a bit, and now here they are going head to get head again against a roster that has like you know multiple BlizzCon champions on its under its roster and I, I i just think it's awesome to see them keep going and and performing so well i think tony's gonna have to rebrand soon like he can't just be tony carroll <laughs> anymore because <laughs> he's tony, tony asa rogue he's tony rep paladin like he, he's got a lot of different classes he can play now and i think it's great because i mean in the past my way has been a team where if jungle is good look out they're going to be winning everything mm. if jungle's not good then they just don't have an answer so i, I like the fact that this year really kind of branched out. I mean, Tony, especially uh, picking up the assassination rogue, picking up the rep paladin when he needs to, just kind of being more of a flex player, I think has given their team a lot more options because I can guarantee one thing, if they were still only playing jungle, they would not be in this position right now. Like that is for sure. Yeah, I think that's really a safe bet. And you know, that, they're not the only team that have done that either. It seems like over the course of this, this expansion, especially you're seeing those teams that kind of were like really stubborn and changing sort of their core 
composition that they specialized in, definitely branching out and then finding that success such as my way, which I'm sure I imagine takes just like a lot of work to be able to do that and then feel comfortable enough, Sid, to be able to do it in tournament play as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is the first time that they've done it, so they've gotten out of their comfort zone. It's definitely paid off for them to get them this far uh, in the tournament, possibly going to get them a little bit further as well if they can win this game right here. Uh, and they're a team that's going to be a real formidable threat moving into the future as well in, in competitive play if they can keep up this trend. So I'm very ex excited to see this performance right now today and, and also the future for them. Uh, Admirals Esports, they're a team where the meta kind of switched to their favor. Uh, they were really struggling uh, in the previous one, so it's kind of fortunate for them now that the meta uh, is in their favor. But if they can't win when the meta is in their favor, that's kind of bad for them um, overall. Like this, this is kind of the Ret Warrior patch. This is like the Cleave Zug Zug patch. And I, I was really expecting them to, well, I mean, I predicted them to win this whole tournament. So I was expecting them to make it all the way. So I would be surprised um, for them to be knocked out here in fourth place. Uh, and not get back to that grand final. So there's a lot of pressure on both sides to kind of meet their standards here in this series. Can't believe it's going to this point. I thought it was going to be over um, multiple times, but uh, Enigma Crucible, really big map, really important here for my way to be able to spread out the enemies, isolate them and then burst them down and still keep their distance. So they've set themselves up well strategically here for game five. Definitely. All right, let's see how this goes. I mean, next, Swapsy, Blizzo. They're picking up some momentum here in the series. It was not looking good for them. They kind of had a terrible game number one where Swapsy wasn't able to trade any defensive cooldowns. Uh, they had a bad game number two, but they managed to shrug off those two losses and in the brink of defeat now have actually tied this series up. My way now on match point, and let's see if they can do it. Luxia on that Preservation of Ochre. They're going to be charging into midfield once again. Tony kind of playing at that range. There's a Sleepwalk on the next, and it's going to be Swapsy, who is the target. The big setup here onto Cassio, but the Spear of Bastion keeps him pinned. A lot of damage here onto Cassio, but I think Luxia should be able to keep him alive. Yeah, that Roar Sacrifice preventing all the crits is doing a lot of work right now, but they could swap to Tony. Now they're still staying on Cassio. He's trying to avoid the fight. Blizzo charges in. Massive hit of damage. Cassio disengages away, but Swapsy's still right there, right on top of him. This is match point. It's game five. Luxia is struggling. They're swapping to Luxia. Surprise attack onto the healer. I don't think he was expecting it, but he manages to stay alive. Now a stun onto next. They're going after Swapsy. Can they finish him here? They need more crowd control. No freezing trap is going to be secured. Cassio's right next to them. He could land it. Double blinding light slowing down the fight. Is it going to be enough or is it going to be good? night as that blinding light fades and he wasn't able to land the trap now he's caught into a storm ball paralyzed on tony to try and deny the sanctuary Casu gets blasted here he's just getting no room to breathe he lands the freezing trap off of thin air but no it breaks to cleave it's so important that those freezing traps sit full duration if they're going to find victory yep. let's see what they can do Casu right now playing at that range blizzard's going to be able to reconnect a huge hit on him same time though swapsy is getting low and as long as Nex can find that uptime, Ooh. he will be able to get that healing off. Beautiful grip there with that rescue from Luxia to keep Casu and safety, but they make Whoa! a swap on to Tony. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, look at Luxia. He's just so incredibly happy. Dude, Luxia did all of that at the end of the game. He did all. Tony's just it. like, oh my God, I can't, I'm so glad this is over. <laughs> it's just, oh my God, Tony, or sorry, uh, Luxia just absolutely KO'd Swapsy, bro. Like, oh my God, what was the fight? Do we have a details? Do we have a death log? Because I'm pretty sure that, that had to be some sort of crit fire breath. He just, he just went for it right at that moment. Here I was thinking, yeah, like, it looks, it looks like they're hesitating a little bit, and then they just, boom, just go for it right there in that moment. I cannot believe it. Oh, my God. And, I man, Swaps is probably kicking himself now, like, two rounds going down with no Divine Shield in this series, which, which maybe could have changed the entire um, outcome. So th this was such a crazy conclusion to this match. Like at this point, I'm actually thinking like Admiral's Esports are in such a good spot. They still got Trinkets, still have Bob, still have Bubble. Like they're getting pressure on two targets. Luxia is happened? already at half mana. Like this is looking good. Like they're going to win this game. Like they're absolutely killing it here. Like they swap off time dilation to Tony. They blast him. But right here, Luxia gets a sleepwalk into a stun and then he goes for a fire breath off camera. We're just following Kasu. He just gets a fire breath off camera and just uh. gets one shot. I didn't. You, I mean, I'm just looking. Swapsy's looking so healthy. There's the trap on the next. And this is where I was talking about, you know, oh, Luxia had such a good grip on Cassio. And then Swapsy, he just gets, gets one shot. I mean, we'll see exactly how it plays out once again. This is the grip I was talking about. Swapsy, he's got a Shield of Vengeance off. He's full health. 
Uh, if you look, Admiral Esports, they still have pretty much every single defensive cooldown. And then Luxia gets into position. And here is the burst on swaps. He's got a shield of vengeance, but they just crack through it. And in the intimidation stun, basically 100 0 swapsy. I mean, that is so unfortunate because he, I mean, obviously he has the lay on hands, the blessing of protection, the divine shield. Next almost has life cocoon. He's got his trinket. I'm pretty sure Blizzo had his rallying cry. So that, that's that's heartbreaking for Admiral Esports because this is kind of a repeat of game number one where they just had everything and just nobody used anything. But my way is going to be super happy to walk away with a win here because of it. Yeah, they, they really made it so far to Admiral's Esports. I mean, they came up, rose up from the gauntlet, it, you know, performed exceedingly well over there and, uh, you know, getting knocked down by my way. But, you know, incredible performance for them over the year, but over the, the season, excuse me, but my way, really, really well done to them, Sid. Yeah, insane series from them. I mean, they got destroyed by this comp yesterday. So the fact that they could like yeah. face their demons in one singular night and defeat Admiral's Esports, get a rematch now against the agents. Like what is what is the agents gonna do uh, in this type of series? Having seen how much damage went out, I, I can only imagine they're gonna utilize their, their Rat Warrior. Like you're gonna be hovering that Divine Shield button pretty hard. <laughs> you're just gonna be like sweating. Like, do I need to press it? Do I need to press it? Do I need to press it? Should I press it? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 okay, I guess I'm dead um he's like, duplicated a few more times on his ui <laughs> yeah exactly. i mean tony's the one that only has it once on his bar i don't know how many times swaps he's got it on his action bar but it, it's like so tough like you pre-shield a vengeance you think that you should be good to be greedy in that situation and then just absolutely destroyed so yeah my way my way tearing it up here uh in game number one or in series number one of the day now they're going to be in third place they get ten thousand dollars now they're looking to try and win up their money 15k uh, from this next series should be really exciting. They're they're warmed up. They're ready to go. They they know what they're going to fight. I think it's going to be another Red Warrior uh, on the side of the agents. Yeah, I bet the agents is a little bit ner nervous. You know, they kind of they've already gotten one team out of the way. There's just one more before they go up to the EU finals. But uh, you can bet that the agents. I mean, you know, if it's any if it's any lesson from this series, we were kind of expecting my way to be the underdogs in here, and then you know, getting that victory, but maybe the agents is going to have a similar story. Maybe they, you know, cooked something up last night, but here's a look at that prize pool. Like we've mentioned third place, at least guaranteed here uh, to my way. Of course, that 70,000 is where all these teams are really gunning for though. So up next, it's another elimination round. It's going to be determining who ends up with third, who ends up with at least second agents and my way. You can see them down there in that lower bracket as well then. Yeah, I think this is going to be the exact same match. I don't know if my heart can handle it. That last one is just so chaotic all over the place. My way, I think, are going to run the same thing. I think they... they. I feel like they don't like the chaos of the Mistweaver Monk mirrors, so I think we'll see Luxie on the Evoker once again. And honestly, I like it. They can isolate a target. They can get a lot of crowd control on the Monk and make it really difficult for him to actually get the healing out. So I, I think this is going to be a really close series, but uh, this is not going to be easy for my way. All right, well, let's see what they have in store for us. We're going to head to a break when we come back. Agents versus My Way up next.
Welcome back, everyone. If you're just now tuning in, we just finished off the first match of the day my way in an extremely close series versus Admirals Esports, but it was Admirals Esports in the end that got sent home. Now we're in the EU lower finals again. It's Agents versus my way. Both these teams are facing elimination. And my way, I mean, they're they're going to be using that momentum to head into the series versus the Agents eco. Absolutely. You could tell they were fired up at the end of that one. Luke's just screaming at the top of his lungs. You know, they already secured themselves third place, but now second place is on the line. $40,000 on this series right here. And of course, a chance to even increase that as well uh, when uh, the winner of this will go head to head against Echo in the grand European finals here. So a lot on the line, you know, and uh, my way, we haven't really talked about them too much in the past. Uh, well, we have talked about him a fair bit, but My Way actually did win, you know, uh, one of the AWC seasons. So My Way definitely has the potential to become champions once again. And what an insane story that would be. You know, Aritros finally finding a great team here. He's been spending a, a fair amount of time on the bench, but still, you know, he's been important in some of their matches. And of course, Luxia on that healer uh, in the past have always been playing with those Discipline, uh, discipline Priest mains, but now bringing in Luxia main resto druid and just very flexible so good on that monk as well definitely had a great performance in that previous game and then of course the agents this is the team that both me and maruki actually voted for to win the entire thing uh this is going to be asgarath brunhiri mercy and zipai absolute stacked roster bunch of blizzcon winners bunch of legends of their class and um it's gonna be a it's gonna be a bloodbath yeah, it, it certainly will, will. And we haven't seen agents today. You know, we did see them drop down to the lower bracket yesterday. Super T's from Echo, um, their, their loss against them. So just catch up uh, us up on this team for, for those watching at home. Like, what can we expect from this roster? Well, they got Brunhitti. He's kind of like a flex melee player. Um, and Zipai has been picking up the Rep Paladin. Uh, Mercy's got that flex between Warrior and Warlock. So it's a really versatile team. They could lead with anything. Um, and I'm wondering if they are second guessing their Rhett Warrior, given that Admiral's Esports just lost, but I kind of doubt it. Yeah, they're going to be playing the Rhett Warrior. So my way, they did it once. They have to do it again two times in a row if they want to make it to the grand finals to face off against Echo. It's going to be quite an explosive game. Anybody could go down at any moment. I'm sure that Zipai is going to be just locked onto that Divine Shield button. Not, does not want to give any games away for free here in the series the gates are open in the second round of the lower bracket of the european championship double stun immediately on asgarath and zpi zpi breaks free immediately sanctuaries the stun getting his team offensive here going after kasu but he roar sacrifices that's going to push them onto tony and uh, he's going to shield of vengeance divine protection there's going to be no damage there trap on asgrath zpi is the pressure point and looks like mercy will immediately trade out an intimidating shout onto tony and now start blasting down kasu in the spear bastion looks you're doing everything that he can but oh no he rescues too early on the Spear of Bastion, and Kasu isn't going to be able to escape now off the back of that misplay on Luxia. Now Luxia getting swapped to Emerald Communion immediately has to trade on this stun. Now they're immediately bouncing back onto Kasu. They're all over the place right now. The agents are striking hard in game one. Beautiful offense right now from the agents as well as beautiful deflection. Look at Z by there being so annoying, stacking up on his healer, making sure that he's limiting the damage. Ascra oh! oh, Kasu dropping to one HP right there, catches a lay on hands and overlaps it with the aspect of the turtle. He is just so lucky to even be alive right now. He was so low right there, but they did force out the will of the forsaken there from Ascra as well with that sleepwalk. So, a little bit of life at the end of the tunnel here as they continue to push over onto Z by in Tim Stun onto. Zipai as well as the Hammer of Justice going to Asgarath, followed up by the blind, but where is the damage right now? It's Luxia taking the brunt of that damage. Asgarath finally trinketing at the end of that blind, trading out his life cocoon, and that is going to be Luxia trading out the rescue as well as that blessing of protection from Tony. A lot of Kuna's being traded back and forth. Kasu could just go down in that next chain, but they also could get the Divine Shield from Zipai with this next freezing trap. It's going to be a very, very close call here, and here we go. Here's the setup. Full sleepwalk. There's Zipai what is he gonna do he trades out the divine shield and my way actually manages to tie us up here in this match right now but kasu definitely gonna be on the back foot here as they continue the pressure onto zipa he's not getting topped up right now Askarath needs to access the heels here and finally does manage to top him off as the agents look to push forward 
Oh, Zipai getting low, Castle getting low, not a lot of options left for either side as Luxia jumps in, but he walks into a Hammer Justice, gets sanctuary instantly, but Zipai is still so low. Shield of Vengeance is going to trade for him, but Spear of Bastion is pinning Castle. He's got no Roar of Sacrifice for this. The crits are coming. The trap on Zipai, the Sleepwalk onto Asgrath, but unfortunately, I think they wanted that trap onto Asgrath instead. Now, with that crowd control dropped, Castle will follow oh! shortly after. And the Agents, man, this is a monster of a ret. Warrior looking unstoppable. Anything they touch turns to dust. Yeah, that is a good way to put it, the agents. But that was an extremely close game right there. And I feel like one of the key differences that we saw here was z on the red, just running to his healer, stacking up on him, eating some of those traps. And even when his healer was just trapped, he was just staring on top of him because there's a lot of cleave damage. You know, one of the hardest hitting things that a red has is, of course, that wake of ashes. And that is kind of a cone ability. So it's really hard to get that off. You can see right there, that was the wake of ashes from Tony. And it's really hard to actually get those off when z is being annoying like that, stacking on his healer. But here we go, Kasu uh, in that spear right there. Look at this freezing trap right here. z just, oop, eats that. And if he doesn't, well... Asgraf has no trinket. They really don't have a blessing of protection or a divine shield. So that could be the blessing of protection. We saw it get purged uh, against Admiral Esports and then, uh, you know, Swapsy dying through that cooldown. So it's not a full save right there. But then, of course, they do manage to get that turn there with the pressure. Mercy as well, trinketing out aggressively at the end there, manages to find the kill and those Spear of Bastions. I don't no, if Blizzard was actually running though, actually, yeah, he was um, in that previous series, but Mercy definitely getting a lot of value here every single time Kasu is in trouble here. It's at the back end of those spears, kind of pinning Kasu down and just allowing the agents to dogpile onto Kasu. And then they never really stack those with the Stormbolt. They separate those and then they get the leg sweep right there as well by Asgrath. Beautifully done. And then Asgrath as well with the touch of death, a million damage right there on the Fist Weaver, having an absolute insane performance here. You know, if there's anyone uh, watching from home that has some extra time on their hands, I really need them to make a compilation of every weird noise that Sid makes when there's an intense moment in the matchup. There was one that video be... in the GCD TV days where it, it sounded like I was being attacked by bees. So somebody put like <laughs> bee audio on top of the noises that were being made. <laughs> I don't know if that's what? like you can YouTube that GCD TV Super T's attacked by bees or something like that. Oh my God. Uh, it's, and it fits really well with the way the B sounds are in the screen. <laughs> I'm gonna go look for that. Oh man! But uh, no, I mean, I don't, I don't blame you for for making a weird noise in that moment. It's certainly a very intense game, and uh, we're gonna get probably another one here. We are going to Tolveron as well. My way, Zico, locking in their comp shortly. Yeah, my way going to the sands of Tolvir here. Now, the biggest question for my way is, uh, are they going with the Evoker or are they going with the Fist Weaver? This is a rematch. You know, they already lost to the agents here. They're already, they're already kind of facing their demons here. And they've had a day of practicing in between. But I think based on the map, we're going to see the dragon come out from Luxia. And uh, if they were to go down in that match, I think we're going to see the Fist Weaver come out because that's really the only thing I feel like they haven't tried against the agents. And who knows? It worked well against Admiral Esports. It might work well into the agents as well, but I do think uh, it's intelligent here to just lock in the dragon on the large map and then just to kind of try to abuse the fact that they're going to have this space to move around with. They're going to be able to actually get those CC chains and uh, kind of have them stick. And they are actually going to the Fist Weaver. So my way definitely throwing a wrench here in the in the works of the agents and i do like that the fact that i wanted to see this at some point you know in this game or in the next one so i do like the fact that uh, lux is feeling confident looks looked great on this fist weaver as well so uh, i think uh, it's time to test the agents here to see if they can actually match uh, luxia's damage here if they can maybe catch them off guard because he was doing a lot of work uh, in that last series and, you know, we're a couple games uh, into this as well. Luxia kind of going back and forth between that monk and the preservation of Ogre Zico. Do we have a better idea of like what spec they're using versus what situation? Well, they're facing the same thing over and over here. So I think uh, the main kind of story here is with the uh, with the preservation of Ochre, you are going to lose on mana for sure. You're kind of going to run out of steam, but you're going to have a lot of range damage. You're going to be able to deny the Fist Weaver, you know, targets to hit a lot better than compared to just having a Fist Weaver just tanking as well. Um, and then the other big thing, of course, is that Sleepwalk. The Sleepwalk has been crucial for my way. It extends their crowd control. You know, they get the stun. This is how they like to do it. They like to stun 
stun Zipai with the Hammer of Justice, stun Asgarath with the uh, Intimidation stun from Kasu, or with the Leg Sweep, or, or I guess uh, just with the Intimidation stun when they're running the Dragon, uh, and then they like to trap off of that, and then they like to sleepwalk off of that. Or uh, if they don't have a stun for uh, the healer, then they start the chain with a sleepwalk, and then they trap off of the sleepwalk and stun up Zipai. And that's how they find a lot of their pressure. So I think... Um, the dragon works really well in isolating a target, but with how Zipai is playing, stacking up on his healer, making all of these cleave abilities that Tony and Kasu have uh, basically impossible to to use without you know breaking the trap, it, it really limits their damage. And I do feel like having this kind of more chaotic style that they're going to have with the Fist Weaver is going to be a lot better, especially with how Zipai is playing specifically. Hmm. Yeah, definitely a lot of uh, utility that they've got in combination there. So, uh, I mean, great, great compositions for both sides of the team here. Uh, and we're heading to a very large map as well. The agents, uh, Subati is playing uh, a melee composition. Do you feel like that they're going to have any difficulty here, given that the the space? Um, I mean, it, it doesn't. The map, when it's a misfever mirror, does not matter. The fight happens all in one area, wherever it happens <laughs> to be. The biggest map is turned into the smallest <laughs> map. So. Um, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. Maybe Luxia can get better portal positioning. Uh, he's going to be less punished for porting away because the hunter can kite, whereas the Rhett and the warrior are kind of stuck where they are. Uh, would be the only thing, but I don't think it's a huge difference. It's it's really just all about reaction time. A little bit of luck as well. Um, if the fist weaving healing doesn't hit the right target at a key moment, um, or you just get some big crit suddenly out of nowhere you're not expecting. Um, so you, you've got to be ready to predict those moments, uh, maybe preemptively trade as well. Like when you are anticipating those, activate it before it happens rather than reacting to it. Because if you react, you might not react fast enough um, would be the only thing in these two matchups. But the fact that he's going to Miss Weaver, they want more pressure. They want more damage. They just watched that play out. And it seemed like a completely different team. The agents on Ret Warrior Miss Weaver, man, like they looked like unbreakable and scary the entire game. Uh, I think the fact that they were more willing to just kind of swap, I, I feel like when we watch Admiral's Esports, they were really just tunneling one target most of the game. Whereas the agents were like, okay, that guy got away. Well, there's a guy right here. So we're just going to hit this instead. And it worked out way better for them. Um, but now with Fist Weavers on both sides, let's see if Luxia uh, can out punch Asgarath. <laughs> We're going to see if they, if you can outpunch Asgrath here as we are loading in to Tolvir for game number two here in the lower bracket final. Whoever loses here will be eliminated from the tournament in third place. Whoever wins will win $40,000 and also have a chance at that first place $70,000 against Team Echo who are just waiting in the wings right now watching this laser focused. The gates have opened. Looks to bring in his fist weaver to try to uh, kind of even the score here let's see if you can do it Sid all right the entirety of season one on the line for both of these teams here as we see stuns across the board Zipai gets stunned on his trinket here but the sanctuary already connected so it should enable his team to play aggressive and they're going immediately after Luxia he's going to be the main pressure point for the team cleaving down Casso as well Roar of Sacrifice going to trade Zipai going to trade with Shield of Vengeance trying to predict that damage we have Feyline stomps down everywhere curious to see if they decide to move away from those double leg sweep scary moment Restoral comes out they're cutting through it into the hammer of justice is Luxia going to get dunked here in game number two he clutches out the life cocoon and manages to stay alive. Now they're switching their attention to Tony, trying to cleave him down. It seems like he's trying to escape, trying to get away from the fight, but just not able to. Asgrath into a stun. They need to land this trap, but there's a war banner down. They kill the war banner. They get the scatter. Will they land the trap off the scatter? They don't get it. No, they do, but the life cocoon slipped through at the last second. And this is actually life cocoon mercy. Now they're going after Asgrath. A bit of a swap to the healer, a little bit unexpected. Asgrath just attacking the pets, trying to make sure that he's min maxing his fist weaving healing here, getting the most out of it. And Seems like he's sort of good. Now the triple leg sweep, perhaps not. They're swapping to Mercy. He died by the swords immediately out of that stun, but they're still cutting through it. They're swapping to Asgard at the same time, and the pressure from my way is totally different with Luxia on the Mystery Vermont. Beautiful. They got a full freezing trap right now. Asgard, how is he going to trade it? Breaks. But Ooh, yeah, getting swapped to almost dying right there. Catches a big cooldown right there. The blessing of protection, as well as that roar of sacrifice for Luxia. Still holding on to his trinket, though. He's going to have that trinket. Life Cocoon, they're swapping to Asgard. Big damage coming in. Asgard, how is he going to stay alive? He doesn't have Life Cocoon for another nine seconds. They might have to trade the blessing of protection themselves, and they will trade the blessing of protection right there over onto Asgard. But I think he just got purged. Now, triple blinding lights coming out. Fear onto Tony. Fear onto Caster. Everybody's just disrupting this matchup. They're going 
going after Luxia. Yeah, he's isolated. He trinkets out there. Uh, no, he gets sanctuaried actually from Tony. Beautifully done there as he does train the life cocoon, but it's going to be enough. Luxia yeah, once again in the triple. nick of time. Catches triple. Him. They get a triple leg sweep. Oh. Big damage onto Mercy there as well. As Z5 bubbles out, everybody just trading everything. Hascraft trades to trinket life cocoon there as well. This is still anybody's game. Luxia could go down in the next setup though, as well as Askraft or Z5. All right, who's going to fall here in game number two? Are My Way going to be able to tie it up and bring it one to one on game number three? Looks like he's falling behind, caught in the stun. Trickets immediately goes for the fist. We've been healing. They need crowd control and they need it now. They're running out of time. Oh. Luxia is about to cave. They go for the stun, but it's one second too late. z will sanctuary and the agents will now advance two match points. Such a heart racer of a game, just back and forth between these teams. But the agents looks like a different beast compared to Admiral Esports in that previous series. Only one win away, claiming that guaranteed $40,000 in a shot at Echo in the Grand Finals. Whew. That was sweaty. I mean, just at the span of like 10 seconds, so many coins are being traded here, you know? And uh, it, things are just, look at this moment right here. z is in bubble, Hascraft, Trinket, Life Cocoons, Mercy, or was at a close call there as well with his die by the sword earlier on. And then immediately looks yeah as well, getting swapped through here. And I think this is the moment where they fear everybody up. They get the triple blind and then look at Mercy here, gets the triple fear. Then they swap over to uh, the big stun there onto Luxia. Yeah. And then Tony here getting uh, stunned up as well. And Luxia yeah just Going down right there, he got a trap onto Mercy, and Luxia starts the fist weaving right there, but he doesn't get his heal in time right there. As he does go down, z trinketing out, trades the Sanctuary. Everybody's just basically spamming their cooldowns, reacting so fast to these moments right here. And uh, we can see it right, he, right here again, triple leg sweep, setting them up on the side of my way. But then immediately the agent's kind of responding here as well. Mercy doing a fantastic job here on the warrior as well, getting a lot of pressure out, getting a lot of disruption and just, uh, you know, getting beautiful war banners on, uh, war, war banners early on in the match as well. And it just never really gets to that point where they can get those freezing traps out and start kind of slowly but surely working those cooldowns on the side of my way. Just too much damage, too much chaos uh, coming out from the agents. Oof, agents certainly on fire, especially when you look at how well My Way did in that last series. This is a, is this a surprising result to you, Super Tease? I mean, it seems like, uh, you know, it's the same story with My Way, how much they changed from yesterday to today. It seems like agents is kind of following suit. Yeah, I mean, it it feels like a completely different Red Warrior mystery. Where I was thinking like My Way, would, this would be a little bit closer than it is um, overall. I'm wondering if the idea of bringing the Fist Weaver out is because on small map, playing Preservation Evoker is probably not going to work. So they need to just like warm up and get used to playing Mist Weaver anyways now that they lost the blind pick, if there's some sort of thought on, on that line. Um, but, you know, that game looked better, I feel like. Like they were closer to actually winning with a Fist Weaver than an Evoker. Um, and an Evoker is just kind of like you're gambling a little bit like you not break the CC when you need to at a critical moment and still connect enough damage to win. Can you keep your distance at the same time as doing all of that? It's a way more delicate dance, whereas this is just kind of like just slug it out, do as much damage as you can possibly do and, and keep your momentum going. But they're running the clock here. The agents quickly locking in Miss Weaver, Warrior Rhett. They don't want to give any time for my way to try and think their way out of this situation. Uh, and come up with something, but I, I don't think anything other than these Mistweaver or Evoker swaps uh, is really going to happen for these teams. Um, just seems like these compositions are their best options right now. But there's a lot on the line here. Like you've you've been playing out for the entirety uh, of season one, like over a month of cups, and you had to watch the gauntlet. You, you had to beat Admirals Esports, and they, what I can't believe yeah, they're oh! doing this. What the? I said that they wouldn't change anything. Tony's going on Feral. <laughs> He's going on the main. Kasu is going on Rhett. I don't know about oh. that. I do not know about that. Um, okay, I, I mean, Tony's not going to rebrand. He's at least going to go out of the tournament on Feral one way or another. Is he going to win reverse sweep with Feral, or he's going out of Feral uh, right now? I so. respect that. <laughs> okay. Our, well, what's the what's the game plan here then, Sid? I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, if I'm being real, the game plan might just be fall over and die. I feel like like Feral Druid in this matchup, you're going to get just demolished. What? You got Feral and Rhett? Those are so easy targets for Rhett Warrior. Like, uh, mm. I, did they practice this in secret or something? Like, bro, I don't I don't like it. I don't like I'm just saying it right now. I don't like it. I mean, Deco? I don't know. <laughs> 
I don't know about Casu on the rent. That's my big question mark because I do feel like, you know, like on one end, there's forty thousand dollars on the line right now, and you're gonna put all your eggs in the in the Tony Farrell basket. You are going to go yeah. out swinging with Tony Farrell on his mane. I like that. Looks, you're bringing in the dragon. Now, I don't know how well the dragon is going to do in this matchup as well, because I feel like a feral just wants to cleave everything, bleed up everyone, and do as much DPS as possible. And that doesn't really play into how they've been playing with the dragon with getting those sleepwalks. So I feel like that's definitely a mismatch. My other question is about Casu on feral how, or Rhett. How good is Casu yeah. on Rhett? Because he's been just killing it on the hunter. He's been Tony on the Rhett together with Casu on, uh, you know, the hunter. So. Uh, that's uh, definitely a question mark for me, but I do like the confidence here. You know, go out with a bang uh, or, you know, just throw a complete surprise here to the agents because let's be honest, I don't think the agents have a lot of practice into Red Feral. This is not something that uh, people are running, you know, Red Feral Dragon. Like, who, have they ever even played against that? So the surprise factor could definitely be something here. And they have Asha Mains Fall, you know, that is, you know, Asha Mains, uh, he's a Feral, Tony's a Feral. So they have like home field advantage at least. <laughs> Hmm. It's just their plan's just big boost. GG. I, I mean, I guess. I mean, you're a lot more optimistic than I am, right? <laughs> okay, gonna, one, one of us is going to be right. Either the optimism or the, the pessimism or reality of this. But, like, if I was a warrior right now, then. I would just put a bib on. I would just already be salivating, looking at these classes on the <laughs> other team, just, like, sharpening my knife, just getting ready to just dig in and start eating some tony feral right now because like this seems like what like you're gonna get to cleave two people you could even swap the evoker possibly in the back like the evoker doesn't really enable these classes too much either right like with the hunter the hunter's always moving away from the fight so you can keep moving you play along with that Rhett and feral it's like what are you, what are you gonna do with them move them away they're gonna run back in i don't unless they've got some secret tech like i could see repentance repentance being really good against a fist weaver monk and maybe like Repentance Sleepwalk or something like this, like a really long CC chain on the Mistweaver, that might work. But defensively is where I think they're just like, like they're just going to explode, I feel like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do we feel like, how, how do we feel like this would have worked with a Mistweaver instead? Or just any other, like any other healing spec, I guess. I feel like it's too early to tell. I mean, this is something that we just, we, we have no idea how this is going to work out, right? Like maybe mm. Luxia just plays deep breath stun and he's playing like some weird, like super aggro build and they're just going all out, you know, in the opener trying to take down like the monk or the warrior or something. We just don't know. But I feel like on paper, I would have maybe liked the Fist Weaver a little bit more. They have, you know, more AOE stuns and it probably enables Tony Farrell a little bit more as well to actually stay in there. But maybe... You know, there's two builds as well for Feral Druid. You can play the, you know, kind of cleave build and bleed everything, or you can play a more single target build. I don't think we're going to see the single target build, but uh, who knows what they're cooking up right now in My Way's kitchen. Maybe they're just going to try to bleed and run and have Luxia kind of from range attack and get sleepwalks. Or, uh, and Castle maybe plays the red kind of similar to Tony, where he's just constantly running and trying to attack from range. I, I really don't know what to expect here. Uh, other than uh, a bloodbath and you know uh, definitely tony is gonna have to use at least eight of his nine lives like in this match he is going to be absolutely crushed uh you know anybody every target on, on my way right now is just a good target for the agents to hit so for the agents all about uptime for my way i feel like it's going to be more about like bleed kiting mm. Goodness. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, wide open spaces as well of Ash Mains, but you kind of already said, like, when it's all melee, it doesn't really make much of a difference. It's going to be like a, you know, little kid's soccer game where everyone's kind of chasing the same ball and just a big cluster in the middle. So this this feels like it might be a, a bit, just just a bit, just a hunch maybe uh, that it's going to be a little bit chaotic, Sid. Yeah, I mean, any lobby where there's a ret on both sides or a fist weaver monk, like, it's going to be explosive here. It's match point. Tony's coming in on Feral Druid. For the first time ever, Kasu is playing Rep Paladin. I think that's definitely where the, the most questions are gonna be drawn. Like, how well is he gonna be able to perform on this? This seems like a really squishy comp for a warrior to just cleave uh, multiple targets. Are they gonna do AOE bleed damage? Are they gonna focus on crowd control or repentance? I know Feral Druids aren't usually playing Cyclone, but maybe there's a build where he can play Cyclone and they're just gonna crowd control, isolate a target um, type of deal. There's a couple of lines that they could go. Either way, they, they kind of want to just 
go out with a bang, I guess, with this composition. If they win with this, they look insane. If they lose, they're playing Red Feral. So it's like, uh, it's kind of expected, <laughs> right? Like, it's kind of expected. So, like, win win either way, sort of, except minus $15,000. Yeah, something, something like that. All right, well, let's see how they do here. Agents 2-0. They are on match point my way if facing elimination, but let's see what they do with this last-minute composition. All right, it's match point. There is $40,000 on the line and the chance to go up against Echo in the grand finals. This is the lower bracket final. Loser goes home in third. Winner gets second place and a shot at the big 70,000 for first place, of course. Let's see what they decide to do here. My way with their backs against the wall going after Asgarth right now. Big damage coming out onto Tony immediately forced to get that sanctuary from Castor. Castor now getting swapped as well. Gets disarmed and they're doing good amount of cleave pressure here. Tony already with the incarnation pop and the bark skin he wants to get aggressive look at the damage onto Asgarath already huge pressure coming out here but now here comes the spear here comes mercy bladestone comes out big damage onto tony he gets caught in form right there with the leg sweep he's taking a lot of damage but looks is there to deflect it for now tony dropped to 50 percent hp looks here gives him a shield and now looks might get swapped here he's caught up in the hammer of justice tony still trying to run the emerald community gets traded out as tony goes for the bash there over onto z5 Asgarath once again going to be the target of choice and it will be the warband from mercy tony has again already used up three of his life so far, Sid. Yeah, is he gonna run out here on match point? He's caught in a storm ball in cat form. Mercy is connecting. Zipai is running down Luxia. Casu into a paralyze, separating them and isolating them. Blinding light is gonna connect. Cat Luxia trinkets right away. It's a big dream breath there. Triple blinding light, but that's gonna purge all the bleeds off from Tony. He's gonna have to reset, get those combo points rolling. He's used the feral frenzy. He stuns out Casu, looking for pressure onto Asgrath, but that intervene is just redirecting so much damage from Asgrath onto Mercy. And now Tony, man, he is getting cut down into bear form, trying to tank the damage. Trying to avoid it they have decent pressure at times here against the agents but it just seems like it never sticks long enough for them to win the game they get plus and protection onto Asgrath. there might be a glimmer of light a glimmer of hope for my way here they're on match point they need a reverse sweep they're bringing in tony on the feral druid but he's just been tanking in bear form right now for so long oh. he's getting cut down plus and protection comes out onto him he's gonna get aggressive with that this is their moment they need to win the game while they've got this immunity but castle at the same time oh, divine shields at one percent they need to win basically right now or it's over how are they gonna do it? They got the double stun set up right now onto Asgarth and Z5 by Tony. The Blessing of Protection is over. He goes for the DR main stun. Big Fire Breath coming out from Luxia, but is it going to be enough? Castle with no bubble right now. Already saved by the skin of his teeth. Already dropping to about 20% HP. He's got the Lay on hands in his back pocket once that Forbearance wears off, but he's gonna wear off in time. Castle drops dangerously low once again. Luxia picks him back up. The Disarm comes out. Luxia now in a stun. Z5 is in a stun. Tony going for it. Gets a double stun there onto Mercy and Z5. Asgarth trying to get that fist weaving going to get the stun onto Asgrath as well. He gets sanctuary out. z activates the Divine Protection. Tony's in bear form trying to stay alive. Mercy has the sharpened blade and he is ready to cut up his dinner right now, which appears to be Kasu. Big damage, big blinding light onto Luxia. How will Kasu stay alive? He trades the lane on hands and Kasu miraculously survives one more How step. Are they doing now, this? It's going to be Tony in trouble. Tony on 20% HP. Mercy. He's got the incarnation. Can he stay alive for just a little bit more? He's got the damage right now. Can they close it out, Sid? Oh, but they got Die by the Sword, they got Life Cocoon, they got Trinket, they might still be a chance, there might still be some hope here for my way. Can they stay alive and stay stable? They're going after Asgarath again, but Kasu has to kite away from the fight. He's still just getting cut down. Full fear on the looks here, he trinkets out right away, but how is he going to heal the damage right now? He needs to get a Spirit Bloom, does he have it to save Kasu? Mercy's going for the kill, the Agents want to go to the Grand oh. Finals, and they will seal the deal. It will be the Agents against Echo in Europe's Grand Finals. Whew. That was a lot closer than we anticipated, though. You got to give my way a lot of credit. This is a newly formed roster. Well, they at least picked up, you know, two new members this season. And you got to give them a lot of credit. They had a strong run this season, taking out, you know, Admiral Esports, one of the, you know, titans, one of the teams that some of us thought were going to win the entire thing. Uh, is definitely a feat in of itself. And then, of course, bringing us some entertainment here with Tony Farrell, uh, the first Farrell Drew that we see all weekend, possibly the only one. And uh, they definitely make a showing with it. But in the end, it is going to be the agents looking bulletproof. And once again, going up against Echo, the classic EU finals here. El Clasico, once again, Waz versus Zipai. And that is going to be an absolutely insane series to watch. My way, though, great, great season for them. Nothing but respect for their performance so far. Yeah, absolutely. Game. I mean, this is...
been a really long journey for my way. I would love to see them come back uh, as a roster because it's been really cool seeing them sort of develop, diversify their comps. And like you said, Zico, sending a team like Admirals Esports out of the tournament is is a no easy feat in and of itself. But those are the final moments for them. That's going to be the end of it though for my way for the tournament. Agents moving on to the grand finals for the EU region to face off against Echo with a 3-0 which is going to be huge for them. Lots of momentum riding into that series, Zico. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a, a absolute nail biter. This is the classic uh, series that we've seen. And this is just building up, you know, the, the standard story. It's always like this. Echo and the agents face off in the upper bracket finals. One of them gets completely demolished. Then they go through the lower bracket. They tear up the lower bracket. And then they make their way all the way to the grand finals. And they always have like some super epic finals. So this is just all according to the script right now here in Europe. We got Echo. We got the agents. And I just don't know who is going to take it. You know, before the weekend, I kind of hinged my bet on the agents. But the Echo man yesterday, uh, coming back from that 2-0 lead that Admiral Esports had, uh, that is just insane. And watching them kind of play that rogue Destro has just been a joy to watch. They're looking on fire. They got Chanimal in the mix, and he's looking absolutely deadly as usual. And of course, here are our beautiful medals. First place, gold medal. Second place, the silver. And the third place, bronze dragon themed medals, which my way just snagged the, the bronze one. So congratulations to my way. Congratulations to the agents as well. They secured themselves at least forty thousand dollars by winning that series and now they have a chance at getting that seventy thousand dollar if they can beat echo here in the grand finals yeah definitely a lot on the line uh fig fig's disappointed in, in tony him. yeah he, he was <laughs> a little sad that, that the ferals got knocked out of of the tournament so he wanted to root on tony but uh you know a good way to end it either way and uh we are gonna head to our last series of the eu region it is the grand finals for europe echo versus the agents coming up after this break
Welcome back, everyone. We are here finally for the European AWC Championship. It is Echo versus the Agents. The Agents, I feel like, Ven, for sure coming in this as the underdog as well. I mean, if you look at the predictions that all of us had here on the desk, like no one no one predicted the Agents to, to make it this far, but I mean, they've been playing incredibly well. Actually, I was one of the people that did predict the agents to win the wait, whole thing. Wait, oh, you're wrong. Wait, wait. Yeah, you're totally wrong. Half of you guys did. I completely. All right, Actually, never Zico mind. And I revoke I that predicted. statement. I was so off. All right, Ben Ricky <laughs> and Zico. Excuse me. Uh, you guys are right. Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, 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 maybe not right just yet. We said that Echo is going to be the runner up, which is, I think, is a mm. bold statement. Um, especially from what we saw yesterday, right? Like Echo 3 0'd the agents, and it was very convincing. Echo just seemed like they were getting better and better. But the one thing for Echo, um, even Waz was tweeting it out, they had a really slow start to the day. I mean, they were down 0 and 2, and he said like they didn't have a lot of warm up games, and it really showed. So hopefully for them, they've been warming up because the agents are definitely coming into this one on fire uh, with that last win. And uh, the agents had a lot of time to also prepare. They know exactly what Echo is likely to run in this one. Uh, so hopefully they've gotten their practice in. Hopefully they've gotten something figured out. Otherwise, it could be a similar story to what we saw yesterday, where this is just a blowout for Echo. Definitely. And this is, uh, is going to be best of seven as well, this finals game. So, you know, you do have more matches to sort of have, have more chances, I guess, with more matches. But yeah, I don't really feel like they're going to have uh, want to make that leeway by kind of what Echo did where they weren't fully warmed up. You know, obviously they did really quickly turn that last, uh, the series around against Admirals at the beginning of yesterday. But, you know, the agents, I feel like momentum is just so important in situations like this, Zico. Um, and I, I don't know. I, if, you, if you're a team like Echo, do you just watch? Or are you playing? Like, what, what do you feel like the best tactic is going into a series like this? Uh, I think you, you use the two monitor strat. You play a little bit, but you also make sure to keep an eye out on the results, make sure that you're at least doing your math on the picks. But also, I feel like you can learn a lot by studying, you know, kind of how they're playing, how they're trading their cooldowns. And maybe you can figure out like some kind of mini strats where you're like, okay, well, Zipai always trades his trinkets first. So let's not use too much on the first go and try to get that kind of for free. And then on the next go, we really, really commit with our cooldowns. And that's when we try to try to surprise them. And, you know, you can analyze a little bit back and forth like that i think raiku wasn't really uh, he hasn't really played so far uh, obviously he played a lot during the season but he hasn't played uh, so far in the finals so maybe they're prepping him up and making sure that he stays warm and he's ready to go uh you know there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, prep that just goes into this but I, for me personally i prefer the most when i'm just making sure that i'm practiced i'm warm i'm good to go and i'm playing kind of my game and I'm not really adapting too much to what everybody else is doing. I'm just making sure that me and my team, we're, you know, we're warmed up and we're, we're good to go. So hopefully Echo did that because, uh, yeah, they did look a little cold, uh, you know, uh, yesterday. Yeah, I, I feel like also there could be a situation, Ven, where you could almost overanalyze the games that you're watching in, in anticipation, waiting for your match, where it could almost become a bit of a hindrance if, you're, if you get inside your own head or something like that. I think a good example would be... Uh... If we saw, like, a good example would have been if we saw the agents switch something up in that last series, right? That's like, oh, no, like, uh, my way, they just beat Admiral Esports running our composition. Like, maybe we shouldn't run it, you know what I mean? Like, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if you can, like, stay true to your strategy, stick to your guns, like, realize that, hey, we could do it better. Uh, you know, they were making mistakes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's obviously really important. So uh, I think both of these teams are probably really prepared for Echo. There's no... There's no lack of practice into like Rhett Warrior Mistweaver right now, right? Like if that's what they end up fighting, they have a lot of practice. That being said, it's going to be a lot more difficult for the agents to find, you know, a preservation evoker as good as Meh, uh, you know, Destruction Warlock as good as Chanimal, a Rogue as good as Waz to actually get like adequate practice into. Um, so I kind of wonder, maybe they go into like a mirror match. Like yesterday they tried the Demonology mirror match. Maybe they just go straight up Destro Assassination, Preservation Evoker. I don't know how that would go for them, but if they haven't come up with anything else, that's like the worst case scenario is they have to go into a mirror. Yeah, it's got to be a, a very nerve wracking situation. And, you know, on the notion of practice as well, Swapsy, when we were talking to him before heading into this weekend, was kind of mirroring what you were just saying, that they were sort of having difficulties finding more games against the comps that you typically see in a tournament environment. And, um, uh, yeah, it's got to be it's got to be a little bit stressful. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes here. Echo agents EU finals coming head to head right now on the Grand Arena.
Yeah, a tale as old as time. We got Echo. We got, oh, let's see here. The a oh, the agents coming through here with the blind pick. They're actually playing the lock Ellie, and they got the matchup that they wanted. They kind of anticipated the lock mage coming out here from Echo. So this is going to be a tough matchup here for Echo. Then you've played basically mage lock uh, very extensively so far this season. Uh, what, what can you tell us about this matchup real quick? Well, I feel like the Elemental Shaman is a lot more difficult to shut down than the Frost Mage. This is a matchup I'm really curious about because I feel like it should go in favor of the Elemental Shaman, but if there's anyone that's going to be able to make, you know, Mage Lock work in the situation, it's going to be Chanimal and Raikou. Um, but they're going up against a difficult opponent. Mercy and Zipai are looking good, and that Elemental Shaman is absolutely devastating. You're going to see Thunder as well as Lava all across your screen <laughs> in this match, and it's going to be hard for Meta to actually deal through that split pressure. Yeah, and already we can see Raikou Icy Veins has been popped here, so he's looking to get aggressive right now. Getting a little bit of value from that so far. Going over onto Channel, though, on the side of the agents. Channel taking a lot of damage. There's the Death Call coming out as well. Zipai and Mercy looking absolutely deadly. Met caught up in a sleep, and that's going to be uh, the Emerald Communion already being traded out here for Matt. So already quite a big win here so far for the agents in this matchup. And now the Tyrant has been summoned for Mercy as well. Lots of damage being potentially uh, casted here. Channel now also with his own Tyrant, and Channel is playing that Volpira. You can tell here a lot of pressure right now. You can see the face of Waz is sitting on the bench, just watching and analyzing everything that's going on right now. Ascraft actually uh, trading out uh, his Emerald community here as well. So they equalize that cooldown trade between the healers. Mercy could be in trouble here. Channel looking, uh, he could go down here potentially. Man manages to stabilize him there, but very close call there. On the channel, Mercy now as well, taking huge damage as both of these wizard teams go back and forth here in the midfield. Yeah, both of them exchanging spells here, but it's a lot of pressure here on Channel. Uh, at the same time, I mean, Mercy almost went down, down to 10% health. Very back and forth are these two teams. Icy Vein's available for Raikou right now, as so he's just throwing out his Ice Lances, his Orbs, uh, as well as those Blizzards. And that's the one nice thing about the Frost Mage in this matchup, especially against the Demonology Warlock, is you're going to be able to basically reload that Frozen Orb quite often in the match. But Zipai is just doing so much oh. work, forcing Raikou into that first Ice Block, and that is why... Elemental Shaman is so devastating in this match. You have so much instant cast damage. It can be very threatening if you get procs at the right time. And uh, I really do expect the agents to be walking away with this win, but we'll see what Echo can end up doing. Mana is relatively even for both these healers. And there is a lot of pressure. I feel like normally you'd expect a matchup like this to go deep into dampening, but with the way this one's playing out, it does not look like it. Yeah, definitely. And you can see, like you mentioned, you know, a lot of pressure coming out from that Ellie Shaman right now. Matt dropping quite low. Mercy now getting caught up in the midfield there a little bit as well. Raikou getting kicked, actually. Gets a Bloodlust Pro, gets a full sheep onto Zipai. And now they're going after Mercy. Big damage being traded here onto Mercy. Demonic Tyrant coming out. Channel actually using his Unending Resolve to kind of force the Unending Resolve of Mercy. Gets that trade. And now he has his Tyrant out, doing a lot of work here. If this Tyrant does not get stopped, Mercy actually could potentially go down here. Raikou, though, in a full hex as we see Zipai of shutting down Raikou once again and now looking to potentially force that second ice block and that's uh, going to be the greater invis kind of wall there for Raikou so more cooldowns being traded back and forth here from both of these teams and the Eli Shaman just so good at taking down these mages because the biggest defense you have is that altar time which Raikou currently has active and if you purge that then all of a sudden you're not really going to get any value out of that one but it will be a stun to Mercy Mercy trinketing out Asgard with no mana left so far man has been the most mana efficient evoker of the tournament I would say and he's looking to do it once again. They got a lot of wins based off of that yesterday. Can they do it again? Raikou right now, dropping quite low mana to use his second ice block here. He's getting dangerously low. Earthshock comes in, and he will trade it. Another big win here for the agents as Asgrath actually gets a bit of a drink sip right there. And now, all of a sudden, the agents have the cooldown lead and the mana lead in the fight. Yeah, this is just so important. If the agents could pick up a first game win. Raikou's got no ice block. He's stuck in the middle of the map right now. He's getting blasted by Zipai. Lava Burst being slung. Then he go down. A big lightning lasso. Raikou might just go down. Whoa! Matt is channeling out the Emerald Communion. And that will keep Raikou alive. But barely. Huge Earth Shock there from Zipai. That drink from Asgrath. He's already burned through all of that mana. So might have to try and sneak away and get another drink. But I really am afraid for Raikou. He's caught into the middle of the map. Getting blasted once again. Caught into a stun. Huge Fire Breath coming in. Raikou blinks away. He's trying to get to the pillar. He's trying to get out of line oh. of sight. Med does connect some heals. But this pressure is unrelenting. They need to recover Raikou. But Zipai is there. And he is ready to blast. Can Raikou hold on a little bit longer? He's just so far on the back foot. He's trying to recover. Meg drips him away with that rescue. 
It looks like he might be able to recover, but man, what a close call on Raikou. Whew, man, is a miracle worker right now, managing to keep Raikou alive. And Askarov, once again, getting a little bit of mana right there as he does return back to the fight here. And Raikou with the Banes up for just a little bit more, can get some pressure out. But still, a long two plus minutes left for his Ice Block. Mercy Row getting absolutely blasted right now. He's got no unending result for 45 seconds. He's caught up in a stun, but once again, Askarov is there to deflect. But Askarov completely tapped on mana. I don't know how Meh is doing this, but he still has more mana than Askarov. Mercy dropping dangerously low. 30 seconds away for that unending result. He activates the blood pack. Is it going to be enough? Raikou looking to try to dig in here. Chanimal taking the team on his back. Can they take him? Echo so close to find the win. Onto Mercy, but at the same time, Zipai looking for Raikou behind the pillar. This could be yeah. a 2v2. Mercy on 10% HP. Raikou, who's going to fall first? It's going to be Mercy, but no Raikou way. on 10%. Mercy, can he take down Raikou? No, it's not going to be enough. Mer Meh manages to stabilize Raikou as Zipai there try to take him down, and Chanimal manages to stabilize the situation. And wow. Doing a little bit of a victory dance right there as we see Echo defeat impossible odds here and take the win with the mage lock. Are you kidding me? I, I feel like I think we have to give it a big shout out to Matt because I feel like a big reason why this game went the way it did and why Echo was able to win is Matt just doing such an excellent job managing his mana in this match. I mean, Asgrath, he managed to actually sneak away and get a drink uh, during the time where they were able to get the second ice block from Raikou, but man, his mana is just, his mana uh, efficiency, the way he manages it, kept him in the fight for an extended period of time, giving Channel on Raikou, you know, a long time to actually take down Mercy, where Asgrath was just totally out of mana. And I can't help but feel like if Asgrath had that same level of mana management, they might have been able to hold on uh, in this match a little bit longer because this is this is literally as close as it gets. I mean, we almost had a cross kill on Raikou. There was moments in the match where Raikou was just hovering 10, 20 percent health, you know, for like 30 seconds. It seemed like um, this is this is crazy. But I think Echo <laughs> being able to pick up this game number one on the grand, even in a matchup that I would say is not necessarily in their favor. Uh, this is huge for them. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit the net right on his head. Look at Raikou here. He's got no ice blocks. He's caught in the middle of the map there. He, got, he gets the all the time. I think he actually purged it, and he drops to 10% HP. Look at that, Raikou. I, I mean, man, look at Meh, man. This guy, I don't know what he, he drank like this morning, his coffee, but geez, man. Meh, so insane on that evoker, managing to just outmana everybody. And look at this last couple of moments here. Raikou so low. Zipai just chasing him down, trying to, to take him down in that frozen orb. Just slowing him a little bit and then the record ducks in for that final ice last and look at that he was like two percent hp right there that uh, final guard almost took him down if mercy just stayed alive a little bit longer uh, his pet would have finished the job there with zipai just so incredible this performance and, and meh I, how does he do this can you explain this to me Ben? how does he do 1.2 million damage he does more damage than asgarath he does more healing than asgarath but he still has mana like how does that work i mean math ain't question. nothing <laughs> I mean, it's got to be like maybe his talents are a little bit different. Maybe just the the spells he's using are different. The way he's healing, we'd have to see like a breakdown, get details, and see exactly like what his healing and damage breakdown is. But uh, yeah, really, really impressive. The one thing uh, that Matt is using that oh. I kind of feel like Asgrass should be using as well is Scouring Flame. I feel like the Fire Breath Purge is so valuable. That it is, I'm really surprised to see Asgrath not using it. Like getting a big fire breath uh, at the you know the right moment where you can remove the mage shields or remove altar time and all the heal over time effects from Meh. It really just swings so much momentum in your favor, and we see it from Meh time and time again to assist his team offensively. I feel like it's a bit of a mistake potentially to not be using it, but uh, Asgrath going for a different option. Well, if you want to take a look at the breakdown of talents and gear yourself, you can go to awc.gcd.tv and check things out. But I mean, from here, it kind of looks like similar builds between the Evoker. I didn't quite get a chance to look at it, but I don't know. Anything else interesting to note uh, with what we're looking at here? Well, I think that uh, talent that we just looked at uh, was called Energy Loop. Uh, when he does Disintegrate, he generates mana. Maybe he just gets more Disintegrates out. That would explain why he does more damage, but also why he's having more mana. So maybe Mech's kind of offensive mm -hmm. play is allowing him to be a little bit more efficient. You know, they're both playing it, but I think Mech just maybe able to channel out a couple of more there and uh, just uh, 
kind of keeping Riker low sometimes and not like trying to just panic, you know, burst heal him too much. And, uh, you know, uh, Echo now, they are in a great situation here because now anytime they face the Red Warrior, they have the Mage Lock at their disposal and uh, you know they're gonna lock in the rogue lock and this is going to be the agent locking in Tolvir now this is perfect because they're gonna be able to take this away from Echo in case you know the agents want to lock in a warrior ret Echo can just set up Tolvir uh, with their mage lock and just have basically a you know a huge advantage like that but also they're also gonna be able to use this map to play their wizards into the rogue lock which I think was the original plan um, for the agents because they tried both comps yesterday um, when they fought in the semis and i do think the ellie and uh, the warlock looked better and i would say uh, admiral esports as well pretty similar compositionally to um uh, the agents also played uh, this comp and had pretty decent success they were able to hand echo both of their losses uh, in that first series with this comp so i think this is a very smart draft and map pick uh, for the agents but again echo they did some work on this comp uh, previously and, and look at those win rates those are those are big numbers. But, yeah, yeah, going no, basically we... positive ratio with all the major comps that they play. So, I mean, almost a seventy percent win rate is kind of remarkable in competitive play. Uh, Echo, obviously, they're just such a strong roster. Um, these guys are so dedicated to their craft, the amount of time they put into practice and preparation. Um, but the agents, obviously, a phenomenal team as well, and that's why there's been such a rivalry between a lot of the members of these teams for such a long time, going back and forth depending on the meta. But Echo has been looking good, and so far against the agents in these finals, they are up four to zero. So, I mean, I know this is a best of seven grand finals; I only have one point, but so far in this tournament, uh, they're up four zero. So the agents have yet to pick up a win here. Yeah, the agents are going to definitely need to step it up here. I think that this is, you know, going to be a very, very important game for them so they don't fall too far behind in the series. But also, like you mentioned, you know, they got 3 0 in the semis, then they went and had that run in the lower bracket, and now they're back here in the finals. They're going to need to pick up at least one win right now, ties up, and get that confidence boost that they need because so far, uh, Echo has definitely had them figured out. It's going to be the Rogue Lock coming out now for Echo. This is a comp that we saw do a lot of work and already it was getting the sap onto Asgard going after z here. Hero Silence Kitty Shot comes out and that's going to be the Thunderstorm into the Shadow Step, into the Stun, onto Waz, into the Rescue, onto z into the Counter Rescue from Meh and Asgrath now getting interrupted there by Meh as well. And now Waz has closed the gap. I don't think they have too many more knocks here to work with. Maybe that Unleashed Shield knock could do some work here, but if Waz can get uptime onto z that's exactly what Echo needs. If they can get the pressure onto Waz though and kind of force him off of Asgrath, that is what the agents need. Yep, and right now, Waz is going to be trying to get uh, some uptime here onto Zipai. And when we saw this matchup play out um, for Echo yesterday, they had a really difficult difficult time against Admiral Esports. I think a lot of that just came down to so much of the kiting they were able to do. So obviously going to be really important to try to get Waz away and limit his uptime as much as possible in this match. I think Zipai is doing a great job so far. If they can get the Cloak of Shadows right now, that would be massive. A beautiful knock there by Zipai. So it's all about just keep away here. Don't allow Waz to get the damage rolling. Also, can't be giving Channel precognition on that Destruction Warlock. He's been absolutely destroying. So we'll have to see if he can sling some Chaos Bolts together because that's going to be kind of that one-hit KO damage we're going to be looking for in this match. Mercy gets coiled away. Channel is putting in some good control. At the same time, though, z getting incredibly low. Needs to be careful. Asgrath doing what he can to keep him alive, trading out some defensive cooldowns. Man, gets feared away, and now it's going to be Waz in trouble. Does have the Trinket, Cloak of Shadows, Vanish, a lot of cooldowns, but they've been able to hold on to it so far. So even though there's been good pressure here on the side of the agents onto Waz, uh, he hasn't actually had to trade many cooldowns. So he's been able to kind of keep up this unrelenting pressure. Yeah, and they do get the Emerald Communion there with that CC chain. Waz actually using his Vanish right there. You get a cheap shot onto Asgarath out of the fear. So uh, they're slowly but surely working those cooldowns, getting one of the major ones out of the way right there. And now here comes the Shadow Step Kidney Shot. There's a Smoke Bomb. Big damage here onto Zipa. They get the Gouge onto Asgarath. Chan fake casting the interrupt, going for the fear, but he gets Spell Lock there actually. And then Mercy also getting Spell Lock right there. Asgarath getting feared. He gets tremored out by Zipa. Zipa trading out the Ash Force Ship there finally. And remember, that Death Mark is just sitting in Waz's back 
the pocket. Anytime z tries to use his Dwarf Ratio, he's going to be exposed to that unless Askarath is there with his Cauterizing Flame. Big damage coming out now from z How is Waz going to navigate this map? Askarath finally getting some Disintegrates there. Waz now finally closing the gap, gets the blind onto Askarath mid-flight. Mercy looking to summon the Tyrant. Man is there though to shut it down there with the knocks and the kicks and beautiful healing as well from Matt here. Trying to slow down the assault there from Mercy. But look at Chanimal just soloing z and Mercy right now on that Destruction Warlock. Doing a lot of work and here comes the Spirit Walker's Grace Hex onto Chanimal. He trinkets out. Gets the Chaos Bolts here. Big damage coming out onto z -Pi. Also Waz though. He has his Cloak of Shadows forever. z though Z on 1% HP and he will go down beautiful gouge right there as well by waz and echo up 2-0 in the grand finals looking to win another season man i mean they are looking so solid i honestly feel like in that first game uh, they were not favored in fact that they were able to pick up a win and now go into this switch up their composition bring waz in on the road they are looking warmed up they are looking ready they are looking unstoppable right now with this composition so We'll see how this one did play out. I honestly feel like the agents did a pretty good job of defense, um, but every single time you're seeing Zipai cross the map, Chanimal is just there and he is raining in havoc, devastation, double chaos bolts coming in, and a lot of pressure on Mercy and Zipai in the match. It made it difficult for Asgard to actually kind of recover, and he was just playing such good defense and offense for his team, really enabling, you know, Meh and Waz to continue, you know, pain train while really kind of distracting Mercy and z -Pi because if Chanimal isn't there putting out this kind of pressure, then it becomes a lot easier for Mercy, z -Pi, and Azgarath to just keep Waz away in the fight. But when he's able to get out all this damage and cause so much chaos in the match, um, it just really sets his team up for success. He really hit the nail on his head there. You can see at the end of that replay, they overlap the Hex. Uh, z -Pi goes for the Spirit Walker's Grace Hex, and uh, they overlap it with the Axe. So Shan just 0 0.1 trinkets out of both and starts pumping out the damage. And uh, this is all Chan, honestly. Like, he gets the Chaos Bolts here. Mercy teleports away, and he swaps, gets the Chaos Bolts onto z -Pi there. They get the Gouge onto Asgarath, and look what the Meh is doing meanwhile as well, making sure that that Tyrant does not get summoned, so they can continue to stay aggressive. Double Coil comes out, more damage coming out from Chanimal right here. Incinerate gets Wind Sheared, and then here, there's that overlap right there. You can barely even see the, the Axe Dolls, because he trinkets out of them both so fast. Then he gets the Shadow Fury onto Asgarath and Mercy, and then Waz Shadow Steps over, gets the kill, and then the follow-up Gouge there onto Asgarath as well, so... Echo, I mean, I think they can just lock this in for the rest of the series, honestly. They are just just insane at this comp. You think this is a 4-0 for Echo then, Zico? I mean, I, I can't count the agents out. The agents is still a, an absolutely crazy roster. They still have a lot of options. You know, they could go to small maps, go for Red Warrior. And, uh, you know, they looked really deadly on that as well. I don't think you can ever count these guys out. But Echo right now, they are just looking as good as yesterday. And like Van said, they were already up 4-0 total in the finals here. And now it's 5-0, you know, in total. If you count the semis, obviously it's been a reset since then. And this is a best of seven. So Echo still needs to win another two games here. But... Uh, overall, you know, their win rate definitely speaks volumes, but at the same time, the agents, they've had a lot of games now to actually learn what's going on, and uh, it looks like they're going to do exactly that. Take it to hook point, lock in the Red Warrior, and uh, try to get something going with that. All right, agents completely switching things up here. Uh, just as a reminder as well, this is best of seven, so they uh, don't win if if Echo gets this next one. They do have to get a four four win matches here for uh, to to be able to be champions. So, like Zico said, agents quite a few more chances on the line here for them. But how is uh, Echo going to adjust then with the uh, the comp that we expect agents to play in with the size of this map changing? Well, one thing that I was going to mention is for Echo, you're talking about them adjusting, but they're kind of comfy. Like you have Chanimal on Warlock, you have Waz on Rogue, and you have Matt on the Evoker. And this is basically what they've been playing game after game after game. There's not really that many adjustments that they have to make. Maybe strategies, but for a team like the Agents, it, it, it really is difficult. Like uh, if you play lots of different classes and lots of different roles in World of Warcraft, you know that sometimes it takes, you know, a game or two to adjust to your new role in the match. So z going from like an elemental shaman who's kiting and running away and playing range the whole game, whereas now as the Retribution Paladin, he has all new keybinds and a totally different strategy and frame of mind, like it can really throw you off. So 
all three members of the agents, they're basically coming into a brand new role and have to kind of get warmed up and ready to go uh, on the warrior, the ret, and the, the Mistweaver monk, whereas Echo kind of has the advantage of just playing their main, and that is kind of the advantage of sticking to, you know, just one specialization, a couple of different comps as you're always fully prepared for it. Um, of course, it can backfire if you're getting counter comped or something like that, but I feel like Echo is in a really advantageous position where they're basically forcing the agents second guess themselves, you know, change up the map styles they're going to, change up the different classes and roles that they have. Uh, and it just seems like uh, they have a bit of an advantage because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we do talk about it so many times. Agents is now in a position where if they want to win this series, they do have to get a swing match, which has proven to be very difficult. So Agents, it obviously, like you guys have already said, very capable team. So we'll see what they do have planned as we head into Hook Point. But yeah, it'll be interesting for sure. And then if you want to take a look as well at their their uh, gear breakdown, like we've been saying, awc.gcd. Dot TV. It looks like we're heading into the game. Hook point, smallest map in the pool. Is this going to be the turnaround point for the agents or is Echo going to go on match point? That is the question right now that we will have answered. It's going to be the agents putting their faith in the lights here, bringing in the Wrath and the Warrior, and of course, Asgrath on that Fist Weaver. And I really feel like, you know, based on that blind pick, Echo kind of expecting the Red Warrior to come out and then locking in the Mage Lock. I really feel like this is the matchup that they don't want on that Rogue Lock. They just, they've been so close to losing to it, but they have managed to get those wins. But I feel like it has been stressful. How easy is it to replicate? They got a sap onto Asgraf, Chief Shot onto Mercy, Kitty Shot onto Zipai. Any follow up onto Mercy it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get it. Full blind potentially here for Asgraf as well. If Wes can get out of this stun, he gets storm bolted into a leg sweep. Already taking a lot of damage here. This Red Warrior, very, very explosive here in the opener. And so far, Waz on the back foot has yet to trade out Evasion, has yet to trade out any of those big cooldowns. Gets the disarm, and now Mercy chopping him up with the Blaze Storm, with the Spear of Bastion there. And Zipai just trying to kite right now. He did get the Life Cocoon going over onto Meh right now and getting decent pressure onto him, but that means you're leaving Chan free, and we saw last game what happens when Chanimal is free. He gets a full fear onto Asgraf. That's going to be Sanctuary by z -Pi. They get a stun onto Waz now. Agents looking to make their push here onto Waz. get a kick shot onto Asgraf. No Sank for that one, and z -Pi could be in trouble, but Mercy leaps over, kicks, and z -Pi dropping still quite low here. Sleepwalk as well connects. Disintegrates from Meh into a triple DR fear. Can they get the Divine Shield? He's so close. He's so low on HP. He doesn't want to be too greedy. z -Pi on sub 10% decides to use the bubble right there as that rallying cry for mercy was uh, about to expire beautiful opener so far from echo yeah definitely you can see waz was playing a bit of a range uh assassination rogue so he puts up his bleeds and kind of just sit back and that's basically to make it really difficult for asgard to actually heal off of any target he did manage to target the infernal but it was too little too late and zipai was forced to trade out that divine shield full blind now onto asgard how are they going to trade is looking like he's going to be okay. His Shield of Vengeance should be enough. Big swap on a man as he manages to escape flying out of there. Wants no part of that fight. And a bit of a keep away match here for Echo. They need to really limit the uptime here of Asgard. The big swap on Waz. There's not many cooldowns. And that will be the Emerald Communion used by Matt. That incredible healing. But they're just chopping through. I mean, Waz could potentially go down here. Might have to shadow step away. He lived at 1% health on this map yesterday. Let's see if he can do it again. Can he survive? He's getting incredibly low. I think this could be the game. Spear of Bastion. Beautiful gateway drops here by Chanimal. Waz, is he going to use it? He uses it to escape the Spear of Bastion. Shadow stepping now onto Mad. Just really doing his best to kite around in this match. And just buy some time here for Chanimal to get something going. Yeah, but he might have to be very careful. He might trinket here as he does get disarmed, caught up in a stun shortly or potentially. z though, on the side, at the same time, getting absolutely blasted by Channel Full Fear onto Asgrath, on his Fist Weaver, Kitty Shot onto Mercy. They sank the fear, but Waz again, sub 10% HP, gets rescued away by Meh. Mercy, though, on the chase. z though, has to abandon the push here as he drops way too low on HP there. Asgrath still in crowd control. z doing a great job kiting here. Shield of Vengeance coming out. Asgrath now in a gouge. Can they find any more crowd control onto Asgrath? It does not look to be the case. And it will be Waz now in a lot of trouble. Asgard is there with the fist weaving. Mercy's about to connect. Zipa is there getting feared up by Channel. He's doing what he can, but it's going to be enough. Waz on 10% HP. In touch of death range. Here comes the legs with big damage coming out. But Meh once again deflects it by working his miracles on that dragon. Waz still not out of the woods just yet. They fear up Asgard. They need counter aggression. Can they find it? Disarm onto Waz. Mercy is unrelenting with his pressure. Full Stormbolt onto Channel. Allows them to just continue the pain train onto Waz. Zipai though could be very, 
very dead right now as they get another cheap shot onto Asgard. He's going to trinket it and Life Cocoon blind coming up in five seconds. They do have a blessing of protection for it, but Z5, he needs to be very quick with that button. Waz right now, though, might just go down. Beautiful ring of peace from Asgard. Oh! He's in touch of Death Range. He gets rescued once again by Meh in the nick of time. How is he doing it? Any other rogue would be dead right now. Waz just somehow managing to hold on. He's got a full blind, but a storm bolt does land. Big chaos bolts. Zipai needs to be very careful. Channel laying down a lot of devastation right now. Full blind onto Asgrass. Zipai could easily go down. Can they purge the blessing of protection? They do manage to. There's the kidney shot. Are they going to be able to take him down at the same time, though? Waz gets oh. disarmed. He's down to 1% health. Can he survive? No, not this time, Waz. Asgrass shuts that down with a touch of death. The agents put their first point on the board, get their first win against echo but this is where it gets really interesting because the agents i don't know if they can rely on this composition against the mage lock that echo has available you took the words right out of my mouth now we're probably setting up a big map we're probably gonna see the mage lock locked in if the agents decide to go with this comp once again but first let's take a look at this replay look at Matt here working miracles was just dead so many times here zipai as well honestly you gotta give Askraf a lot of credit here keeping zipai alive and i think uh, it was Askraf already having a string at about five seconds here zipai once again staying alive was getting rescued there about to go down he still has his sheet depth in his back pocket look at zipai there uh, already dropping and kind of abandoning that push and then here, once again, at Waz just cheating death here. So low on HP, super, super close calls. And Matt, every single one of these replays is just Matt flying Waz to safety, essentially. And at this point, Asgarath already trinketed, and they have that blind here for Asgarath. And I think that's what happens here. They set up with the blind, they get the gouge, and then they follow it up with the blind here uh, onto Zipai. They get the double Shadow Fury first into the blind right there, and then Zipai immediately bops it. Then Zipai gets kidney shot behind the pillar, almost goes down because of that DR fear from Chanimal, but they sank it beautifully done, and then immediately turn on the aggression back onto Waz. They find a touch of death, and they find the win on the side of the agents. So, really, really good stuff here from the agents. Finally showing some signs of life here in the series, and um, now it's all going to be about the blind pick. You know, if you're the agents, what do you decide to do? Do you decide to go lock Ellie into uh, Rogue Ellie? Or sorry, Rogue Lock? Or do you go ro uh, Warrior Rat into Mage Lock? Uh, that's the that's the decision you have to make right now. What would you rather do? Uh, well, I would rather just watch and just kick back here in my seat, just relax with you guys. <laughs> but uh, if I had to make yeah, a pick, yeah. I mean, they're setting it up right now. Ashamane's fall. Uh, uh, maybe I would, because I've seen how the uh, the Ellie uh, and um, the Lock matchup kind of goes. It did like they got crushed on Tolvir. They got absolutely dominated on Tolvir. It wasn't even close. I feel like giving it a go against the Mage Lock. Who knows if they can make it to dampening and they can make a big push and they can run Channel over. Easier said than done, obviously. But I think that you know that could be a, a, a choice for them, at least to give it a shot. Because we kind of how many times have they lost now with with the lock Ellie? It's been like three losses, I think. Uh, with this, in, the, in that match, four losses in that matchup. Yeah, maybe try something new. Just lock in the Warrior Red and see if Echo actually is that scary on the Mage Lock. They haven't been tested that much yet. I like this a lot. It's way better. Yeah. But it's still not great. Like, it, it's better, but it's not great. Like, the good thing is, Asgrath on the rest of Shaman's going to be able to defend himself a little bit better. Um, I think if he was playing the Punch Monk, then he's just going to get polymorphed and feared and slapped, and that becomes a real nightmare to get out of crowd control. But at least on the Shaman, he has the defense of, like, a Grounding Totem, a Tremor Totem, you know, a Wind Shear to kind of help himself out and avoid some of that crowd control. I think Echo's still going to lock in Mage Lock because I do think it's a winning matchup against Rhett Warrior. Um, and I think the way Echo plays it is just absolutely phenomenal. So I would be really surprised if we didn't see the Mage Lock, uh, and if they do decide to just go with the Rogue once again. Mm. Purely, purely from a compositional uh, perspective, then, Ven, I mean, why is the comp that Echo running, why why is it working for them? Um, well, I think the, the, Rogue, the Rogue Lock with the Evoker, I think the Evoker is what really kind of mixes things up because i think a lot of people would expect maybe rogue lock with uh, maybe like a shaman which is what you would normally play it with or a druid maybe isn't necessarily the best um the evoker adds some really interesting dynamics to the match where you have the 
the extra burst damage, the extra offensive dispel that the Evoker is able to bring. In addition to that, you have a lot of extra mobility too. So if someone's running a Rat Warrior Mistweaver, you can kite around a lot more. You have, uh, you know, the Time Spiral, which allows you to get extra mobility back. Like your Warlock can all of a sudden use Portal twice in the match. You get an extra Blink as a Mage, then you have Rescue. So I think just having that extra mobility against the Cleaves is super strong. And uh, I think that is one of the things that's really kind of spicing up this uh, matchup because there's not like uh, on ladder play, I swear there's not that many preservation evokers. Like when people are just looking at these matchups purely on the ladder, it's very rare where you see like a really, really good preservation evoker play in some of these different compositions, like preservation evoker mage lock. Like that's something I've never queued into one time ever. Like people play normally like mage lock shaman, mage lock monk, Maybe with a priest or a druid, but with a evoker, never. You don't see it, but it's working out really well for uh, Echo here. Yeah, it's always interesting how the tournament play kind of develops its own meta, its own strategies too. That wouldn't really work on a ladder situation, like you know, playing a, a Volpira for for the warlocks. It's uh, it's interesting how they develop, and then you know, you've got solo shuffle, which is kind of just like done away with compositions as well. So, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how this works, agents. Gonna be locking in that Rhett Warrior here on a really large map too, so Echo looking to shut it down and uh, not let Agents get that tie. But I feel like we've seen time and time again, Zico, throughout the course of this weekend, just so many situations where we get a team reverse sweeping. Absolutely, and that's why you can never really count the agents out. This is a squad, you know, they have a lot of different options. They're very, very practiced on this Red Warrior. You know, we saw them beat out my way where, you know, Admiral Esports fell, for example, and just looking super convincing. So uh, I think this is these are just exceptional players. You can never count them out. But at the same time, Echo as well, uh, you know, Matt on that uh, Preservation of Ochre has just looked, you know, a step above the rest. And uh, Channel, of course, we always praise Channel on the lock and now Raikou as well. Uh, doing another finals here on his mage and we're gonna see if they can do it this is gonna be a very very interesting match because if the agents can win this one all of a sudden it's gonna give them the confidence to just continue locking in the red warrior and uh, you know that's gonna be a great situation for them to be in to potentially make a comeback here and start that kind of reversal of this series that echo was running away with in the first two games all right, Echo looking to continue running away with it. Let's see what they can do. Or is Agents going to make the comeback here in this fourth game on Asha mains? Echo dangerously close to being on match point. Echo looking really good here. The Agents, they need to figure it out. They're going to be bringing in the Restoration Shaman to try to make the difference. I think they know exactly what they were walking into. Uh, but I think they made uh, the best of a bad situation because... Really, it's not easy when you play against a team like Echo, where they have all these different counter comps that they can run. Um, that's why winning that first game was going to be so important for the agents. Unfortunately, they didn't. So they need to win a matchup like this. They're not going to win the series unless they can win uh, these swing matches. Um, and their best bet, I guess, is the Ret Warrior Resto Shaman. Echo with their Mage Lock uh, Preservation Evoker, they have been looking really good. I do expect them to just kind of isolate the Retribution Paladin. That's normally how you play this matchup is just go after the Retribution Paladin, try to just limit his damage as much as possible, and you can do that with the Frost Mage Warlock. I, I feel like the Frost Mage Warlock, like we saw in North America, is one of the best answers into Retribution Paladin. And I honestly feel like bringing in that Preservation Evoker makes it even more difficult for the Rep Paladins to actually have that uptime that they need in this match. So I, I kind of feel for the agents here. I wonder how they're going to kind of navigate this match. Yeah, it might be kind of a slow start in the, in the beginning and just kind of sitting back trying to get a little bit of dampening we've seen that strategy implemented in the past or they might just hold down w key on somebody uh, you know the entire match and try to just brute force their way through uh, the agents definitely have a lot of work ahead of them here in this one but you know the the kind of the carrot on the stick is if the agents can actually win this one then all of a sudden echo are going to be the one second guessing themselves like maybe should we run rogue destro it is a resto shaman healer instead of the the fist weaver so maybe waz can survive better what are we going to do here you know it's going to put them in a very tricky situation and uh, that's basically the best uh, you know thing about this matchup for the agent so uh, it's going to be a tough road but if they can uh, you know win this one the reward will be pretty big for the remainder of the series echo now finally tagging in raiku once again he had a great game one can he do it again though here on ashman's fall that is the big question as we are about to load in to this game and 
Mage Lock, uh, you know, we saw it in North America quite a bit yesterday, and uh, we're starting to see it here from Akron. You know, we've heard rumors about it, but now we finally get to see the matchup that we've kind of been anticipating a lot this weekend. We get to see it here in the Grand Finals, El Clasico, the Agents versus Echo, who is going to take it here on Ashermain's Fall. This is game number four. Yeah, here we go. Echo just one away from putting them on match point. The agents, they got to be feeling a little bit good, though. At least they were able to pick up a win in that last game. So have a little bit of momentum here in game number four. Let's see what they can get done. And Red Warrior has an explosive amount of damage. We're talking about the Mage Lock. Like, it's basically unbeatable. Um, but I do think that there is opportunities for the Red Warrior to win here. If they can connect on Channel for long enough or Raikou long enough, uh, they could definitely take him down. Uh, going for a nullifying shroud right now and now opting for some aggressive plays potentially going for a sleepwalk what is he going to do big fire breath coming in to purge out uh asgarath who's caught into the middle of the map right now and looks like they're actually targeting the shaman making a swap with the sleepwalk kind of just all over the place i can't exactly tell what the strategy of echo is right now besides just kind of do damage and survive yeah pretty explosive opener right now raikou with the icy bands demonic tyrant out as well Zipai taking a decent chunk of damage but they pin down raikou they're going after him right now but Zipai gets stunned up right now channel doing a good job here trying to deflect the situation before raikou's in a lot of trouble man sitting through that hammer of justice doesn't look like they have any more follow-up cc raikou gets rescued across the map and now a full sheep onto asgarath stun onto raikou though raikou trinkets out blinks away here so he is playing that shimmer he's not playing that blink stun that we saw yesterday uh, from wealthy man and now a blinding light onto Matt here onto Asgraf, so it's a bit of a 2v2 situation here between the mage and the lock and the rat and the warrior both here is now finally breaking out of crack control and as i say that meh does secure a little sleepwalk there onto Asgraf. big damage coming out from that disintegrate onto z by mortal coil coming out as well from janimal can they force the divine shield doesn't look like it that divine protection should be enough but they're making a swap now onto meh leaving that push kind of over onto raikou as he is doing a great job just maneuvering across this large map he blinks away he gets caught up in the storm bolt here and mercy might actually be able to catch him not Frost Nova coming out onto Mercy. Raikou just blinking away as they continue to CC Ascraft here. He's caught up in a sleep right now. Ascraft not able to heal his melees, but it is Raikou on the back foot. Raikou dropping quite low right there. Doesn't have his wall as well, so going to need to be very careful. That Greater Inv is still 40 seconds away. Does reset the cooldown a little bit, as I say that, with the shifting power. And Raikou now manages to reset his blinks as well. Should have a good time here kiting these melees for a little bit longer, but they're swapping over onto Meh. Meh catches a big heal as well. Tyrant now out for Channel immediately gets feared by mercy great work asgraf actually getting feared up here on his spirit walker's grace can they find any more cc they got dr fear onto asgraf as well but it does get sanctuary by zipai as they look to continue the push here onto raikou who's caught up in a storm of mercy as well taking a lot of damage there activates the rallying cry now that's another defensive coming out there for mercy but he holds on to his dive by the sword for now might have to use it though drops quite low man as well getting swapped to and manages to escape ring of frost fear coming out and oh my goodness channel now as well just taking a lot of damage the agents definitely showing a lot of signs of life as they have a huge mana lead in this one yeah definitely and raku's forced into the ice block and this is what i'm talking about even as the ret warrior you do have possibilities in the match they have a lot of pressure here on the channel making these swaps on a mad they now have a mana lead raku's down one ice block the agents are not out of it just yet shadow fear here on the zipai Rep Paladin getting kited a little bit right now, and we see some decent pressure. A sleepwalk onto Ashgrath. Can they take down Mercy? Pre-dive of the sword to avoid some damage, but it still seems to be Raikou who's under the most pressure. He does have his icy veins rolling, so should be able to get out some considerable damage. Caught into a stun. He's forced to trade out the trinket. Just wants to avoid damage at all costs in this match. Doesn't want Meh to have to burn through mana. I kind of wonder if Meh's going to be able to get away for a drink at some point. Maybe right now you can see he's trying to get out of combat. If he could sit down and drink, this would be massive for Meh. He's recovering a lot of mana, but they do manage to shut it down. But Echo put themselves in a situation where they do have a lead in that regard. Raikou will use Shimmer. He gets rescued across the map. Beautiful fighting coming in as Zipai and Mercy are making a swap here onto Channel, who uses his portal to get away. So... Once again, just keep away. Zipa and Rissi doing what they can to try to stay on target, but it is not easy in this match. Ooh, full sleepwalk on Dasgraph. Can they get the Demonic Tyrant? Channel was trying to load it up, but he gets Storm Bolted. Bladestone coming out for Mercy. They're actually swapping to him, but they're leaving Raikou completely free here. Hannibal takes a lot of damage, manages to teleport away here, running for his life, but they are just chasing him down here. Zipai trying to connect. Can he do it? Finally, they do connect, but a nice blast wave into that Ring of Frost there by Raikou. 
going for a little bit of a fancy move as he does manage to get a little bit of damage here onto Mercy. Spear of Bastion coming out now onto Raikou. Beautiful gateway though, being dropped by Channel. Just kind of a rescue mode right there. Raikou does have his alter time active though. We might need to cancel that one as he will get pulled back to where that Spear of Bastion was. He does cancel it. Actually does not. Goes back into the fight right there. And Channel now looking to take down Zipai. Gets a nice stun out of the line of sight. Asgaroth in CC. Tries to fear Zipai as well. Behind the wall, Channel just excellent control and damage right now but Zipai will have some uptime they're going for a little bit of a split strategy here they're just trying to do as much damage as possible burn through mass mana seems to be the name of the game here for the agents but more and more i would say oh big damage coming out here flurry combos coming out from Riker. this could be the uh, the, the, the divine shield for Zipai, but he will be able to stabilize for now Askarov still in crowd control Zipai still in no man's land here tanking frostbolts Riker gets slowed down there pre-alters the storm bolt can he get away and Raikou does get purged in the last Last second, Asgard actually trinketing out there from that CC chain to save that Divine Shield. More and more cooldowns being forced here from the agents. Yeah, this is not an easy matchup for either side. Raikou gets gripped away. Zipai trying to stay on target once again. He still has his blessing of spell warding and the Divine Shield is most important defensive cooldowns. But Asgard's mana is not looking good. They're actually behind in that regard, which is not great. Asgrath having to go for some heals here. That's going to be the Divine Shield coming in from Zipai. Axos now into Mercy, as Echo is really starting to pick up a lead in terms of momentum. This is looking not too great here for the agents. A full polymorph is snuck through, and Zipai right now on Forbearance has to be very careful. He's feared out in the middle of the map, but maybe a Shadow Fury comes in. Do they have the damage to take him down to make a huge swap on Channel, who's forced to use the Unending Resolve? To mitigate a lot of that incoming damage, but just so much control and damage coming in from Raikou. This is why you have to just go after the Frost Mage. He's just left open, and this could just be a disaster for Zipai. Forced to trade out the Blessing of Spellwarden, but they're going for an all-in here on Channel as he portals away. Good pressure right now for both teams, but Echo has the lead. Mercy down at 50% health, and Asgrath basically has no mana to top him off. I feel like if Echo can just survive another 30 seconds, one minute, they should be able to close out this game. Uh, they might not even need that as Zipai is in danger town right now. Full sheep on the Asgard. Zipai dropping to sub 20%. Can they get more follow up CC? Matt with the sleepwalk. And Beautiful. that will be the win right there. Excellent CC chain. Excellent control here as Echo put themselves on match point. Incredible by Echo. They are so close to being crowned the European champions. The agents have been fighting for their lives. They made that composition switch. They weren't able to get a victory, but let's see how it all went down here in this fourth game, Ben. Yeah, we could see exactly how it did go down. I feel like the agents, they had pretty good pressure in this match, a good offensive pressure um, and presence in the match. I mean, Raikou, he was low multiple times. He did manage to get one ice block, but there's just so much synergy. The best of the key moments in the match where the agents can actually stick on a target is that Spear of Bastion, but there was a lot of teamwork uh, between Echo where Chanimal was just dropping his gateway um, on top of the, the, the Spear of Bastion to allow Raikou to just escape for free. And that just makes it really difficult for agents to keep anyone really locked down in the match for an extended period of time. But this is the final setup of the match to get the full polymorph onto Asgrath and Zipai. There's really not much he can do in the situation. He's already used his spell warding. He's already used his divine shield. And that's the threat of that preservation evoker as well. It's very similar to the resto druid where you have that cast of crowd control. So it's like your healer is in the middle of the map. He's in a polymorph. Who do you stop? You stop Raikou for another polymorph. You stop Channel for a fear. You stop man for a sleepwalk. I mean, you kind of have to shut down all three, but at that point of the game, it's almost impossible. So really not an easy spot to be in for the side of the agents. And Echo is just one away from once again being the European champions. Yeah, certainly they've been really playing at a, a tremendously high level. I love that Raikou kind of stepped in for this series. You know, we haven't really seen him all weekend. I feel like, uh, I don't know, that's got to be a little bit scary then what do you think like not really being warmed up at all i know we were kind of mentioning it a little bit before we went in and then just like play just getting like thrown into the to the mix this quickly uh yeah i feel like for both sides i mean echo they i think they realized they made the mistake yesterday so i think that's one thing that they wanted to focus on even if it's just like playing two versus two so you, you have like mm. Channel and raikou playing against man was just something to like be pressing buttons and executing strategies and I think uh, just a warm-up like that is fine. Um, and obviously the agents just came off a series as well, but it could be really, really tough. I feel like I, I do not envy Asgrath, Mercy, and Zipai like having to just like, okay, what do we do? You know, this is the worst spot to be in. 
Uh, I, I feel like for Echo, it's like, okay, we have two compositions where we're all playing mains. Basically, you have Chanimal playing either Demo or Destro, which is fine. You have Waz playing Assassination. You have Raikou and Frostmage. You have Meh playing Evoker. And that's all your comps. You have an answer into basically everything. Whereas for the side of Asgrath, Mercy, and Zipai, it's like, okay, do we have Zipai play Red? Is he going to be Ellie, Mercy? What is he going to play? Is he going to be Melee? Is he going to be Range? Do we play a Caster Cleave? Do we play a Melee Cleave? Azagrath, I mean, what healer is he going to play? I mean, it's not easy, right? Like going from playing Shaman to playing Preservation Evoker to playing Mistweaver Monk. It's it, it even just making those changes. I know these guys are professional. It could be it could be difficult to just get in the right mindset. And, uh, you know, being in the finals where pressure is the highest, uh, I think just amplifies that. Do, do any of the players do like finger exercises? I feel like that would be beneficial, like warming up your joints. Like this? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't know. Probably. Uh, I f when I when I get into like really long encounters, I know my fingers get like in the first couple of of uh, like pulls or games or whatever. I know that my hands get like really tired, um, and then at the end of the day, it's like totally fine. I feel like that'd be beneficial. I don't know. Maybe next time there's a land, we'll we'll get everyone together and do finger stretches or something. But or sure, or no you can you can teach everyone how to do the the hand things, Zico. Yeah. It might be hard to teach people, but I don't think these players need it. Uh, they're Probably doing not. pretty well on their own. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we just got Ruins of Lordaeron locked in on match point in the grand finals. Where is Super Tease when you need him? <laughs> I was I was just thinking that. Well, we, he, he can maybe we get him to unmute uh, in the middle of that so he can <laughs> use his signature line or something. I feel like it's a, a fitting time for that, but. All right, we're gonna see a 25 seconds. Agents locking in a comp. They're using their full timer here. They are dangerously close to letting Echo win four to one. That would be a tremendous victory, victory for Echo. But I do wonder if agents are, are able to turn it around. You know, they did get that one victory. Uh, so can they keep going? Can they tie it up? It's a best of seven. Uh, so there's a few chances left, but if they drop one game, they are out. They finish the day with second, and there's that composition. So they're just going to, both sides then are going to be trying that same strategy once again. Yep. And this is the matchup. Like, let's remember, this is the matchup that agents actually put a point on the board. Uh, they played this matchup yesterday. They got Waz to one health. Not like, not even one, but less than 1%, one health. Um, so it was as close as it can be. Today, they actually won the matchup on hook point. So. Agents, not out of it yet. They definitely can pick up a win here on Ruins of Wardoron. That's a small map. Waz had to do a lot of maneuvers in order to survive. So he's kiting around the map using defensive shadow steps, like using gateway and rescues at the right time because uh, they're basically just training him down. And on that rogue, you are pretty flimsy, right? Unless you are kiting, you're going to die basically instantly. Um, but if there's any rogue that can pull it off, I think it's going to be uh, Waz backed up by Met and Channel. Mm. All right. Who are, we, who are we rooting for here? I mean, we can, you know what? I, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a call here and say we can change our predictions now that we're in the finals. Who, who, <laughs> do, we, who do we think makes it out of this? Listen, no one can tell us that we can't. We're here. Uh, who, who's coming out of this? Um, I mean, I'm sticking with my prediction because I feel like, you know, I gotta stay true to myself, so I'm not gonna change anything. Uh, I'm not usually rooting for anybody, but I do want the agents to win for the simple fact that we just get more of this awesome series. We'll just have more games. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, I think the agents are gonna bring it back here and uh, continue their fighting spirit. You know, this is the end of the line for them. $70,000 on the line for this series here, for this one game potentially <laughs> Super for the quote. agents. <laughs> Bottom oh, of the there screen. we go. He's, he's, he's with us in spirit. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, gates are open. Yeah, potential final match here between Echo and the Agents for the Grand Finals. If Echo can win this one, they will close it out and be our champions of Europe. The Agents, they're trying to battle it back. They're trying to stay alive. Let's see if they can do it with this cleave composition. Big opener here on the Zipai. Azrath caught into a sap early on. Beautiful control coming in from the side of Echo. They really want to have an aggressive start. 
Yeah, and so far it's been pretty good aggression from both sides here. Zipa has got his wings popped right now, looking for Waz. Waz immediately running away here, just uh, throwing out little darts onto Zipa, trying to make sure his bleeds are doing a little bit of work and making sure that he's avoiding all that damage. Waz right now dropping quite low here. Mercy connects with the Spear of Master and big damage coming out. Gouge onto Asgarath. They're looking to take down Mercy potentially. And now Zipa oh, getting swapped to Kidney Shot. What is he going to do? He uses the Divine Shield in the nick of time. Great CC chain here by Echo as they're going after Matt X on that event. Voker and actually not sure how Matt got out of that hodge. I think Channel is actually playing the imp and he dispels it, but Waz right now caught him in a leg sweep. Sweep, the shots. Beautiful, beautiful setup there from Asgarath. Waz manages to duck out of danger for now, but this is everything on the line right now. The agents are not done yet, Ben. Yeah, definitely not. We got an interrupt here on a man. Was still on the run, but they are going after Z5. They smell blood in the water. Double Mortal Qual coming in from Chanimal. Looking for a game-winning fear, but it gets ropped away. Nicely done there by Asgrath, keeping his team at the fight. Was barely surviving that last setup at 2% health. That double leg sweep doing work with Z5 still in so much trouble. Might have to trade out the Blessing of Protection. There's a lot of damage incoming here from Chanimal, who does manage to portal away, making it really difficult for Asgrath to actually land any healing. Beautiful gouge there by Was. Look at Chanimal in the back line. Chaos Bolt after Chaos bolt after chaos bolt here on the zipa but at the same time mercy causing an unrelenting amount of pressure here on the waz as he is forced to run away but zipa's health is just not stable whatsoever can he survive do they have any crowd control here for Askarath? they could close out the game the waz. double leg sweep comes in paralyze on Matt. this could be the game winning setup and the agents they stay alive so close are you kidding me they managed to do it they put another point on the board echo's not going to win it in this one but they get to go to their map pick, their composition pick. Woo! This is just such a beautiful game by both of these teams. That was just so cool. Zipai almost just died without using his bubble there in the opener. So much damage coming out, so much control from Echo. But Asgarath, you got to give this man some credit here. These leg sweeps uh, straight out of Cobra Kai right now, just getting them double and triple. You see, I think uh, he gets one as soon as Waz Shadow Steps actually a little bit after this. So I think this is where Zipai used his bubble to get the gouge, to get the fear, to get the kidney shot. And Zipai immediately having to trade out Divine Protection and bubble there. And then here, I think this is after the leg sweep from Asgraf comes in. Another close call there onto Zipai. He gets stopped out and now Waz in trouble. They get the gouge onto Asgraf. They're going for that setup. They get the Shadow Fury. Channel just free casting here. It's a kidney shot. And the death mark and that's going to be the immediate life cocoon coming out there from asgrab and then here was trying to kite trying to buy some time emerald communion from Matt. but then here comes the stun the double stun combo and i really like what they do here with the paralyze onto Matt as well they get the double leg sweep they drop the war banner they get the paralyze onto Matt into the hodge as well he actually tries to hodge his trinket right there and then immediately just delete was with that touch of death from the fist weaver and those executes as well from mercy so really really good stuff here you can tell the agents they want this these guys are bitter rivals they fought each other over the years so many times and we are extending the series right now this is a best of seven so echo are still on match point they're probably going to go somewhere big they're probably locking in the mage lock or the rogue L, uh, the rogue destro if uh, you know the agents decide to go for that destro lock alley so and we're going to go over to the coliseum so from the graveyard of ruins to the coliseum of maldraxxus and now the agents it's time to pick your poisons my friends are you going for the destro lock alley into the rogue destro or sorry are you going with the demo lock alley into the rogue destro or are you going with the rat warrior into the mage lock it's uh it's uh you know you're, you're caught between a rock and a hard place at this point Mm. Yeah, Echo is or the agents? The agents. E Echo yeah. are chilling. I mean, they they can even lose this one and still have their own map and uh, you know comp advantage here. So, agents, what are they gonna do? Are they? I think they should maybe go with the Destro Ellie. I don't know how how good the the Warrior Red. Like, what do you think, Van? After we've seen the Warrior Red now. Ah, uh, I, I I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> it's really tough. <laughs> I love how beside you guys are both seem stressed out about this. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> I wonder if there's any universe. I mean, you think there's. I wonder if they just do something totally different. Like maybe they just play Demo, Ret, Shaman. Like, uh, they're not. It looks like they're, gonna, they're going for something a little bit different, but they're going to go with the Demo, Ret. But they could go with the Restoration Shaman, which I think would be a decent answer into both the Major Lock as well. 
um yeah basically both comps that echo could run but yeah they're gonna be mixing it up bringing the asgrath i wonder if he's gonna be playing the range monk or if he's gonna be playing the actual punch monk in this game uh this is maybe just trying to throw echo for a loop they're very comfortable in the compositions that they're gonna be picking right now i would expect them to go with mage lock in all honesty um and I think they'll probably do pretty well. Like as the mage lock, you can kind of keep Mercy pinned at the pillar, uh, keep him very defensive, get a lot of control on Zipai in this match, uh, especially with Asgrath on that monk. Um, he's not going to have much of an offensive presence, um, but we'll see. I mean, well, agents obviously need to mix it up. And they are, and uh, we'll see if it works out for them. Yeah, we certainly will. I mean. You know, Echo, the not quite, you know, putting on the pressure just yet. Agents not yet. They are catching up, but they're not on a match point. So they've got a few more chances to stay in this. It's really agents that can't afford to make any more mistakes. So I feel like locking in a composition like this in kind of the final hour has got to be such a nerve wracking position to be in. It, it, you know, I'm sure that you have, have to have like a, a tremendous amount of confidence or just like, you know, you're kind of just like, screw it. We'll, we'll just throw this out there and see how it works because we don't really know what else we have like we maybe saw my way doing that earlier on but i'm excited for uh this composition i'm excited to see the kind of build that asgrath runs as well once the gates open and the companion uh updates you can check it out for yourself but got 15 seconds for echo to lock in a composition potentially the last game of the day here for the european region before we head into na uh if echo closes us out but agents kind of cutting it really close here zico yeah, and uh, Ricky spot on on his predictions here. We're going to see the demo rat versus the mage lock here. And uh, we are going to see it with the with the monk. So I think a big thing is for sure the fist weaver versus the kind of range monk that Ben was talking about. I think uh, the range monk probably going to be a little bit better here because it's going to just avoid that CC. But you sacrifice, you know, a lot of damage, a lot of burst as well that, you know, the fist weaver brings. So uh, Asgard's going to have to kind of make a decision there. And... Uh, this is a comp that we really haven't seen, but we do know, uh, you know, the agents, they have this practice. This is, you know, a really strong comp in the meta. And we do know Mercy, he's a phenomenal warlock, but uh, the, the tricky part can be from, you know, one series you're playing war, you're playing a melee, you're chasing everybody. Now all of a sudden you're playing a warlock, you're playing a lot more disruptive, you're trying to kick everybody, land crowd control, set up kills from range. And you know, that playstyle can be very far. You don't have any time to kind of just go in and attack things and just get warmed up even. You just thrown into the mix immediately high pressure situation if you lose you're out of the tournament in second place if you win you have a shot at that 70,000 first place uh, prize pot so uh, they definitely want this and uh, Brunhiri man it's gonna it's gonna be nerve-wracking as well for Brunhiri he's just sitting on the bench just watching this finals right now his team they can't utilize him too much right now and uh, what can you do here you just uh, yeah <laughs> I mean, you can you can see it too with Waz. Like it's he's in the same situation. He has to sit there on the bench and watch. And you can see, like at the end of every game, he like clutches his heart. He's like, "Oh my god!" Like I, I would not want to be not in control of that and just having to sit there and watch. Ben, I don't know if you've ever experienced that yourself. Back when you I competed. have actually, <laughs> I have actually. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nightmare situation. That being said, though, I mean, if you're Waz and you're sitting there and you're watching and you're looking at your team and it's Maldraxxus Coliseum and you've got Raikou playing Frostmage, Channel playing Warlock and Meh on the Preservation <laughs> Evoker, I feel like you're you're pretty confident. You're like, yeah, yeah, like this is, I, I feel like there's not really much of a better situation <laughs> that you could find yourself in as a fourth member kind of watching the game unfold. So I feel like Waz has got to be very confident in his team. Uh, I mean, there's a reason the squad is together. I think Raikou, Waz, and Meb bringing on Channel as their fourth player has obviously worked out tremendously for them. He's just such a dominant warlock. Um, they're really, really incredible to watch him uh, in these tournaments. Um, he has such a presence in the match, both offensively and defensively. Um, and they could close it out here on Maldraxxus Coliseum. This is basically the best wizard map. Like, if you're a mage lock player, this is your favorite map in the entire game. So they've set themselves up for success here nicely. Yeah, certainly have. Echo really in a in a nice position. They're able to adapt to pretty much everything the Agents has been able to throw out in front of them. Couple of games, though, Agents have been able to get off of Echo. So 
Uh, we're going to get that game started as soon as possible. The players do have an opportunity to use a delay timer if they want. And it just, you can kind of tell when the players know that it's so high stakes when you start seeing these really long drafts. A lot of people think we're just talking for fun, but really it's the players that we're waiting for to actually start the game. So I can imagine uh, there, there's a lot of discussion going on before we head into this game. They just want to get everything coordinated as soon as possible uh, before we head into this. So Maljax's Coliseum, we're heading into game six. Echo, will they close it out four to two or is agents going to tie it up and bring us to a game seven? That is the big question here. Are we going to game seven? The agents putting their faith in the red and the warlock here. Echo winning the race to world first, winning the MDI, looking to win the AWC as well. Can they do it here? 70,000 on the line right now. They got them on match point. Can they take the win here? It's going to come down to a lot of these plays. And we do see Askrath there on the fist weaver. And he's going to be caught immediately into some crowd control. Uses that will of the forsaken. Looking to get aggressive. He gets caught up in a sheep into a ring of frost right now. As well as Zipai does it. They use his uh, sanctuary actually did not use it right there but they do connect here onto channel big damage coming in here but if zipai he can't connect just yet i think he actually traded out his spell warding right there huge huge cooldown already basically the magic bubble already being forced here from zipai already trading out that will have forsaken from asgarath as well now the dampened magic as well coming out from asgarath as he does get caught up in a full sleep channel could be in some trouble here though mercy looking to basically 3v1 demonic tyrant coming out here zipai's at the pillar and mercy needs to get out of there immediately Ascraft could get swapped to here. He rolls away and they duck for cover. They do not want to mess around here when that demonic tyrant is active for Channel. This is not looking good so far here for the agents. This is not what you want to be pinned at the pillar. Just eating the blizzard and the frozen orbs and the ring of fire. But uh, they're trying to weather the storm. They had to trade on such a long cooldown, though, right? Like trading out that blessing of spell warding in the first 40 seconds of the match is not good triple shadow fury coming in this is just looking like domination here for echo at some point the agents are going to have to go for it but you do not want to be so far behind when you do asgrath trying to connect to a target but he is getting crowd control to full hammer of justice here on the channel asgrath finally able to get some damage rolling on a channel a beautiful crowd control coming in from mercy as they do make the push Mercy is going to be the playmaker for his team getting fears on the meh and allowing them to get that crowd control out they could also have been waiting for um, the nullifying shroud from meh so maybe when nullifying shrouds up they just want to not mess around as they can't get control on the healer now that that's up once again are they going to abandon the push or continue this pressure here on the channel echo just one away from closing out this series once again and potentially being the champions of europe in this match the agents they're just trying to stay alive this is not an easy matchup this is not an easy map but if they could pull this off i mean that would be so impressive yeah, definitely. And it's going to be, again, the agents here at the pillar. Asgraf getting counterspell right now as he does channel out a couple of those soothing mists. Looking to make his push here. Channel finds himself a little bit close to the enemy lines. Meh trying to get some heals out, trying to get a shield. And there it is. Emerald Communion gets straight out for Meh. Double Mortal Coil coming out from Mercy. Looking to get aggressive here onto Chan. Raikou left in the back, though, to free cast. And he gets a beautiful Ring of Frost and Sheeps here onto Mercy. He gets a lot of control. Asgraf rolls over, gets the Spearhand Strike. And they overlap, actually, the sheep and the sleep there on the Ascraft. So not gonna have too much pressure with that, but it is enough to kind of force the agents back on that pillar. Zipai now looking to make his push here, actually attacking the pet of Chanimal, but Chanimal quick with he heals right there. There comes the stun, there's the demonic tyrant. Zipai needs to get out of the midfield. He gets frozen here by Raikou, getting slowed on his way back there, trying to escape that midfield. But the blizzard, the frozen orbs are doing a lot of work here for the frost mage. Triple shadow fury there, completely stacked up. Ring of fire burning them down and burning Ascraft's mana as well they do land a counter spell here onto Matt, but the spirit blooms are coming out here as well for Matt. and so far echoes got them at the pillar in a chokehold Ascraft dropping to about 50 percent hp manages to pick himself back up the Morocco comes out from channel big hits here onto Ascraft as raikou and channel are just unrelenting with their pressure now zipai and mercy need to try to find a push here onto channel axel's coming out onto channel axel's coming out onto zipai fears bits gets interrupted there by raikou as he looks to get some control here once again over the match gets sheeps onto mercy Mercy once again in another sheep into a fear, and now they're attacking Mercy as Zipai and Asgraf have left the battlefield. And this is not what you want. As soon as you get off the pillar, you were just forced right back to it. And Med doing such a good job playing the offensive preservation of Ochre, throwing in the living flames, throwing in the fire breath, just really assisting in that overall damage. And he has been such a playmaker for the team on that evoker. Uh, it's been an absolute joy to see. And 
They are set themselves up quite nicely. I mean, look, look at the agents. They're running out of time. Asgard's burning through mana, which is not what you want. Blizzard lays down once again here by Raikou, and this is looking like absolute domination. They just can't get anything going. They trade out the life cocoon, which is worst case scenario. You want to be able to use those cooldowns aggressively as you make a push. Now, not while you're just sitting at the pillar. Uh, but unfortunately, they have to make that trade. Zephi now in the middle of the map looking to get aggressive here with his Avenging Wrath onto Channel. Channel getting Mortal Cold away. Huge amounts of damage incoming. Channel has to be careful as he does manage to use his portal to escape. Matt is there with the heals. Raikou gets a full Polymorph onto Asgrath as they might pressure the Divine Shield here from Zephi. He's forced back to the pillar once again, but slowly but surely, Asgrath is burning through his mana. And I think in a situation like this, a map like this, he is never going to be able to drink. So once that mana bar goes to zero, it is going to be GG. Yep, Asgraf right now having to trade out his Dampen Harm as well as he does get caught behind that pillar, trying to push in and get some Fist Weaving going, but he's forced to just attack the Imps right now to heal, so definitely not the ideal situation for him. Triple Shadow Fury coming out from Channel, big damage coming out, they got the Orbs, they got the Blizzard, and once again, Raikou just alter time here to save Mess of Mana, he's going to alter time back, gets the Ring of Fire, and once again, Matt with the Nullifying Shroud, actually going for a drink right now, and that will give the Aegis an opportunity to push in here, Nullifying Shroud comes out from Matt, as he looks to get that hover so he can cast while moving over the sleepwalks right now. He gets interrupted on the sleepwalk. Zipai Mercy looking to make the push, but Channel with his whole spellbook available. Zipai getting blasted, disintegrates, frostball, big damage coming out here. Zipai bubbles offensively here to go for the push with his wings, but already has to abandon the push. They got nothing with that, and all of a sudden they are completely exposed. Askarov with no trinket for another 25 seconds. Zipai with no bubble. One more CC chain could just be enough to take Zipai out or to take Asgrath out with one swap they're going for meh right now big damage coming out there's the life coon being traded out meh drops quite low right there uses the health stone to get away and once again echo in complete control full sleep onto asgarath full sheep onto mercy zipai in a three versus one situation here and zipai will be able to stay alive there the shield of vengeance does come out channel once again trying to kite here as zipai is trying to charge at him but mortal coil comes out the fears are coming out the sheeps are coming out so much disruption coming out here onto mercy now a full sheep onto asgarath Asgarath and Zipa is just stuck at the pillar. While this healer is stuck in crowd control, they could set up onto Asgarath. They could chase Mercy. They actually CS Mercy right now, looking to try to take him down as he is isolated behind the pillar. Mercy forced to trinket the Shadow Fury, sleep onto Zipai. Zipai forced to trade out his trinket. He gets caught up in a stun now as well from Channel. Channel just playing this one expertly. Rikers in midfield, blast waves everybody back to the pillar as he does blink back here once again and spell steals that blessing of freedom. Yeah, nicely done here. Beautiful kiting. But Raikou actually under a lot of pressure and mana has surprisingly evened out. Can they actually do it? Zipai on the Retribution Paladin. Are they going to be able to close it out? He has the Blessing of Spell Warding. Is going to make the trade a massive overlap. That is so oh. unfortunate. It was a Spell Warding with the Life Cocoon and that is a big mistake there for the agents. But they might be able to just take down Channel. I feel like Echo is so close to winning this game. But the agents, they just won't, won't go down. As I see that though, Zipai, he gets absolutely smoked. Beautiful counter spell there by Raikou, immediately snipes it onto Asgrath, and that overlap costs the agents the game. Echo is going to be our champions with a 4-2 over the agents in the final. Absolutely unbelievable. Insane performance coming out here from Echo. Full control the entire game. And all of a sudden, we did see some signs of life from the agents at the end there, but that last cooldowns that they had, they overlapped them and immediately got punished. Great counterspell there coming out from Raikou as well. And Echo, they are going to go for the trifecta. They win the MDI. They win the Race to Worlds first. And now they've won in Europe here in the AWC. Absolutely insane performance here from everybody. They use all of their members. They kind of got together in this year, you know, this team they just picked up, man, and they just picked up Channel for their roster, and they just look absolutely incredible here, just making absolute work, adapting to the new meta, and, uh, you know, everybody getting some time to shine here. You can see the last couple of seconds on the match here. Finally, some pressure coming out here from Zipai. I think this was the big overlap right here. Zipai, there it is at the exact same second. Unfortunately, Ascraft trading out the life cocoon. Zipai trading out his blessing of spell warding. They're trying to make a push here. Dampening is looking good for them. And they actually have decent pressure on the channel. And at times also onto Meh, they're not completely out of the woods just yet. But as soon as they, uh, they snipe that counter spell right there onto Asgarath, it is lights out. Beautiful counter spell from Raikou. 
beautiful damage there. Is it Matt actually who gets the final killing blow on the Evoker? What a playmaker Matt has been in this tournament as well. Just making the, the preservation Evoker shine time and time again. When a lot of people counted it out from the meta, you know, just great work all around from everybody. They're going to win $70,000 in first place. They're going to get that gold medal as well. And of course, great work by the agents. You know, similar story there coming together this this season, getting second place and winning forty thousand dollars as well from this match. So really, really GG's. Yep, huge congratulations to Echo and the entire org as well for winning so many WoW esports competitions. Like Zico listed, this is a huge, huge year for them for Echo. So absolutely well done to their arena team. And uh, just, I, we couldn't have asked for a better EU season. I feel like so many teams, so many like newly formed rosters, especially, I mean, even Echo, if you count kind of, you know, Chan and Met stepping in and sort of the new developments that they've all made um, from team to team. It's been really an exciting season to see EU kind of just progress over, uh, from cup to cup, Ben. Yeah, uh, I think there's no doubt about it. And it's been it's been a really kind of chaotic meta. Uh, I think a lot of these teams have had to mix up the different classes that they play, you know, picking up the Assassination Rogue, picking up the Rep Paladin. Uh, but Echo has been able to kind of stay true to uh, the specs that they play. Uh, fortunately for them, they're playing it at such a high level. They managed to overcome just sticking to their guns with the Rogue Lock, with the Mage Lock, uh, and kind of making it work. And I think bringing in that preservation of Ochre, especially with Matt kind of backing them up, it was really important for their overall success. I think if Matt had kind of just stuck to the priest, which he's known for, it would have been a totally different season for them. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of players have had to step up to the plate for for EU and NA as well, and uh, you know adapt to the meta, which is not an easy task. We've talked to a lot of teams that have had to put in the work, especially leading up to this weekend of you know making those adaptations so they don't get crushed. And it's just just uh, really goes to show how hard these teams have been working. I mean, it's been months of cups leading up to this, having to stay at a tremendously high level, having to make those results happen weekend after weekend it's got to be just kind of grueling but they've made it here echo finishing in first place agents finishing in second my way in third so well done to them well done to all of the teams that uh competed this year in the eu region zico yeah absolutely it's been a phenomenal season uh, here in europe you know uh, big meta shift big uh, you know games coming out and here we can see the entire bracket how it played out echo uh, winning three to two a uh, very close series against admiral esports to kind of start off their journey and then three owing the agents agents dropping down to that lower bracket three owing my way admiral esports losing three two there to the my uh, to my way agents also beating my way three to one and uh Finally, here in the finals, they were able to pick up two wins against Echo and go out swinging. But in the end, Echo, just so much experience, great work on the blind pick, great work, you know, all around on the drafts. And uh, just uh, they put in the work and uh, it shows for sure. So really, really good uh, finals here in Europe. But that is not all, of course. We still have all of North America. We still have plenty of more games to watch today. And uh, I'm really, really excited to see uh, what actually happens in that region. Yes, I am excited as well. We've got uh, four teams left over in the NA region. Golden Guardians versus Liquid will be the first round. But I think we do have an interview ready to go. I don't know if they've joined us in voice or is there. Hello? Is there someone here? Hello? Can you hear me? Ah, is that Chan? Yes. Hello. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, pretty happy. But uh, yeah, it was good. Good day. Good games today. We played well and... That's all you can really ask for, and luckily we got the result we wanted. You seem you seem kind of calm. I would have expected you to be a little <laughs> bit more hyped up at the moment. Uh, well, the thing is, like in this series against the agents, obviously fantastic team, like some of them are the best players in the world. Um, we knew if we won the blind pick, we could counter pick every single comp they had. Uh, Mage Lock Evoker would counter everything they had except for LSD. Um, we, we were really scared of LSD, but thankfully they didn't play that. Um, so yeah, we, we knew basically, as long as I didn't pick LSD, we were going to win if we won the blind pick. So after the first game, I was kind of chilling and I, I knew the result of the, the series, as long as we didn't, you know, make mistakes did, and throw. Did you feel like, did you feel like you actually lost the, the blind pick? Because I, I feel like uh, they, they actually got ahead in the blind ooh, pick. That game was really sketchy. That game was really sketchy. I think we should have won more <laughs> cleanly, but uh, 
I don't know, we kind of like, it was our first game of the day, right? And they're warm coming mm -hmm. off to Series 1. I think if we play that again, we'd win that more convincingly. I think Mage Lock should beat Ellie Lock as long as it's not a Druid Healer. I think Druid Healer is the only thing that can actually beat Mage Lock in that, uh, that Wisdom Mirror, at least. Yeah. Zico, you got any questions for Chan? Congratulations, you know, another day in the office for, for the man here. Uh, I do have one question. Uh, you know, you played uh, in North America a lot, and now you finally got your first EU title. Like, uh, it, does it feel uh, as good? Does it feel like new? Or is it just like, eh, you know, just used to it at this point? Uh, I think it's cool that I think I'm the only player that can that has actually won in NA and EU. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. Um, for me, I just wanted a new experience. And when Wise asked me to play, I thought it'd be a really fun time to try something new. Um, if, if they didn't ask me to play, I probably wouldn't have come back to compete in retail. But uh, yeah, it, it's just a good experience playing against the European teams. Normally, I only meet them at LAN. I only face Zipai at LAN usually. And now we get to play against each other online in tournaments, which is after facing CD for like eight years, you know, it's it's <laughs> it's something new for once, you know, so it's fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and what about the NA games real quick? Uh, is there, what, what do you think, you know, is there anyone you're cheering for? Is there any series you're excited about uh, there? <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie. I, I want Wes Gordy to win. They're my old teammates from when we played on C9 together. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want everyone at EU. If they can pull it off in NA, I'd be super happy for them. And I'm always cheering them on, always watching their games as well. With Snuts too. Do you, do, you, do you guys practice against each other? Like, I'm sure you share intel and stuff like that. Uh, no. Do you no. guys ever do like war games? No? No, no, because we don't have. Um, I'm the only one with EU and NA accounts. I don't think any of my teammates or any of them have it. I'm sure if we did we would but i'm always talking to them when we're struggling against something and they give me their input and stuff like that so yeah oh awesome well thank you for the the intel and congrats uh before we let you go do you have any shout outs or anything that you'd like to say to everyone yep shout out to echo our sponsor for supporting us through all of this um shout out to my teammates that played insane and uh, i'm happy also that raikou got to come off the bench and play today um, yeah, so you played very well. We're happy about that. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Chan. Congrats to you. And thank you, of course, to, or congrats to Echo once again. And we're going to move on over into the NA games pretty shortly here. So we will see if Chan gets his wish of, uh, where's Gordy doing well, but Golden Guardians and Liquid will be the first up match of the day. Um, Chan, I mean, you're still here. So do you want to, you want to comment on that one? Uh, sorry. What, what, what did you say? I was spaced out. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, Golden Guardians and Liquid. Who do you who do you think wins that one? Ah, uh, I think CD is gonna pull it off. I right. I think Red Demo Shaman is a really solid pick into Red Hunter, which is uh, Golden Guardians' uh, main comp right now. I think. I, I don't think they have a chance, man. I, I think it's a it's a quick zero three for the boys. Or, or like it's gonna be a dampened game, but Oof. yeah, it's gonna be a quick zero three. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah. mm. All right. Well, cool. thank you so much, Chan, and we will see you later. See you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank later, you. bro. I do kind of am, uh, you know, siding with Channel here. I do think Liquid has the edge there, but Golden Guardians, you can never really count these guys out. Uh, you know, they did show some kind of interesting picks, so maybe, you know, they can bring in that Red Hunter again or something like that uh, and uh, kind of surprise everybody. So I definitely don't want to count them out. I'm not going to say it's going to be a 3 0 at least, but I do think Liquid uh, has the edge. Okay. All right. Real quick, Ven, before we sign off, do you, what about you? I don't like to answer these questions. These are both, I mean, both these. Hey, I made Chan do it. I of, made Zico do it. You're going to do it too. Yeah. So I, I think in the past, um, Liquid has kind of had the number of Golden Guardians for a while. Um, they normally do pretty well into them, especially with their various cleaves. I think right now, uh, at least compositionally, I would say Liquid has the edge. Uh, the fact that they're playing the Demo Warlock, Ret, Shaman at such a high level, uh, I really, I can't think of a composition that Golden Guardians is going to be able to run into that and win, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and curious to see what they come up with. And I think they definitely have a fair shot in this one. 
All right, well, we're going to find out what happens. Tune in. We're going to head to a break. Golden Guardians versus Team Liquid coming up next. Welcome back, everyone. We just finished off the EU region. Echo being the crowned champion. Now we're moving over to North America. Super T's first up, Golden Guardians versus Team Liquid. Yep, longtime rivals. Uh, ben said it before the break. Uh, it seems like Liquid, they've kind of had Golden Guardians number back in those Windwalker Death Knight days, training Absturge down on that Resto Shaman. And now it's going to be kind of like a ret engagement. Uh, it's really like 
what kind of comp are Golden Guardians going to bring in the first round? Is it going to be a Rhett Warrior? Is it Peekaboo and Warrior? Are they just going to rely on Rhett Hunter? Is Jelly Beans going to be playing uh, from game number one? Liquid is no surprise. I think Demonology, Warlock, uh, Rhett Paladin, Shaman, it's going to be pretty good and well-rounded into everything that the Golden Guardians have uh, for game number one. So it's really on the Golden Guardians to have an answer prepared for today. Mm hmm Okay, well... A lot on the line for sure. I mean, we're starting right off with an elimination here and uh, it, it seems like there's kind of a lot working against Golden Guardians. So uh, we'll, we'll see what they bring to the table though. This is a team that has been put in this position a lot and they are able to make it happen. But that being said, Team Liquid kind of is too. We know Resto Shaman is, you know, both Absurge and Cedo's kind of forte. And that is really good right now, as we saw it in both of their series. Uh, as we can see here on the bracket, we've got Team Liquid Golden Guardians down there on the bottom left. Winner of this one, then, will be moving on to face Luminosity. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult road for all of these teams. I, I'm going to be honest, I, I really could see any one of these rosters winning here today. Uh, even Warriors Gordy, even though they had kind of a, a really solid performance yesterday, best in Golden Guardians, taking down Luminosity Gaming, all the matchups were close. So I, I feel like uh, it could definitely be close. Actually, none of us... That's crazy. I thought I was being, I was putting in some crazy picks here, putting Where's Dude, Gordy uh, as a runner up, but every single one of you put that too? Okay. I, I thought I, I, I was going to be an outlier for sure as well. That, Go ahead. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So uh, we all have Where's Gordy as a runner up. I kind of just did it to be honest because, you know, I'm trying to do different from everyone else, but uh, it turns out everyone kind of had the same thought process. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the original hipster, you know, that tried to be really interesting and then just look like all the other hipsters. Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of it comes down to just Liquid and Luminosity Gaming with their Demo Red Shaman have been looking really solid. And I feel like that composition overall is just super strong. Um, whereas Gordy has been able to kind of best it, and that's why they put themselves in that position. I just wonder that the more reps these teams get, uh, if they're going to kind of be able to continue that success. Um, they might be able to. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but for these other teams like Liquid, Golden Guardians, Luminosity Gaming, they're going to have to make a deep run through this lower bracket. Every single opponent's going to be difficult. Not a single game is going to be free. Um, and they made the best team win. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not often as well, Sipties, that we see you know, Luminosity down there, formerly known as Hawaii. So both of these teams, Golden Guardians, Team Liquid, whoever ends up coming out of this series and moving on is going to have a very long and difficult road back up to the Grand Finals. So uh, going to be some very intense, very interesting series up ahead of us. Sid, we had a lot of Game 5s, a lot of deep dampening games as well in the EU region. Do you expect the same here in North America? I mean, Luminosity Gaming and Liquid, um, assuming that they go into mirrors together, could definitely, but Golden Guardians, I feel like they never have long games. It's either they get it done fast and win, or they're out of here really fast. So uh, I'm imagining that, depending on the comp that they play, that it, it's going to be over fast either way uh, for them. I'm struggling personally to decide what I would like to see from them, like if Rhett Warrior is a better blind pick, or if Rhett Hunter is a blind pick, or what they should commit to. Uh, for the rest of the series because like Rhett Hunter randomly in Europe with my way like it, it did surprisingly well um, in that first series that we saw against Admirals Esports and maybe it could do well um, in, in this type of matchup uh, as well or do they just random there's no way that there's no shot they play Shadow Priest Rogue there's no shot but again it, it's Golden Guardians so like maybe they do if they're if it's just looking hopeless and they're down two points um, it would be insane if they pulled that out and managed to actually reverse sweep if that situation occurs. Uh, but Team Liquid, it seems like right now Trill is kind of riding the bench. For a while it was Sam, but now Sam on that Warlock has been really critical uh, to their team's success with the Demonology. Uh, we're jumping into the Grand Arena. It's going to be a best of five. We're starting North America, the first round. Who's going to make it through this lower bracket gauntlet uh, and have a shot at Where's Gordy in the Grand Finals? And it does look like Peekaboo is going to be debuting here in game number one on the Arms Warrior. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. One of the things about this matchup that Liquid does so well is they use um the howl of terror but that's normally against the mistweaver monk so i kind of wonder how this matchup is going to change uh change with uh Absurge on the restoration shaman instead of that mistweaver he's going to be able to provide a lot more range support you know tremor totems uh earthen wall totems and it looks like right now wiz k and peekaboo going to be getting very aggressive on the sam i am early on and 
I fully expect Samuel to just be the main target in this match, taking all kinds of pressure. Double stun going out, one stun onto CD, one stun onto Absturge, as uh, this uh, match has started out with a lot of aggression from both sides. Ooh, a full hex on the Absturge. Dive of the Sword gonna trade for Peekaboo to deflect some damage. Sam I am has just been getting brutalized, though. He already used on any Resolve. They've already cut through his Dark Pact. If they can actually stay aggressive on Sam here, they're in a decent position. They force him to port back behind the pillar out of the Earthen Vault Totem. They're leaping after Sam right now. They're trying to cut him down. Cedar plops down the Healing Tide Totem. I think Whiske is looking to kill that off, but Cedar moves it away with that Totem projection. They're chasing down Sam. This is huge pressure right now from the Golden Guardians. Looking really good for them at the moment. Mez gets a nice Sanctuary there on the Fear on Sidu breaking him free of that crowd control. And it looks like Sam finally gets a little bit of a breather as they're swapping over onto Mez, but a double stun comes in from Liquid. They're going after Peekaboo, blinding light onto Absturge. How are they going to respond to this? It looks like they're just going to recklessly keep pushing forward onto Sam and totally ignore the crowd control on the Absturge. But now a full hex. I don't think they can ignore this combo with that lightning lasso into the coil now. Peekaboo is getting smashed. Big heals coming in there from WizK, I believe. The lay on hand is going to bring him back into the fight. Uh, and as long as Absturge connects his heals here, Peekaboo should be good. Now these setups and these constant hexes coming in from Liquid have just been absolutely devastating. Hex after hex, there's a stun onto Absurge. Are we going to see another hex? No, it's a Hammer of Justice coming in onto Sidu to slow that down. Good back up there by WizK to free him from the crowd control. Now Mez actually getting cleaved up here. Samai has been doing such a good job with evasive maneuvers. Beautiful wind shear there by Absurge though, slowing down some of the heals from Sidu. Kept past her totem coming in from Absurge as well. Both these shamans having a bit of a mini battle, trying to just interrupt each other, slow down the healing, assist their team, go for those hexes when they can. Uh, we'll see who ends up coming out ahead uh, in that regard. Decent pressure here on the Peekaboo once again, but it's going to be Sam I Am continuously chopped down here by WizK and Peekaboo. One thing I do like that Peekaboo and WizK are doing is when Sam I Am fully gets away, they are making swaps on the Mez to really pressure CD's mana and uh, try to keep Liquid on the back foot. Oh, lightning lasso on a Piku down at half. Nature Swiftness comes out. Sam ports away to safety. Piku leaps after him, kicks the tyrant. WizK in hot pursuit as well with that blessing of freedom. Sam's going to gate away from it, try and get some distance. But here comes the final reckoning. If WizK connects during this time, Sam could take a huge amount of damage. WizK's connecting. Cedar's trying to keep him stable. So far, not forcing them to cast just yet as both shamans are playing right on top of each other. Likely going to be fishing for some hexes in the near future. Here comes that axe toss. Here comes that hex. Triple crowd control by Liquid. Immediate response from Peekaboo, respecting that clean setup as he breaks the stun, trades the die by the sword, and deflects the attack. Now, Sidu into her hammer of justice, stunning Sam behind the pillar. Sidu getting shocked there on a lava burst. Sam's going to port back on the other side. Mez is cleaving down Peekaboo right now. Is he going to be able to finish him in game number one? They're so close to the kill. Double Felgar just hacking away, and this will be the spell warding out from Wizk blocking some magical damage onto Peekaboo as he leaves behind the pillar to chase down Sam, try and get some pressure here, try and close out the game, but Sidu has such a huge lead here. The pressure's in so much in favor of Liquid at this point. Divine protection up from Wizk as he's going to cleave down. Hammer of Justice, Axe Toss, beautiful cross CC here. Wizk, he doesn't go for the Sanctuary on the Axe Toss. Abs just going to get blinding lighted. Does break, fortunately, for him. Is he going to be able to get the heals out now with Peekaboo down below half? He's got Nature Swiftness in his back pocket. He goes for a big heal from Absturge just in time to keep Peekaboo's head above water they're going after mez for the moment but shield of vengeance is up that's going to crack back at peekaboo and WizK doing a bunch of reflected damage peekaboo down to half once again going into battle going back into d stance just bouncing back and forth trying to decide when he can get away with it but abstract's mana is almost tapped yeah, he's having to heal through quite a lot right now. There's a stun on the Absurge. Are we going to see the full hacks? A full hacks does land by Sidu right now. Liquid's doing such a good job with these setups, and Sam, I'm doing an excellent job kiting as well. Peekaboo just kind of stuck on the middle of the map, forced to go after the Retribution Paladin, which is not what you want. You're just allowing Sam, I am to do what he wants in the match. He's getting off a lot of casts, a lot of fears, a lot of hand of cool bands, and that's going to really buff his damage. Absurge right now almost completely tapped at this point of the game. 20% dampening. That's going to be an Unleashed Shield from CD once again, just being so disruptive. You could tell Liquid is so practiced with this composition. Another Axe Toss into Hex, onto Absturge. It's just Hex after Hex after Hex. These setups from Liquid are deadly. Oh, Dab of the Sword has been broken down here. Peekaboo might just be dying. He leaves in aggressively to get a fear. They're going for the win here onto, onto Mez. Can they kill him in time? Mez blocks the kill with that Divine Protection and Shield of Vengeance. And now Peekaboo is so far behind. Dampening is getting higher and higher. Absurge goes for the Ascendance play with absolutely no mana left on his side. I don't think he's going to get a chance to drink here. Double stun combo from Liquid. Another clean setup, but they don't manage to get the Hex. Sidu gets interrupted by Peekaboo's Stormbolt. Peekaboo pre-blade storms the Blinding Light. Peekaboo's trying to go for the kill here. Is he going to find it onto Mez? Sidu trying to stabilize him with the Ascendance. Peekaboo's fallen behind on the push and Divine Shield from Mez. He's actually respecting the push. That Divine Shield is now out of the way. Sidu with no trick 
10 seconds with no crowd control. Whiskey is defensively postured behind the pillar along with Abscourge and Peekaboo. And it looks like they're just trying to turtle behind the pillar, turtle all day. But if they don't get a drink, I don't think the situation is going to get better for them. Uh, I definitely don't think so. And that's the thing about the Demonology Warlock. You see all of these demons just cleaving down and putting out pressure. It is go time for the Golden Guardians. Their health is going nowhere but down. They need to make a move, and they do here on Mez. Can they take him down? Are we going to see a Hex on Absurge? No, we are not. And Mez could actually be in a lot of trouble, but at the same time, Peekaboo falls, unfortunately. The Spearling Total was available for Absurge. I don't know if he just didn't have the mana to actually pull that off, but that was such a close game. See to trades the Spirit Link. If both Shamans had traded Spirit Link there, if Absurge actually had the mana to do so, they might have been able to actually win this game. I mean, that was so close on Mez. Very back and forth. Insane game here from both sides. Definitely not as one-sided as I think Chan was predicting this series to be. Maybe it still ends in a 3-0, but I, I feel like the Golden Guardians really put up a fight. They had Sam Am sweating right from the start. They got a lot of his cooldowns constantly having to have him positioned defensively. Um, it showed a level of kind of maturity on this comp that I didn't know if I could expect because you know how much practice have the Golden Guardians been putting into Warrior Ret. Um, they've been kind of exclusively playing Shadow Priest uh, Rogue and Rogue Hunter for such a long time, but they really played this comp at a very mature level with these constant swaps, not overextending, knowing when they need to run away, good defensive cooldown trades. And I think that he just didn't have the mana to press Spirit Link Totem. If he was streaming yeah. his POV, you'd probably you'd be able to see if he did or didn't. Um, but it, it does cost mana and with how low he was at that point, which I think we see in the repo. Look at it. It's like, it's I don't nothing. even see a little scratch of blue uh, on the frame. I don't know. Does Nature Swiftness make your heal free as Resto Shaman, though? Because he has Nature Swiftness coming up in like 10 seconds. Um, if it makes your heal free, could he have maybe got a Nature Swiftness off at this point uh, to try and save him? Dive of the Sword is like 20 seconds away. Look how close this is to them surviving 17 seconds away from Dive of the Sword. Like, oh man, it's so close right there. I don't know. He's in position to link. I just swear he just didn't have the mana to do it. Like to be. he's just praying. No, uh, I mean that that's as close as it can get though. But I, I am really impressed with Sidu, Sam, and Mez. Now uh, they obviously have a lot of practice with this composition. It's something they put a lot of work into. Their setups are so um, consistent with the axe toss onto the enemy shaman, and there's really not too much that Whiskey and Peekaboo can do to shut that down. Obviously, as melee, you're kind of you're all over Sam, you're all over Mez, um, and it can be really difficult to make that shift to go after Sidu and stop him during those setups consistently. So um, those kind of consistent setups put them ahead in terms of pressure. Uh, their overall damage was a lot higher in this match. And uh, the thing is, when they're behind the pillow, they're trying to recover, it's not something you could really do against a Demonology Warlock. The fact that the demons are so strong, you have that Felgar just back there cleaving you up, uh, you know, burning through your mana, putting out a lot of pressure. Uh, makes it really difficult and it gives you a lot of agency in the match like as a golden guardians you know you can really never fall back to the pillar you have to, have to keep go go going uh, in this match if you want to win all right full draft process already ready to go locked and loaded we're heading into hook point no calm changes on either side as well. So we're going to get Golden Guardians trying out that same tactic. But Supatis, we're moving into a much smaller map. Are they going to have better luck this time around? Yeah, I mean, their likelihood of winning before Absurge Zoom is higher. Uh, it's going to be more difficult for Sam to escape. It's easier to swap targets if he does. Um, so definitely, if there was going to be a game, if the Golden Guardians can win, it would be here. And if they can't, then I don't know what they're going to do for the rest of the series, honestly. Yeah, it's it could be proved to be difficult for sure. You know, Golden Guardians, uh, kind of unfortunately the underdog here, but they they're an incredible team. They've made adaptations this season. They've had a tremendous amount of success in doing that. So it, it might not be the end for them just yet. It's best of five, but unfortunately we are in the lower bracket, so they are facing elimination. Um, and you know they know that Team Liquid is being uh, is is playing pretty solidly on this composition. So. Uh, what do you in your mind Ven what are what are their options I mean what what do you think their target is here for for liquid what are they trying to set up well I think for Golden Guardians uh, they need to go after Sam right if they can stay on Sam maybe even after go after Mez I mean it seems like most of their pressure in that match was going after Mez um you kind of have to hit Sam because if you 
alone. He's going to be able to get a lot of Handle Dance, big tyrants, which are really scary. But at the same time, when he gets away, I like going after the Rep Paladin. I like going after Mez. They were able to get his Divine Shield. They almost closed out the game. So I, I think for the most part, the small map is going to allow them that additional uptime on Sam. But I really feel like Mez might ultimately end up being uh, the, the biggest kill target in this match for Golden Guardians. Um, I don't know if Absurge can do anything to... Uh, increases longevity in the match. It's a lot of pressure to heal through a Demo a Warlock as well as a Rep Paladin. Um, but if he just had a little bit more mana there at the end, I, I can't help but feel like Golden Guardians might have been able to close it out. So I don't know if there's any uh, you know uh, adjustments he can make in that regard with his spec, uh, with his gearing, something like that. But if he can, I think that's going to give Golden Guardians a lot more options in the match. Is there another healing spec you'd rather see him play then? Or do you think Resto Shaman is the best in this case? No, definitely Shaman. I just mean like talents. Like maybe there's something mm -hmm. he could do with his talents to be like a little bit more efficient, um, something like that. But I I'm really not sure. Yeah, and you can't really get a drink on a map like this, it seems. Yeah, that's going to be super tough to get a drink uh, on this map against the Demonology Warlock. It's basically not going to happen. So the mana bar you have is the mana bar you get, and it is not going to go up. Golden Guardians going into game number two. They are down 0 and 1 right now. They need to battle it back. Like we mentioned, this is an elimination series. Every single one of these series today is going to be do or die. If they want to make it to the grand finals, they have to win. Let's see if Liquid can shut that down. They have a lead. An early start here on the Mez. Ooh, nice crowd control on both Sidu and Mez, preventing that Sanctuary, but uh, you got to get more than a Shield of Vengeance and Divine Protection in the opener here. They need to get Divine Shield. Can they push through it and find it? Ancestral Guidance Ascendance blocks it. Now Peekaboo on the back foot. Big damage coming in from Mez. Just like Absurd was able to dispel that stun lock, and Peekaboo's going to respect the cooldown stab of the sword at a very healthy margin. So I do like that trade here for this initial cooldown window. Don't let yourself get exposed to some burst damage from these Rep Paladins. Mez getting caught up in a Cap Totem stun done there for a moment, but not too much damage found just yet. Earthen Wall Totem is going to come up from Sidu onto Mez, protecting him. Mez is just tanking damage while Sam free casts, so not sure if I like them just staying on Mez at the moment. They go for a Hammer of Justice. They stun Sidu. It looks like Pig was killing off the totems in the back line, but he gets clotheslined by Sidu's Lightning Lasso, and he actually had to trinket out of it, which means he is going to be exposed in the future. The Traveling Storms of Abster. He's running Thunderstorm as a Resto Shaman, trying to knock back Mez during that stunlock combo. It's kind of a unique strategy on his part. Yeah, definitely an interesting adaptation. We'll see how it actually works out for him right now. Absurd is ahead on mana, so definitely something to pay attention to. And this one, is that what it ultimately came down to in that last game? Pressure here on the Peekaboo. It looks like Wizkay and Mez, or sorry, Wizkay and Peekaboo are going to be focusing more pressure here on the Mez and kind of just allowing Sam I Am to do his thing, but it allows them to just get that uptime and burn through the mana of c -Doo. Big pressure there on Peekaboo. He's got no dive of the sword for another 23 seconds, but they don't have to make any major trades to stay alive. And now it's actually Mez on the back foot. Do we have any pressure here on the Seed? It doesn't look like it. Mez gets knocked away out of the Earthen Wall Totem. So trying to limit that defense that Seed has available for his team with that Earthen Wall Totem. Uh, and might be one of the reasons why Absurd is actually using that knock. Ooh, big damage on the Mez. Divine Shield is going to be forced. That is a power play by the Golden Guardians, if I've ever seen one. If they can stay coordinated like this, crowd controlling Seed and Mez at the same time, they're going to be able to take this game for their team. They're killing off the pet, forcing it to retreat, which means they won't get cleaved. This is really important to do. Anytime the Felguard's coming behind the pillars, pressure it. They're charging up from the pillar now. They don't want to get cleaved onto Mez while he's on Forbearance. Bladestorm preemptively by Peekaboo trying to hit an immunity here uh, onto a stun as well as apply that double sharpened blade. They knock Mez away from Sidu and, and try and burst him down, but Sidu's fishing for a hex. He gets it. Peekaboo gets stunned, and it looks like that stun was removed. Peekaboo can trade it here if he needs to. He's, he's going to trade the cooldowns for the Avenging Wrath. Dive of the Sword, one for one. Absurd might get swapped to He's kind of staying close to the fight right now next to Mez, uh, but with Ascendance rolling, it doesn't look like Mez is going to be switching targets just yet. Peekaboo is such a good target. No trinket, no dive of the sword, no trinket on Absturge. A clean setup here from Liquid could close out the game, at least on the next Avenging Wrath, which is about a minute away at this point, maybe 30 seconds away at this point. Uh, on the cooldown tracker, Pikachu is trying to get counter pressure. We see Healing Tide Totem down for Absurd, but he's caught in a fear. Doesn't look like they're killing that Healing Tide Totem, and that Healing Tide Totem from Absurd is getting big value while he's crowd controlled. That was really well timed. It, look at that, no damage on the Golden Guardians thanks to that Healing Tide of Absurd. Yeah, really nicely done, but I'm still worried here for Absurd. I feel like the Golden Guardians, they got to close it out, and they might be able to do it. Huge pressure here on Nez. They killed That's the Spirit Link Totem from Sidu. They, they kill it off immediately, it. and they make the push. Can they take down Mez? He's down to 20% health. They might be able to actually do it. Sidu's healing is really limited. They have the Blessing of Protection, but Absurd is going to be able to purge it off if Mez uses it too late. Needs to be careful. Finally, the big heals connect, but still, I don't know if it's enough. Intimidating Shout into a full stun. Nicely done there by the Golden Guardians. 
they realize they are on a clock and they are really putting the pressure here to Liquid. Oh, Dive of the Sword's coming up in 18 seconds. Absurd has Spirit Link. Whiskey is going to need to bubble sank the CC and get Link off, I think. If Peekaboo doesn't get stunned in the next couple of seconds, he's down at half. Whiskey is feared. Is Peekaboo going to go down here? They've got cooldowns to trade, but Absurd's mana is so limited. They need to win this game fast. Honestly, I think killing c at this point wouldn't even be a bad option with how limited their options are. Charge, pummel on the Hex, Bladestorm to immune the stun preemptively by Peekaboo, anticipating some damage. Absurd is going to pre link the crowd control, but it's doing basically nothing. Deputy's so high. Peekaboo's struggling. Trades out Dive of the Sword. They're going for the kill, but Mez blocks it. Can Absurd purge off the blessing of protection with zero mana? I don't think that he can. And Mez is going to be safe in that divine protection as he's chasing down Whiskey, chasing down Peekaboo, and they're just, oh man, they're at the pillar with nothing. It's the same situation as game number one. Absurd has Earthen Wall towed him down, but he's basically just praying to get mana at some point here in this match. They've got spell warding possibly here from Whiskey to save Peekaboo on the next setup, but. Where's the momentum? Where's the damage? They're going to need a huge swing. They've got Wake of Ashes. They've got Avatar coming up in 13 seconds. They're going to have to combo all of this together to kill Mez. And if they don't kill him on this push, it might be lights out because his bubble's coming up. He pre-sanks the crowd control. Mez with a sick play. Now he's activating his Avenging Wrath. And Mez is going to be very scary. Mortal Coil onto Whiskey. Fear onto Absurge. Whiskey is getting destroyed, demolished right now. Big heals coming in from Absurge. How is he doing it? Making it work with absolutely zero mana for a couple more seconds. That Healing Tide totem with huge value but now into the blinding light. One second left on it. Peekaboo's out of the match as well, and Whiskey is getting smacked and destroyed, but somehow still alive. We'll go down ultimately in game number two. And this is just the clock ticking. If they can't win on hook point, where can they win? So difficult here for the Golden Guardians. It's just the, the mana of Absent is being pressured so much of the match. They actually had a really good presence in this match offensively. They were able to get a lot of cooldowns under the way of Mez multiple times in the match. I thought Mez could actually go down, but Liquid manages to stay alive. C2 keeps Mez up, and they're able to just get out that aggression, and they were just burning through their mana, mana so rapidly. It was a very similar game to game number one, where eventually Absur just has nothing. There's just nothing left for his blue bar. And even though Wiz K is kiting, his surviving, his health is just going nowhere but down inevitably. And uh, it's, a sad, it's a sad game for Golden Guardians when that's kind of how it plays out. Um, I'm really wondering how, how they can mix this up. What can they do to try to bring well, the game a little bit later? Look at this. So Mez, I think he preemptively sanks because he's got no trinket, no bop, and no bubble. So if Sidu and Mez both get CC'd, Mez dies right here. If if they both get CC'd, Mez dies. But Mez pre-sanks right here. Yeah, right before he gets stunned. He's dead right now, I'm pretty sure. If he doesn't do that, I'm pretty sure he's dead on that pre-sank play. And that was the big push from Wizkin and Peekaboo. And then at the same time, Sam is disrupting it. Shadow Fury, Coil, stopping them from connecting. Like that was really critical uh, from both Mez and Sam uh, to protect themselves right at that moment to stay in the fight. And then as soon as they survived that push, it was like, oh no, you didn't die in that window. Uh, we're done for. <laughs> Just run around and hope you don't die, Wizk. Um, but that was going to be it for him uh, at the end of that match. But really good preemptive moves there uh, from Mez. Yeah, definitely doing a great job. All right, well, Golden Guardians are going to have to do something as Team Liquid is on match point. One loss away from getting knocked out of this tournament, finishing the day in fourth place, which is certainly not a bad place to go, but Golden Guardians doesn't want to give up just yet. So, uh, you, I mean, you kind of already said it, Ben. They're going to have to make some kind of adjustment. I mean, is that like their builds making them a little bit more tanky so they can survive into the late game? Or do you expect them to switch their compositions? I mean, we're heading to yet another small map, but they weren't able to do it that last time on hook point. What's to say they can do it here? I don't know. I don't know what they need to do. <laughs> I, I, like, maybe they need to bring in oh. after John the Mistweaver Monk. I, I don't even know if that would work, to be honest with you, because I feel like Liquid, they just, they've been doing so well into these Warrior Ret teams, whether it's the Mistweaver Monk, now obviously the Shaman. Like, with the Shaman, they're just winning on mana. If Sturge had, like, an unlimited amount of mana, I, I get the feeling that they would actually win this match, but. Surge is having to do so much healing in this matchup with the AoE Mortal Strike and just the overall damage that the Ret and Demonology Warlock are able to bring. If he goes over the Mistweaver Monk, then he's susceptible to crowd control chains, and that might not work out, but I kind of feel like Golden Guardians got to mix it up. They go to a small map. I could see them lock in the same comp, but I, I'm just really afraid that if their strategy is to kill Mez, if, I feel like if Mez and Sidu play well and Samayan plays well, that... Uh, this is liquid game this is liquid's game to lose win i think liquid's gonna win if they do the same thing that's what i'm trying to say 
<laughs> I got you. We're, we're yeah. on the same page. Yeah, I, I mean, it certainly seems like that at the moment. But who, I mean, who knows? You know, we've had so many situations where we kind of thought it was the end for the team that was, you know, basically up against match point and, and they were able to turn it around. So maybe Golden Guardians follows suit here. About 25 seconds to pick a comp. See, dude's warming up. See what I mean about the warm ups? I'm telling you, people are sleeping on it. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're just looking to close this out 3-0 and keep moving on. But what's your take on the Super Tees? I mean, Golden Guardians, what can they do here? I mean, they're probably going to play the same comp. If they do Shadow Priest Rogue... Oh, oh, MM Hunter! I mean, it got them wins in the cup stage, and no one had really played MM Hunter up to that point. It's a really stationary class, but it does a huge amount of damage. So Jelly Beans is coming off the bench here. They're rolling it on the dice here. They're just... They're praying on a crit. They're living on a crit right now with this composition. Well, if if they don't crit, don't Liquid crit. don't die. Like that that is the the name of the game here. That's gonna be the song that they're gonna need blast uh, in this last game. They're putting the tournament lives. Uh, they're betting it all on marksmanship hunter. And I mean, if they hit the lottery, something is gonna die really fast. But they're also gonna be way squishier. They're not gonna get that five minute grace period. Uh, it's gonna be pretty dicey for them. I'm very excited to see. Uh, what Jelly Beats can get done here with the Marksmanship Hunter, just given what his track record on it, you know, all his YouTube videos on it. Like, if there was a Hunter that could pull it off uh, against all odds, I think it, right now it would be Jelly Beans. Oof, you're really, really putting him on a pedestal, Super Tees. <laughs> I mean, out of all the other Hunters, it. I feel like he deserves he it. <laughs> That's fair. Jelly Beans deserves it. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for Jelly Beans in this one, I'm not going to lie. I... I think uh, I think Sam I am. One thing we don't talk about. There's one effect in this game that it's it's kind of not obvious to tell. I talked about it a little bit yesterday, but the Amplify Curse for Warlock is really Ooh. strong. If you use the Amplify Curse of Weakness, you actually just disable crit. If you're you're you have that debuff, you can't crit. So Absurd is going to have to be on point dispelling it. But if Sam I am times it at the right time for like the rapid fire aim shots onto Jelly Beans and limit his crit that way, uh, it might be difficult for him to actually get those kind of one shots. So I'll be looking to see Sam I am actually get that up in this match because I, I can't help but feel like if if Jelly Beans was playing BM Hunter, I could see them maybe winning the long game. But the fact that he's marks makes me feel like they they kind of have to win a little bit early on. Like I don't really see Absurge having any kind of mana lead in this matchup over C2. What's the major difference then in, in the spec here? That's opting for him uh, to do that. For Jelly Beans, I mean, Marks Hunter in general is just more of a burst. and It's less consistent damage. It's more about kind of burst one shot damage uh, when you can, you know, uh, when you can pull it off. Um, so CD's mana isn't going to be taxed as much. If he can survive those moments and they trade cooldowns at the right time, then he should be able to e easily heal throughout the rest of the time. Um, but we'll see. I mean, Jelly Beans is so good on this Hunter. Uh, I expect him to find lots of opportunities in this match. Uh, but I kind of just wonder who they go after. I wonder if they could do a pet strat. I'm a big fan of killing Demonology Warlock pets and Hunter pets. Um, just because it could be difficult to heal, but I feel like if they really track it, maybe they can. But I, I could see, you know, Jelly Beans going after the Felguard um, with like a big rapid fire if they get any kind of cooldowns uh, or any kind of crowd control on C2 um, and maybe take it down that way. Because um, if they, I feel like if they can get both pets out of the way, uh, that would put Golden Guardians in kind of a prime spot. But not exactly an easy thing to do, but something to look out for. Hunters can be Volpira also. You're playing triple Vapira yesterday. They're probably yeah. playing. Well, if I don't think Rhett can, so unfortunately WizK is not gonna be able to, but I think it's more important. Jelly Beans will probably be Night Elf. I feel like he really likes making like flashy plays and like shadow melding stuns and stuff like that. So I'm I would anticipate him to be Night Elf, but maybe it's possible he goes Vulpira just for the passive damage reduction. He's actually playing human, so just straight standard play here. Absur is still Vulpira, which I think that seems unnecessary. I think Orc would be a bit better for him because the double stuns. Uh, but let's see what Jelly Beans can get done here on Dalaran Sewers. They're putting everything on Jelly Beans. The entirety of Season 1 is going to come down to this game if they want to stay alive. Will his Marksmanship Hunter be able to deliver victory? They're sneaking in on top of Mez and c -Doo. Scattershot Hammer Justice opening immediately onto Mez on the corner staircase right here. Earthen Wall Totem down, it looks like. Uh, but they get knocked out of it from that thunderstorm. But here comes a tyrant. Are they going to retreat away from the tyrant? Crowd control the tyrant. They need to figure out what they want to do with it. Whiskey looks like he's trying to get back to the boxes uh, and avoid the tyrant as soon as possible. But Jelly Beans is stunned up now. 
And this is the scary moment for a hunter is when you're stunned, you're so fragile. Healing Tide Totem comes down for Absurge in the back line. He's protected it on that lower side. So really good positioning on that Healing Tide. His team will survive this initial exchange, but as is still not activated Avenging Wrath, and there's no Roar of Sacrifice now for Jelly Beans. Yeah, definitely a scary moment here for the Golden Guardians. Vez going to Trinket, use that Sanctuary on a CD, disrupt a go here from a Golden Guardians, and Liquid is one away from closing it out. They are one away from eliminating Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians, it is do or die. If they want to stay in this tournament, they need to win this game. They have pressure here on the Mez right now. He's down to about 50% health, and it's kind of just like all six members are stacked up behind the boxes right now. I feel like Liquid, they don't really want to make a push. They don't want to be in the open for the Hunter. That's the one downside of playing that Hunter is... Ooh. Oh, but he's just shooting through the walls right now. Wall hack coming up here for Jelly Beans. As soon as I say that, getting some big rapid fires here on Sam I am. He has had enough of this line of sights and wants to make a big push here onto Sam, but it's actually Absurge who's falling further and further behind. Everyone on the Golden Guardians down to 50% health. Liquid has a lot of pressure here. All right, let's see if they can finish with this here on match point. Absurge is stunned. Do they get the Hex? No, he's trapped. They get a Fear instead. Stunned on Whiskey. Jelly Beans is very low here on match point. They can't afford any mistakes. Sidu goes for the Hex. He gets wind sheared by Absturge, but Absurge gets feared by Sam. I am into another Fear, and Whiskey is so low. Jelly Beans is so low. Mez gets knocked off to the side from that Thunderstorm, giving them a little bit of time to breathe, but Whiskey actually jumps back into the fight, maybe a little bit too soon. He's going to go after Sam. I am. Absurge is trying to heal so much damage from Sam and Mez. They've been doubling uh, Whiskey and peekaboo throughout most of these rounds so it's gonna be really tough he gets spell locked jelly beans is stunned everybody is stunned it's match point massive damage is crashing in That's on it. jelly beans and that will be it liquid advance 3-0 what a crazy series this was liquid really just sticking to their guns with the demonology warlock the rep paladin and the resto shaman they have been playing this composition absolutely phenomenal they've been taking this tournament very seriously and unfortunately for golden guardians they just did not have the answer i don't feel like this is really uh, their meta and um unfortunately for them they weren't able to get victory here today and they will be eliminated liquid advances and they have a very difficult matchup a couple matchups ahead of them here today Look at this push at the end. I, I what what you can fall into a trap as a comp like Ret Demo is where all you do is turtle and you don't try and do any setups. And I feel like that's really bad. It's really important to also get setups, and that's what they did right at the end of the game here. Uh, so they crowd control and burst down Jelly Beans. Uh, and look at this setup right now with like fear on Absturge. I really like that they can flip the switch between turtling behind the pillar and then getting aggressive, finding hexes. Uh, and getting aggressive. So right in this final push, they catch Jelly Beans on the top side. They stun him and they coil him and he can't use his aspect of the turtle. I don't know where Absurge was positionally. Oh, he got spell locked. Sam I with a game winning spell lock. Everybody gets stunned. This means nobody can help anybody. Jelly Beans is just all by himself. Sidu knocks Absurge off the side. <laughs> oh my God. That thunderstorm was so dirty, man. <laughs> If we replay Cedar just bouncing Absurge away, like, no, you're not getting the link, bro. I can Thunderstorm too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. All right. Team Liquid 3 0. I guess uh, that was a correct prediction with Channel when we were speaking with him earlier. But uh, that is going to be the end for Golden Guardians. They brought in Jelly Beans on the marks, and unfortunately, it wasn't enough to turn that around in their favor so they're going to finish the season with fourth but that i mean golden guardians had really stepped up i feel like this is the best season they've had in a really long time they played quite a, a wide range of compositions they stepped away um from you know they're kind of their bread and butter uh with rogue shadow priest and experimented a lot with different specs with multi-classing and i feel like this is a really good place for golden guardians to to finish the season vent and i i hope that they're proud of themselves Probably a bit disappointing yeah. for them. I mean, all these teams want to be making it as far as possible. Um, but, you know, overall, I mean, making it top four, definitely not a bad spot to be. It could be worse. Um, and I, I think for the Golden Guardians, like you like you said, they've been doing a really good job picking up lots of different specs, lots of different roles. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them in this particular series. But uh, overall, their team is just, they're, they're so solid. I mean, they've been good for such a long time. Uh, hopefully the roster sticks together and they just keep evolving and, um, maybe go better for them next time more of their meta you know I would be very shocked if if uh, the move parted ways I feel like this team has really stuck it through through thick and thin um, and they're always you know so fun to watch they obviously have a huge fan base with so many people in chat I'm sure rooting them on right now but uh, that's it for them so well done team liquid we're going to see them moving on here in the bracket it's going to be yet another elimination round 
coming up for them. I mean, and they just looked so prepared for that series. You know, they had a, you know, really locked down on that composition, Supertease. So now that they're going on to face off against Luminosity, do you feel like they're going to have similar performance? Yeah, I mean, it's their offensive play, right? Those triple crowd controls that they were getting, that's what they're going to need here if they're going to beat Luminosity Gaming. If they're not finding that crowd control, not finding those setups, uh, then I think Luminosity Gaming is going to outperform them. But this should be the most equal these teams have ever been <laughs> uh, in, a, in a while, I feel like. So definitely Liquid is one of the teams that will be a challenge for Luminosity Gaming. This would be the worst placing for Luminosity Gaming if they did lose. Um, they did lose to Where's Gordy in the fourth cup, and they lost to them now in the upper bracket. But coming in third place, like this is unprecedented. So uh, Liquid right now might be making history if they can get through this to the grand finals. Yeah, certainly. It's, uh, you know, we're so used to Luminosity, formerly Kawhi, kind of just making it, not not dropping a single game and then winning a tournament. But uh, a lot of these teams have been stepping up um, for the, you know, for the challenge to face off against Luminosity. So we'll see if Team Liquid is up for it. But Luminosity, we know that this is an incredible team as well. Both of them fighting to get to the grand finals to face off against Where's Gordy. And before we see that, we're going to head to a break. When we come back, Luminosity Gaming versus Team Liquid up next.
Hello, everyone. We are going straight into the game. It's another elimination round, second North American series of the day. Winner of this, moving on to the grand finals to face off against Where's Gordy. It's Luminosity Gaming versus Team Liquid, Sid. Okay, so Sidu is not playing Dr or not playing Orc and not playing Adaptation. So this is a big change for Sidu. He's playing Draenei and he's playing Gladiator's Medallion. So curious to see how this plays out for him. They've got decent pressure on Drake right off the bat, forcing Shield of Vengeance and Divine Protection and Ancestral Guidance from Brain. So big pull actually, uh, just in that initial exchange. Drake still seems to be on the back foot, but now Drake's getting aggressive. Lightning Lasso from Brain on the mess. He's gonna use his Divine Protection and Shield of Vengeance combo them together to make himself a bit more durable here. Drake's pulling away from Mez, wants to go after Sam, try and force more defensive cooldowns from the side of Liquid, but not finding as much damage as he would have liked in this position, and Liquid are turtling right now. They're playing very close to Sidu's pillar. Yeah, they're kind of just waiting out those wings from Drake. Mez still has his wings ready to go here in his back pocket. Drake actually using that divine protection. So Mez is going to be able to maybe get a big punish here if they can get that CC chain onto Brain. Drake right now at 50% HP. Can they find some damage is the question. What Mez has it available, but not really able to find the crowd control to go with that just yet. Um, I am looking to just get out his pets, looking to get out his imps. Rev in the midfield right now, also trying to do the same here. Get some Hand of Ghoul Dance, They're just waiting for that Demonic Tyrant to fade from Prev. Now that it has subsided, Mez is looking to push in. Hammer of Justice onto Sidu, and they do get the Lightning Lasso onto Mez. He trinkets out, gets Mortal Coil on his trinket, full fear onto Sidu. Big punish here coming out. Mez, what is he gonna do here? He's not using the Sanctuary there on that fear. Mez finally popping his wings right now, looking to get aggressive. They get a full Hex by Sidu onto Brain as well. Drake Drake could be in a little bit of trouble here. He does have his Divine Protection, which just faded right there. And Drake will be making his way back to the pillar. Luminosity did win against Liquid earlier on in this exact same matchup. And right now they have Mez in a chokehold. Can they find something onto Sidu right there? They try to bait the grounding totem there from Drake, but it doesn't look like Sidu is going to fall for it. And it looks like Mez will stabilize for now. Liquid are playing very defensive in this matchup. Now trying to make another push, but Mez is getting pushed back. He can't stay in midfield very long. Coil comes out. Axe tosses as well. This could be a divine shield from Mez if they find more control, but they can't. Drake gets shut down by Mez's Hammer of Justice. Now Prev gains spam feared, and the damage has subsided. They're going after Drake, just exchanging on Paladins in the midfield at the moment as both Shamans trying to set up and just not get interrupted on a cast in the near future as it would be devastating for either side. And Sam, I am still holding on to that Demonic Tyrant. Curious to see when he decides to use it if he's keeping it as a threat if they decide to push in uh, or when he's going to activate it prev now has his demonic tyrant available as well and that's a big power play moment the shamans are going to look to try and crowd control but here comes a double stun onto drake and brain out from liquid as we see shield of vengeance trade from drake he should be fine mez is now the one falling behind he has to trade out as well with that divine protection and shield of vengeance so both paladins bolstering up their defense and stabilizing slight mana edge uh, to brain at this point and the thing is an, is an advantage like this that's small now gets bigger and bigger with time. Yeah, and it's going to get bigger and bigger as Cedar's going to have to burn through some mana right now. The Tyrant, Mez is pushing out with the Tyrant, still firing, getting two shots right there. Beautiful blinding light onto Cedar. Do they have any follow-up crack from Mez? Caught up in the death coil right there, and Mez will get topped off. Cedar leaving that crack control chain. Beautiful shutdown there by Sam I Am, and now they get a stun onto Cedar and a stun onto Drake. They're looking to reverse the pressure back onto Drake. Lightning last coming out here from Cedar as they did overlap it slightly there with the mortal coil, but Drake still taking good damage here from the team liquid and uh, right now Mez also taking a little bit of damage there as well but both of them kind of just camping out in their earthen wall totem and both uh, the shamans here kind of mirroring each other so far whoever can get that next crack control chain though could pull ahead and get those big cooldowns might be luminosity here as they look for Sidu to get him in crack control but they didn't manage to find that stun onto Sidu and they did use the lightning lasso and now it's going to be liquid here getting a stun onto brain can they follow it up though is the question prep shutting it down immediately with the fierce onto Mez. Sam I am just behind the pillar with Sidu, summoning up his pets, trying to just play safe and do damage from afar. And Mez right now also taking a lot of damage again. Hammer of Justice onto Sidu. That's going to be the sanctuary coming out from Mez as he looks to continue his push now over onto Prev. All right, let's see if they can leave the pillar here because that mana advantage is getting bigger and bigger now at the four and a half minute mark. Mez is stunned. Where's the cross crowd control on Cedar? They don't have it. It looks like Drake actually into a lightning lasso. Mez is charging in, stuns onto Brain and both Prev. Now going after Drake in a swap with that mortal coil. Can they take him out here? He's got divine shield. He's got to be careful. He is holding on to it, being greedy. Healing Tide Totem is ticking, but is he going to have to use it? Stun onto Brain now out of range of Sanctuary as Drake is moving his way closer to. 
uh, sorry, Drake is moving his way closer to Brain and now able to recover. And yeah, Liquid are just consistently posting up defensively. Samayam has basically been in that starting room area for most of this fight, just trying to avoid getting cleaved on the pillar with his teammates and make sure that his pets can attack and do maximum damage. But Prev's got Tyrant available and Samayam doesn't. So this is a big opportunity if Luminosity Gaming can find a position to get that Tyrant out into the battle. And with Mez pushing out, I'd imagine Prev wants to go for it soon. Gets windshield on the fear by Sidu. Sidu repositions the pillar to avoid being feared. Prev's getting pressured here. Mez is pushing towards Brain. Gets a blinding light. Stun on Drake. Prev is isolated. Massive damage from Mez. Prev ports back behind the pillar. This is the first swing of pressure we've seen from Liquid so far to try and get an advantage. But Brain is powering up with Ascendance, getting out big heals. And Mez is the one now who has to run as he goes back behind the pillar. Sidu into a full hex. Does fortunately look like it breaks for him to some cleave damage. So you should be able to pick up Mez behind the pillar here in a moment. Good shutdown there. Prev did use his uh, Tyrant there. Did get no value as well. And they didn't make any big cooldowns happen there from the side of Luminosity Gaming, but they did have pressure onto Prev. If they can get that same kind of pressure or, or later on, it could definitely be devastating. Dampening right now at 28%. Both teams starting to feel the pressure right now as we finally see Luminosity Gaming kind of leave that midfield area and Liquid looking a little bit more comfortable here. Finally pushing up here, getting some good pressure, but Maz needs to be careful right now. He's tanking a lot of damage here from the pets of Prev that demonic tyrant finally gonna subside here for Sam I am and once again it's gonna be luminosity gaming with this offensive positioning now they get a nice stun onto Sidu into a full fear Mez is there though to deny it with the hand of sanctuary and now once again Mez in oh. big trouble here Mez what is he gonna do he doesn't want to be too greedy he trades out the shield of vengeance is that gonna be enough Drake as well taking a lot of damage here either probably could just go down without using that divine shield both of them being extremely greedy in this situation just trusting their shamans to keep them alive and so far the greed was good Ooh, that, that was an extremely close call and now double stun coming out i don't know how Mez is going to survive this one and he will have to trade out his bubble and that is going to be the first major defensive here forced out now blinding light onto brain can he get something back an ending resolve from prev would be absolutely massive but prev immediately kiting away there nice hex onto brain by seated with nice kiting as well here from Prev, realizing that he was about to use some big cooldowns if he stayed there in the midfield. Drake also just pushing back here. They got the big hit onto Mez, and now they got the run as well. And Sidu threatening to drink, forces Luminosity to kind of go back in into the offensive positioning that they've been having in this game. And so far, Luminosity Gaming with a pretty significant cooldown lead. Oh, here comes Wings from Drake, but he gets intercepted. Triple crowd control by Liquid, and that gets them a Divine Shield. Excellent counter assault, but now Mez is on the back foot off the back of that, and they're going to need to make sure that they can recover. Sidu gets hexed on oh. his trinket. This could be it for Mez. Drake just needs to connect. He's running in with that freedom. Does he have some crowd control for Sidu? He doesn't want to go behind the pillar and get stunned, so he's going to play it safe here in the back line. There's no spell warding, no bubble for himself, so playing too recklessly could cost his team the game here in game number one, but Mez is so low. He, he must really be eager, wants to go for it, but at the same time, doesn't want to throw the game for his team right now so he's just bouncing side to side on the pillar just trading with mez trying not to go too deep behind the pillar still a slight mana advantage to luminosity gaming at this point spirit link totems are the last lines of defense for both sides here but sam is getting swapped to lightning lasso on mez hammer justice on c to triple crowd control sam does manage to escape from their clutches mez gets the sanctuary out breaking c to free now brain is done they're going after drake they need follow-up the next toss is not going to be long enough and it looks like drake will be able to gate out of there and start getting to safety this is the first time we We've seen Drake retreating though. They've been in an aggressive stance for most of the game. Decides to turn it around and get back into the fight with his Avenging Wrath available, but both Paladins could activate it. And right now, Drake's on the back foot, has to continue retreating away. And Liquid, this is the first time they've really committed away from their pillar. Are they going to go aggressive? Are they going to retreat back? Is this their moment? Are they going to take it in game number one? Can they do it? They're really close. Drake is struggling. Brain drops down the Healing Tide Totem. Can they kill off that Healing Tide Totem? It doesn't look like it. Brain goes for an Ascendance. He's going to get big heals. Mess is falling behind. Spirit Link comes down, but it misses he moves the spirit link back into range just in time but now they're down their spirit link totem brain still has his in his back pocket and this is a game that is going to be unwinding quite quickly at this point as drake is getting bursted once again is he on forbearance he's got lay on hands he goes for the lay on hands but dampen he's at 50 it does nothing he needs link here i think they're trying to be greedy behind the pillar but it's so tough to recover at 48 percent dampening mez now on the back foot. he's forced to retreat he's got spell warding he's going to use it here in the midfield drake's going after sam i am sidu has basically no mana and two of his teammates are low i think they might both decide to drink is Prev going to let that happen? I can imagine the Felguard's coming in here. Drake's trying to stay in range to stop it. Brain got some mana back at this point with that water shield and the pet attacking him. You really can't have the pet attacking the Shaman for too long, I don't think. 
uh, in this type of matchup. Now we can see Prev repositioning, Sidu. fearing off the fell guard. Sidu, does he get mana? Doesn't look like he's going to get too much. He's got a sentence. They just need to wait for Mez's bubble. Why are they going in right now? He's got no bubble for 20 seconds. Just wait 20 seconds. 20 seconds left on Mez's bubble. Also the same amount of time left for Drake's uh, spell warning right there. But Drake right now might have bit enough more than he can chew. They still have the spirit link in Brain's back pocket. The ascendance comes out for Brain. They need to make a push right now. Five seconds left on Mez's bubble. Can they take him down before it right now? Liquid might be able to stay alive here and then have that advantage pushing forward still 40 seconds left for drake's bubble but he does have the spell warding in his back pocket prep now trading out his unending resolve sam am still has that available mess dropping damage to low this could be the bubble right now see the trinket maybe onto the sphere no he's gonna sit through it mess trades the bubble goes for the kill can he take down prev he's got nothing here if they can just hold down w onto prev this might be liquid's game to win here in game number one in this series can they take it is the question right now Drake getting feared up. Prev finally might just go down here. He gets the blessing of spell warding in the nick of time from Drake. Can they get some pressure though? Luminosity is just floundering here behind the pillar. Finally, the demonic tyrant comes out. Mez has nothing. Mez might just go down. The tyrant is chopping away. Big damage coming out. Drake with the offensive bubble and Luminosity Gaming at 59% dampening does manage to secure the kill here onto Mez. But Liquid, they're going to play this one out. Sam I am still has a little bit left in his back pocket, but I don't. I don't think it's gonna happen and it will be luminosity gaming taking game number one but that was so close rain's hit a bm link at the end of the game in the 3v2 like <laughs> look what i still have <laughs> it's like oh man that was rough it was looking like they had a chance there when mez's bubble came out but then they couldn't close out the game then drake had his bubble and then there was a tyrant for prev and in dampening when you're making those pushes the tyrant really decides the pace of the game so prev having his uh, available at these key moments right when they overextend just a little bit too far that tyrant comes out and starts firing so much damage it's a close call for drake right here uh, behind the pillar but mez gets peeled away by prev sam can't do any damage behind the pillar uh, and because they can't push in right here to just finish off the game mez is just kind of stuck taking damage for free and he has to trade spell warding basically off of nothing it was really awkward right there at that one moment in time if they could have just been aggressive and made a push there maybe they could have closed the game out and then right here they get shield from mez and then look at Drake's shield. He's coming up in 26 seconds. So if Mez doesn't win the game right here, I feel like this needs to just run on top of Prev. Yeah. I guess they're they're afraid of what? Like the I don't know what they're afraid of right now. There's no tyrant. Drake doesn't use wings. Prev ports back behind the pillar. It just seemed really tough for Liquid to decide like when when is the moment where we're gonna go for it, and when is the moment where we're not gonna go for it. He gets spell warded. They can't kill him. And then Drake's bubble comes up, and it's game over when Drake's bubble comes up because he's just gonna wings. He's gonna bubble, and he's gonna kill Mez. There's just nothing left for him at this point. He gets stunned and bubble, and Mez is dead. Um, there's, yeah, he lay on hands, but lay on hands is just not useful at this point. Sixty <laughs> percent happening. <laughs> lay on hands looks like it's like just throw it out there. May as well. <laughs> <laughs> see, actually, the scoreboard's important. Look at this. It's it's actually even. Whereas um, yesterday, like, Mez and Sam were getting owned um, on damage. So this this is good. This is a good sign uh, for Liquid, the fact that the scoreboard is even. Actually dead even all across the board, more or less. Wow. There's a little bit of difference there uh, between the healing of Mez and Drake and a little bit of uh, a difference between the Shamans, but it's really not too much there. And... Uh, this was about as close as it can get, you know, like if they could just have kept up that pressure on the Prev, they might have won there uh, on the side of Team Liquid, but that spell warding came in and kind of blocked the kill, and then Mez had to retreat a little bit, and then the cooldown of that bubble came back, and yeah, just a really, really close game uh, overall, and uh, I think this is all we're going to see, you know, just mirrors all the way through, and uh, may the better team win. Yeah, I guess so, but uh, that that means that we're gonna have to see Team Liquid win the swing match if they want to win this series. If it does go to game five, so uh, might prove to be a little bit difficult. We're going to Ash Mains, and like you predicted, we're getting another mirror here for game number two. Super tease, and I, I mean, it's you know you said it yourself, really even in the match score, really even throughout that entire game. Like, what can Liquid do differently heading into this, if anything? Uh. Maybe it comes down to like holding on to your tyrant. Like when you get to a certain point of dampening, don't just like throw it out rotationally. You wait like a couple extra seconds, wait for a better moment to use it. Because Prev having tyrant available and Sam I am not having it available was a big reason why they got overwhelmed at the last second of the game. So 
you know, once you get to that key point in dampening, it, it becomes more about just like, you need to save it as long as you can so that it gets the most value uh, in a given situation. Uh, and if you don't have that threat, then the other team gets to play with confidence running you down deep in dampening and there's nothing to threaten them back. So it, it becomes more of like a threatening tool as opposed to like a min-max your damage tool. Um, right. But yeah, the, the biggest thing is just like, when do you push? When don't you push? This is the first time we've seen this type of comp in a tournament play, right? Like we never see Ret Demo Resto Shaman. So figuring out like when the moment is to push, like both teams are figuring that out basically as they're playing. <laughs> in, in and the they're match. playing themselves too. So <laughs> it's, it's really hard um, for both sides to decide here. Uh, when, when is that opportunity and when should they take it? Seems like Liquid are the ones who don't want to be, you know, getting too aggressive before dampening. Like they were really on. Like if we had like a graph of like time spent on area of the map, like Sidu and Ness <laughs> were behind their pillar like seventy percent of the game or something like that. Sam, I am as well, really far back. So they're they're holding out and waiting for that deep dampening push. But it just seems like Luminosity Gaming were able to navigate it better in that in that final minute. All right. Well, let's see. Round number two here, Amir, yet again, Luminosity Gaming up 1-0. Yeah, and I think targeting as well is actually kind of important in this matchup. It seemed like Liquid favored going after the Warlock a lot more than Luminosity Gaming did. I feel like Luminosity Gaming, they really didn't go after Sam I Am a whole lot on that Warlock, and they were just trying to get those setups onto Mez over and over again. But this is game number two, guys. This is the lower bracket final. Winner advances to face off against Where Is Gordy for that grand final. This is $40,000 on the line for this series here. This is a best of five, and it is going to come down to a straight-up mirror Team Liquid, Sidu, Mez, and Sam I Am with Trill on the bench against Luminosity Gaming here. Who is going to take it here? We're in game number two. Ashman's fall. Beautiful knock there onto Drake. Actually, Lightning Lasso there in midfield. That's going to allow Sam I Am to get a decent amount of damage there onto Drake, but Brain is there to deflect the damage. Mez now as well, kind of receiving the same treatment. Drake, though, in a coil. Beautifully done there by Sam I Am into the Shadow Fury here onto Prev, into the Cap Totem as well. Lot, lots and lots of disruption coming out here from Team Liquid so far, and we are expecting this game to go a little bit longer here. Both teams kind of playing it a little bit more defensive. Nobody really wants to overextend behind those pillars and try to throw the game away. There's so much on the line here. Both teams playing it out more methodical and trying to just get those setups and trying to win that war of attrition. It feels like Drake and Prev are pretty eager. Like they, they want the game to play. Like they're they're kind of pushing up on them, trying to get an advantage in positioning here to try and maintain a mana advantage, I would imagine. They do get caught here with a stun on Drake and a stun on Brain. Divine Protection is up. Shield of Vengeance comes up in one. I don't think Drake should be going down through those cooldowns. Now Sam is actually on the back. Sam is really out there. Okay, he's got his port at the pillar. He's going to port back there. Next to Sidu, go for the Vile Fiend. Try and pressure Drake away from their pillar. And it looks like Drake, he's just trading with Mez at the moment. And looking like he wants to push forward. They stun up Sidu. It gets Sanctuaried by Mez. Now pulling back towards Brain on this side of the pillar. Mez charging forward into the midfield. Where is he going to go? Is he going after Brain? Is he going after Prev? He's, he's making some moves here towards them, but decides to pull away. There's the Fell Obelisk down from Prev, really far away from the fight. Stun on Brain, Stun on Drake. Great setup here from Liquid, and that gets them a Divine Shield. This is what Ooh. I like to see from Liquid is don't just turtle the whole game. Like Take some opportunities. Take a little bit of risks. Get some CC, because who knows? You might find an opportunity before dampening. Yeah, and they definitely do, but, uh, you know, Drake might be able to get that bubble back. We're just going to have to wait and see. They really need to try to capitalize on the fact that Drake doesn't have that Divine Shield now, but Mez, a little bit of trouble here. Going to be pushing back to Cedar there, make sure that he gets nice and topped, and now feeling a little bit more confident here to go out. Once again, Lightning Lash coming out onto Drake here. They get the Axe Toss onto Brain. Can they get something more now onto Drake? That would be massive. They do get the Divine Protection full, Blinding Light there onto Brain, but Mez now in a lot of trouble. Cedar is free, though, to make sure that he gets the those heals out then Mez will be able to stay alive there without even trading out his divine protection now finally will use it together with that shield of vengeance and they are in that earthen wall totem as well beautiful port there by Sam I am because he does get swapped to there a little bit and Mez still taking a decent amount of damage here a lot of pressure coming out here from Drake with those wings active right now and as soon as those fade then we are gonna see a little bit less pressure potentially from luminosity gaming but now that they got that kind of big cooldown out of Drake I want to see liquid continue to make Make those setups that we just saw there continue to push the pace and try to get that blessing of spell warding so mez is always down one major cooldown and that's exactly what uh, luminosity is doing right now they actually get mez's trinket there with that setup double stun onto sidu and mez they get the trinket they get the sanctuary they've done the hit now it's time for them to kind of run stay back chill in this earthen wall totem and just wait 
for Team Liquid to do their go and try to disrupt it, especially these Warlocks. They need to be very good at kind of stopping these chains before they happen. Get the Fierce onto the Red when he's crossing. Get the Axe Toss, get the Counter Spells. Make sure that you're interrupting the other Warlock as much as possible. And as I say that, Sam I actually did get a Counter Spell right there. Now Prev pushing in here to try to get a fear, but not able to find it. Cedar in the Hammer of Justice behind the Pillar Mess can't reach him. And now Cedar gets swapped through. Huge damage. He's dead. He's totally streaking. Oh. He might just go down. Insane save there by Mez actually getting that Hand of Sacrifice in the nick of time there onto Cedar. And both teams definitely firing on all cylinders here. Huge push there from Luminosity Gaming. Oh my god, I thought it was over there for Cedar. I thought we were going to match point, but stays alive. He knocks Brain out into the midfield here. Cedar's getting aggressive with no trinket. He's going to retreat away. I can't believe he did an astral shift amongst all that damage, um, but does manage to hold on to it. His trinket's out of the way, though, uh, which does leave Mez possibly exposed in the future. He's repositioned by the pillar. Healing streams down. Prev getting pressured. Decent damage from Mez here. Gets the unending resolve, but here comes Vile Fiend out for Prev and a Tyrant, and they need to run from that. Sam ports, but he ports away from his team. Mez is just getting demolished by that Tyrant at the moment. Is he going to go down? Blinding Light, no trinket. Mez is so low, trying to get back behind the pillar into a coil now onto Cedar. What cooldown are they going to trade here? If I'm being honest, I almost rather they trade Spirit Link as one of their earlier cooldowns. I feel like that one gets less and less value as the fight goes on, and it's also harder to connect, but they don't have to use it anyways. Prev is on the back foot. He's trying to stay alive. Mez now getting counterattacked. Is he going to be able to stay aggressive? Doesn't look like it. He's pulling back to the pillar. Brain puts a healing tide totem behind his pillar to make sure that Prev gets healed up here and his team can get aggressive at the same time. Stun on Mez, stun on Sidu. Good cross into a fear. They're going after Sidu again. Really going after the resto shaman. Uh, you know, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice. I don't think Sidu's going to get fool me twice here as he just gates away from that swap. Now they're going back onto Mez. Divine protection force, but Prev is exposed. They break through Dark Pack. Are they going to be able to crush Prev? He ports behind the pillar. It looks like blinding light from Mez misses there doesn't hit brain that's really unfortunate losing that instant crowd control mez is now coiled back into the midfield getting blasted drake is randomly low though is he gonna die <laughs> trades with the divine protection and the shield of vengeance uh, and manages to stabilize through the avenging as wrath assault of mez mez is gonna gate back to his team but drake is stacking up on him looking to push the pace here his divine shield is available he's got confidence to make moves see to pre earthen wall totems to stun here producing a huge amount of damage on his team now they're going to get aggressive. Mez is moving into the midfield. Stunned onto Drake with that lightning lasso behind the pillar. Mez is trying to connect some damage. Hammer of Justice out of it, but not finding too much damage. It's actually, Mez that seems to be the one that's falling behind, despite that stun lock. Brain into a stun, but they don't have any crowd control. Prev's going for a tyrant. Where is this tyrant going to be firing? Looks like it's firing onto Mez. He's going to duck behind the pillar. Grounding totem from Sidu to soak some hits on that tyrant. Sam is sitting on his tyrant. And this is where the tyrant really becomes a big deal. How is Sam I am going to line this up to make sure that it gets value after Prev's tyrant is over? Over. Mez is just getting destroyed. His, their whole team is in shambles right now at half health. They need to survive 10 more seconds of that healing tide totem for Sidu. Can they make it? Mez is stunned up now. Sidu not doesn't look like he has a dispel for that stun. Now into a double blinding light. Fortunately, it is going to break the Demonology Warlock Pet Cleave. Sidu is ahead on mana, which is one advantage that he has not had so far in the series. Stun onto Drake here, trying to finish him with the Avenging Wrath. Not finding enough damage though. And Prev just ports away. Mez is not going to be able to connect and is he going to stay here in the middle of the map? It does not look like a favorable trade right now for him in, in this position. And he's a little bit hesitant to make his move in or out right now. Mez, what is he going to do here? He can't just stay in the midfield like this. He's going to have to trade something here. Big damage coming out. And that will be the Divine Shield from Mez now being traded out at 36% dampening. I am not sure if he's going to get that back. Drake now in that position where he has his bubble back and he can get aggressive. Unless he can force it right now. Cedar going for a Hex. Not able to find it there. Brain does deflect it. And as a result, they are going to be able to just go back behind the pillar on the side of Luminosity. Take that bubble from Mez and kind of just go back, relax. The Tyrant as well from Sam I Am did come out there. So Prev gonna have his Tyrant back up in just a few short seconds here. No bubble on Maz. They still have that Trinket Spirit Link to fall back on from Sidu. Both Shamans really, really playing efficient here. Both having plenty of mana to work with at 40% dampening, but their heals, are they gonna be effective? Drake right now is gonna need some of those heals to come through. He's dropping quite low there. The Divine Protection, is that going to be enough? Maz doesn't wanna push in too much. Doesn't have his bubble. He does have his Blessing of Spell Ward. He might have to use it right now as he does get caught up there in the lightning last but they dropped it with the axe toss beautifully done there by sam i am as they continue to make that push and the tyrant right now rooted up mez is just line of sighting it look at mez what he's doing here he's making sure that the tyrant starts a cast and then he goes behind the pillar make sure that he starts a cast and then he goes behind the pillar and he's kind of cc'ing the tyrant just with his positioning there really nice micro plays there from lord mez himself but now mez gating back here to drake trying to get the divine shield can they get a lightning lasso big push from team liquid the shield avengers coming out here for drake 
Is that going to be enough? He's going to have a big hit with the wings there, trying to reverse the pressure back onto Mezmez. Needs to be extremely careful here. This could be the spirit link. This is 45% dampening. Both of these shamans really, really showing the limit of their class, keeping their red paladins alive through all of this damage right now. Mez again caught up in a stun. Drake pushing in for the blinding life. Can they find it? Full stun onto Cedar. He blinds him immediately on the sanctuary. Beautiful blind there by Drake. Mez with nothing left. Might need to trade his Bruno spell warding. That's the only thing he still has going for him right there. That blessing, but it's not going to be traded just now. Cedar manages to pick him back up once again as Liquid looks to get aggressive. Okay, so Sam's Tyrant's on cooldown for two minutes, and Prev's comes up in 18 seconds. And I, if you want to bet, I think Prev's Tyrant is going to win the game, and Sam doesn't have one to threaten back. So this is looking rough, I think, for Liquid in this position. And, and they're just waiting for it. Prev, Drake, and Brain, they know that win condition. Just sit back at the pillar, wait for Dark Pack, wait for Tyrant to come off cooldown. Sam's is still actually a minute away. There might be some possibility for Sam's team to be able to survive 54 seconds after that point. But wow, Prev is actually just launching the Tyrant. I cannot believe that he's just firing the Tyrant while the team is all behind the pillar. Prev's Tyrant may not get any value right now, which means Sam's Tyrant in 40 seconds could. But if they have to survive to that point, huge final reckoning, massive damage from Drake. Look at the entire team. Cedar's got a lot of work ahead of him right now. If he wants to keep his team alive in this series, he's going to Astral Shift. Everybody is getting cleaved apart right now, cleaved asunder, and everyone's full health on the side of Luminosity Gaming. They're falling apart. Ascendance comes up in two more seconds for Cedar. Is he going to be able to survive two? And Ascendance available, and he's probably going to pop it at any moment here. He's caught in a Hammer of Justice. He's going to Trinket Ascendance and try and recover through this astonishing amount of damage. Now, Sam, is he, is he who's bought time for Sam? He's got Tyrant coming up in 10 seconds, and that's what he needs to make a play with. So Luminosity Gaming, they're going to have to abandon their push here. I, I think Drake is overextended at the moment. He's going to have to Divine Shield. Divine Shield forced him, but now nice. he's going for the kill. 10 seconds away on Mez. They need the link. Where's the link? He's so low right now. Spell warding comes up for Mez, and that looks like it's going to be enough here for Mez to survive. And now Drake's on forbearance. He's going to pull away from the engagement. Both teams know how much is on the line right now, and they are not risking it. 40,000 and the potential to even get 70,000 on the line right now. Luminosity Gaming trying to put Liquid on match point, but Liquid trying to tie us up here. Now they have a huge cooldown advantage. Drake has the spell warding, but Maz has the divine shield right now. Cedar with no trinket. Brain has the trinket link. Who is going to fall? Drake right Double now blind. pushing forward. Double blind coming out there onto Brain. Drake might just die right here. He has the spell warding and he will trade it. Now Sam, I am in trouble with nothing left as well. He could be a target. Cedar, what is he going to do? He has the spirit link available. He might need to trade it here as Drake looks to, to continue pushing forward. Brain right now as well, looking for the hexes, looking to get aggressive. Brain's mana not doing too hard, but I don't think it's going to come down to mana. It's going to have to be a spirit link. Double blind comes out. They're going after Samayam. He's got nothing left. Samayam on 10% HP. Tyrant is out. Big damage, but Drake right now might fall as well. Spirit link trades for Brain. Cedar trades his spirit link. Oh Somebody's going down in this blender. Who is it going to be? Sam on 10%. Drake on 30% HP. <laughs> Sam teleports away. He gets away. Maid go Maid's going yes. for the kill. Oh. Uses the divine Shield in the next go time. for it. He has to go for it. Nez pushing down Mez, the WQ. He doing? can't go for it. What? He needs to go back. And right now, Drake and Luminosity has recovered. Nez could potentially fall. 65% dampening. Sidu has mana. Brain has nothing. Drake behind the pillar. 10% HP. Nez pushing in and looking confident. Big damage, Judge. And that is going to be 1 1 for Team Liquid. Uh... He's behind the pillar. Sidus, I think. God, I'm here with the earthen wall totem. What a close call, man. Like, deciding when you need to make your push and deciding when you shouldn't looks so dicey. Like, you, you know, you push it at the wrong time, the game's over, you lose. You, you don't push in and you don't win, you lose. Like, oh my God. All right, we're tying up one to one. This is not going to be a clean sweep. Yeah, we got a series on our hands for sure. Jeez, that was, that was intense. Would he have died if he pushed in there, do you think? I mean, they had the mana lead, so I don't know. I just thought, well, he's bubbled and immune to damage. Like, you got to do it while you're immune, you know? If we watch it in the replay, I I mean, I get maybe c just wanted to get him topped. But, like, how are you going to get him topped, bro? It's like 70% damage. I mean, it's so, <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, they won, right? The decision still won them the game. But yeah. uh, it, it just kind of felt like you got to make a move when you're immune to damage there for at least a few seconds and Drake can't recover. There's no cooldowns left for him. It's so tough to like navigate. Like, does he have nothing? Like maybe they do have a cooldown. And if I go behind the pillar and he has it, I'm going to die uh, type of deal. So maybe it's just better to stay safe in that position. But this was really evenly fought uh, from both sides here on Ashamane's fall. It's weird. Uh, Luminosity Gaming or sorry, Liquid, anytime they've won against Luminosity Gaming has been on this map. 
So it seems like big maps are going to be important for them uh, throughout this series. This is a crazy moment on Sam. Almost goes down like 5% health. Then they turn it around on Drake. And look at that. Uh, what is that a 1 HP screenshot like like Waz was? Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. The Sam gates away at like 5% health here at this moment in the game. Look at Sidu's team. Everybody's dead. And this is it. Like Mez, do, like, does he go in right there or not? He decides not. He's like bouncing around. Sidu's healing him. Gets a couple of healing surges. And then they decide to make their push here. Uh, but like you've got to make a push uh, brain has zero mana no cooldowns you got to go in behind that pillar use the shield of vengeance use the divine protection and kind of just like throw yourself like a hail mary behind the pillar and just if they hit you your your shield's going to explode and you're going to take somebody down with you at that point um, and they managed to close it out Sidu has a mana advantage on this game so if they can keep that up for the rest of the series it might be possible the luminosity gaming for the first time would be going out of this tournament in third place oof I think that was the longest game of the weekend for sure, right? I think so. Yeah. And then the second longest Close was the it. last one. <laughs> These mirrors are intense. Definitely, yeah. And I feel like, you know, the longest match of the day and maybe also the most intense because it was getting uh, real tricky at the end there. But we've got another draft. We're heading into Tiger's Peak. We've got yet another mirror. This is just, this is getting scary. I mean, both of these teams facing elimination, both of them in powerhouses for NA for so long. I mean, I I don't know, maybe I'll get blamed for this, but I love when we see mirrors. I love when we see teams not backing down from a mirror as well. It's kind of like, it really is like a true test to like, who is the better team, Zico? Absolutely. And you know, you really hit the nail on his head there because sure, the game was long, but if you go back all the way to kind of the start, like two, third minute or so of the match, Sidu almost went down. Like, a worse team just dies there. You know, Sidu, he got stunned. He got coiled on his trinket. He went down to like 10%. The Mez came in and he saved him. He got the sacrifice. And then Sidu held on to his cooldowns as well. He didn't want to overcommit because then he might die later. You know, there's so many split second decisions like that. You know, the players are really fast at reacting to what's going on. And Luminosity as well. You know, they're finding, you know, kind of win conditions that we didn't really see. We're, you know, it's been all about getting those double stuns, setting up the, you know, the red paladins, but Luminosity gaming kind of flipping a switch trying to go after the shaman a little bit trying to go after the warlock later on as well so both of these teams definitely playing insane and especially cedar in that last game the way he's kind of conserving his mana the way he's conserving his healing the way he's saving his cooldowns for those big moments you know there's moments where everybody's at 20 percent and he's perfectly saved you know his ascendance and all of his big cooldowns for that specific moment and he manages to top his whole team a worse shaman your team just flops there you know <laughs> so uh, i really feel like you know Everybody playing really well on both sides right now. And that's why the games are going so long. And that's why, you know, uh, these games are being decided, you know, by basically just one misstep, just one little cooldown trade uh, from either side. So and that's why it's 1-1 apiece. Yeah, there, there really is so much riding on the minutia of, of these games when you have two teams just as strong as this, when the stakes are as high as they are uh, right now. So I, it definitely a good chance that we do end up going to a, a game five super tease. I mean, t you kind of already said it, you know, it seems like we're just going to get a mirror every single matchup and we're just going to keep getting sort of neutral matches like this M neutral maps. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I can't, Think of a comp that either side would be able to play at this point other than the ones that they're using right now right like we saw mage lock do really well uh into this comp but neither team can can play a mage lock to the caliber i think that would be required to win that so mirroring is likely going to be the way that this ends and you know it's the shaman patch this is the patch where like the main na shamans like they want to be getting this title like there's if there's a title you're gonna get it hasn't been a shaman meta for a while like if if they can't squeeze through now on this meta, like it's going to be potentially a tough ride moving into the future. So Sidu did a really phenomenal job in that last game. Like he out healed, out manned Brain uh, in that game on the scoreboard, even despite Drake and Prev you know, having a pretty significant damage lead uh, through that throughout that fight. So you can tell, like Sidu wants this title. He this is this is the Shaman patch. He wants to be, show the world why he's the Shaman King, uh, and he does not want to be going out too early here. Yeah, he's yeah, look at that. representing all the rest of shamans out there. He's doing it for them. Six million more healing there on Sidu. That's actually quite significant. Also getting a little bit more damage. The damage probably doesn't matter as much, but it's like, you know, lightning lassos and, and things like that. But uh, I feel like Sidu uh, definitely flipped the switch today because they did play yesterday, you know, these two teams. I believe Luminosity is the team that actually knocked Liquid down here. So 
uh, Team Liquid definitely uh, kind of showing up today, you know, uh, just uh, fresh and uh, looking like they are ready to, to tear down this lower bracket. They already got a 3-0 under their belt against the Golden Guardians and sent them packing. Now they're looking to do the same against Luminosity. And this, this game is just such a massive game, right? Because Luminosity Gaming has been the team to beat in all of North America for the longest time. If they finish in third right now, Luminosity Gaming has their worst placing in, well, I don't, like since BFA maybe? I, I actually can't remember I the last the time. they started. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, pretty much. They, we always used to seeing them first place, first place, first place, first place. If they, like one cup, maybe they finish second or third. But uh, in these big events, it's always Luminosity Gaming coming out on top. So Team Liquid, you know, fresh out of the gauntlet right now and they're just coming in here and taking down titan after titan can they do it though they're gonna need to win here on tiger's peak and put themselves on match point and uh it's gonna be exciting to see what they what they actually do here once the gates open yeah that's certainly the question can team liquid pull down another titan send them out of the tournament move on to the na grand finals we will see soon enough we're heading into tiger's peak one to one right now luminosity gaming looking to make their comeback here looking to prove that they belong up there instead that they want to have that rematch against where's gordy so we're coming up to a third game let's see who puts themselves on match point all right who's going to be defensive we saw luminosity gaming experimenting a lot with targets in that last one and i wonder if that maybe ends up being a mistake it seems like the rep paladin is the target that dies almost every game ignoring maybe like some of the earlier rounds but Especially after everybody has switched Vulpira, it feels like the Warlocks are um, less likely to be the target that dies. You have to overextend a bit when they port. It's hard to hold them down. If they soul burn port, they're immune to snares. They can kind of kite you at the end of the game and their pets are just killing you. So, you know, maybe those swaps are a little bit too risky, cost you too much. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say how much of an impact like the first three to four minutes have if the game goes for 12 plus minutes. Um, in the match overall maybe it is better to try and swap shaman in the first four minutes maybe that's your highest likelihood of killing a target um uh, before dampening mm -hmm. so we'll have to see here on tiger's peak it's not going to be too much of an advantage to either side although liquid does seem to prefer more defense um dragging the fight on trying to play on the fact that sidu is playing more efficiently on the shaman and trying to use that as their strength here in the series yeah, and so far it's uh, working out for them in the series, but this is going to be the swing match. That shouldn't really matter too much here in the series as we see both teams kind of just locking in the same thing. But if somebody does want to mix it up, this game will be extremely important to win. And remember, $40,000 on the line guaranteed if you win this one with the chance of making that $70,000. Both teams want it. Double blind coming out. Sam, I am already trading here with his unending resolve. Big pressure actually coming out from Luminosity Gaming as they look to mix up their targeting once again. Going after that Warlock here early on and the shaman in that last game and so far actually doing a lot of pressure sam i am still line of sight he's seated right now needs to get back into his shaman's line right there and he will catch a couple of heals from Sidu, but he did have to use a lot of cooldowns there that unending resolve could be an opening here for luminosity gaming spell lock on that demonic tyrant there of sam sam's going for the tyrant again so are they going to crowd control it stay behind the pillar drake is staying behind the behind the pillar for now but he's caught in a stun and the tyrant looks like it should be making it so it looks like it got rooted by brain into a cap totem in that back line so the tyrant not getting too much damage out cdu and new hammer justice they're switching their attention to mez shredding him down to half but he's saving his cooldowns although cdu's in a fear right now is he going to get sank out of this does it end up breaking to damage early Coil over onto Mez. Drake's going after him. Sam's trying to bait Drake into that starting room, and Drake's not falling for that bait. He's immediately going back to the opposite side of the Tiger statue here, uh, along with his team playing in the back line. And you can tell both teams are a little bit hesitant to make any significant pushes this early in the game. They want to try and preserve important cooldowns like Divine Shield uh, until a little bit later. But here comes a double stun set up by Liquid. They don't find any damage, though, uh, onto Drake with that, which is unfortunate. Mez is actually the one that's falling behind. Maz right now finding, finding himself in a hammer of justice. Drake pushing in here, looking to get aggressive, and they will get that shield of vengeance. They will get that divine protection, and uh, Drake now as well making that same trade here on the opposite side. Now going after Sam. I am here trying to get some damage onto Sam, trying to punish the fact that he doesn't have unending resolve. But in five short seconds, he will have that cooldown available, and uh, Sam. I am should be completely fine in the matchup. So that warlock push really didn't net them much, but it did net them a little bit of a mana lead. Maz actually trinketing out of this lightning lasso as they do. Add 
Axtos Sam this time around and Lightning Lasso Maz. So a little bit of a strategy adaptation there, maybe in their lockdown. Previously, it's been all about stunning Sidhu and Maz, but now they want to shut down Sam I am because he's the one stopping a lot of these Lightning Lassos from actually going through. Sidhu sneaks in a hex onto Brain, but Drake seems to be okay for now. Double stun coming out now onto Sidhu and Maz, and there is the counter stun from Sam I am. Now Tyrant coming out here for Sam into another stun onto Drake. That Tyrant needs to get crowd controlled. Can they get something going onto it? Double Tyrant actually out right now, and you can see Sam I am actually has his Tyrant out of crowd control there in the back, but doesn't move in and might be rooted actually behind there. I'm not sure uh, what is going on with that Tyrant, but he's not doing damage, which is great, of course, for Luminosity Gaming. Drake finding himself now in a stun lock, but he will be able to make his way out of that one now into a lightning lasso by Sidhu, and he will trade the Divine Protection once again. Mage Swift is coming out from Brain. Should be enough defense to keep Drake nice and healthy as Drake and the rest of Luminosity look to get their pressure here, potentially onto Mez or Sam. Drake is spending a lot of time on Sam in this game, at least in the earlier minutes of it. Um, now Sam's going to reposition to that starting room. He really likes that positioning. If you're watching as a Warlock and wondering why the Warlocks are positioning, Sam is using that open field in the back behind his team a lot. That way, if the pet's on him, it's not cleaving his teammates, and he can still cast on enemies from back there and start generating some demons as well. So I do like that positioning, splitting from the team, making sure you're not getting cleaved. Uh, but now Sidhu, he's pushing in midfield here along with Mez. I think Brain might have been trying to drink. I, like He got a pretty significant amount of mana right there. They go for a double stun, and mana seems to be really important in this type of matchup. Drake's falling behind, though, at the back of that drink. Mez is charging in, trying to punish that drink and force a cooldown, but Drake has retreated too far away. Mez can't overextend. Sidhu looks like he's trying to drink, but I think those pets are going to move on to him in just a moment. He shouldn't be able to get any mana as a result. Drake is moving in. He's double blind. They're going after Sam I am. What are they going to get from him? He ports back to the pillar. They, they go after Sidhu, but he just knocks Drake back into that starting room, roots him up with that Unleashed Shield. So Sidhu has actually switched talents. He's also playing Unleashed Shield, and that's going to be really significant in a matchup like this when you can catch the Rep Paladins in it. Yeah, definitely going to be significant. And Drake actually is taking some significant amount of damage right now. Might need to trade here. And he will catch another big heal there. That nature swiftness from Brain. Doing a lot of work. Shield of Vengeance for Drake is about to get popped here onto someone. But uh, it doesn't look like it's going to hit anybody, actually, as it does explode right there. Mez now making his way in. Gets the double blind here. Prev actually triggers. Brain triggers as well. So double overlap there. Could be an opening. Really high value blind there for Mez. And Drake gets caught behind the pillar. He did have a stun for Drake there as well. They have a stun for Brain actually Drake it. forced to use the divine shield there as well so now they got trinket trinket and divine shield in one push here from team liquid and that is going to be luminosity for sure playing defensive now until they get some of those cooldowns back because right now if they make a strong push they could potentially just take somebody out on the side of team liquid here if they can find that aggression i feel like they, this is the time for them to actually push the pace here a little bit sam i am also has his demonic tyrant in about 30 seconds so definitely a huge opening for them to at least if they don't get a kill to continue to accelerate the lead force out the spirit link make sure that brain is spending his mana because right now brain is full mana as well so i really feel like team liquid this is your moment to get aggressive and actually push the pace all right waiting for dampening here to stack up a bit before they make a big push both teams um not in the same positions at all with no divine shield no trinket on brain no trinket on drake at least no human ratio to break stun uh, drake is just mounted up trying to buy time to get divine shield and liquid aren't taking advantage of this moment at all they're just staying back at the pillar and it's a gamble man i swear when you you get to 70 percent dampening like any extra one one final verdict crit just decides that you die and the other ret doesn't so i don't know man not making a push when you've got a big cooldown lead like this uh Maybe it comes back to bite them, but they just want to play it as safe as possible. Prem ports away from the Lava Burst there. Not going to be taking too much damage for free. As we see the pets getting feared up. Mez is uh, he's just trying to bait a stun running into the middle of the map like that. But now pulling back. Drake is moving in. No, Drake's trying to bait a stun too, I think. Both teams are trying to bait stuff here with throwing their paladins a little bit in. Like, hey, I'm coming in. You should stun me. And then pulling away. Um, to try and bait that move, but not finding it. I mean, Drake is happy. I feel like Drake, uh, like, you're not getting pushed on and you've got no bubble for two more minutes. Like, this is pretty chill for Luminosity Gaming. They're getting their cooldowns back. It's just yeah, a this reset a if this keeps going. <laughs> it's actually a full on reset. Like, the game just started. Everybody has all of their cooldowns back. Uh, at that point, if they can uh, stay out of danger on the side of Luminosity for another two minutes, both Chamas, they really, nobody wants to take damage. Nobody wants to have that kind of mana lead 
um, you know, into dampening, or everybody wants the mana lead into dampening. Nobody wants to be at a mana deficit into dampening, I should say, uh, between these shamans. And Brain was able to drink earlier on, so the fact that Brain loses his mana lead is a bit of a small victory, at least for Team Liquid, but maybe they just rely on the fact that their shaman is Sidhu, and maybe they want to just try to win that game that way. But right now, a little bit of aggression coming out here from Team Liquid, still a minute away there on that Divine Shield. Double blinding light coming out. They're going after Prev right now a little bit. As though gets caused, it gets caught up in the midfield here as he does have to retreat. And I'm not, Drake actually using his trinket here, so they do get something back. See, do not caught up in a hex there. It looks like out of that blinding light, Brain looking to make an aggressive play here with the rest of his team. Can he get something onto Mez right now? There is going to be the sanctuary coming out from Mez. He's still dropping quite low, though. Sido has a little bit of work ahead of him here as he does manage to pick Mez back up there with that healing tide totem. Drake now caught up in a stun. Drake will be able to get out of that one cleanly as uh, once again, Luminosity Gaming just kind of ducked back. They've managed to stall here and get their bubble back. They got the trinket of Drake, which is a small victory, but still, they had such a wide opening earlier, but now Mez might have to pay the ultimate price here. Mez forced to trade out his Divine Shield. This is disastrous for Team Liquid <laughs> because, you know, Drake, he could turtle and get his bubble back at 40% dampening. I'm not sure if Mez gets his bubble back at all here in this game. And meanwhile, look at Luminosity here. They already got the bubble. They got the trinket. Uh, well, they actually don't have the trinket on Drake, but they have the trinket on everybody else. So now they can make a push here offensively and actually try to snowball that lead that previously Liquid actually had. Oh, they might get Divine Shield here with that Lightning Lasso on Drake. They're trying to push through Divine Protection. Not enough damage. Shield of Vengeance activates. Now Mez in trouble. Trades out as well to try and reduce damage. But dampening is so high. Sidhu's really struggling. He's caught in a stun. Gets Sanctuaried by Mez instantly as they pull back behind the pillar. And they're trying to hold on here. I can't believe this game went to a complete reset. And now it's Mez who doesn't have a bubble. And it's Liquid sitting behind the pillar <laughs> waiting, hoping that they can get their bubble back. I wonder what number both these teams are waiting for. Is it like 60% dampening? 50% dampening? Like what's, what is the critical? mass point where you try and make a game ending push that's gonna be a question we need to ask one of these teams if they end up winning the entire thing like what are their thoughts for this kind of stalemate that they're taking uh, and what what number are they really aiming for because it's hard to tell at this point right now it makes sense for mez like no bubble nine and a half minutes in doesn't want to be going in the middle of the map but now he actually does get caught by a lightning lasso uh Sidu Ooh, grounds God, the gosh. hammer of justice really good grounding totem double blind from mez big opportunity where's mez gonna go with this hammer justice gets sanctuaried by Drake, and Drake should be able to stabilize his brain in the back line. Mez gets coiled away, not able to connect too much damage. The kill off the fell obelisk of Sam I am. Drake's got a lot of pets on him right now, though, and he's taking quite a bit of damage from it. He's trying to pull away from Mez. Shield of Vengeance has to trade while he's running away. You hate to do that. You really like to use that cooldown as like a buffer for your push to move in and win the match. So could be an opportunity. Mez's bubble comes up in two minutes here. Mana is still even on the shamans with dampening is so high. It's gonna be tough for Sidu to heal his team back to full health. 53% damage. They're popping the tyrant. I think that Drake, Prev, and Brain are gonna make Make a push here in a second but cedar does the impossible actually tops his team behind the pillar at 54 percent dampening blinding light is going to break to damage sam i am positioning in that starting room trying to bait drake drake's not falling for it he pulls away mez is trying to move in but he gets caught again oh. by a lightning lasso has to trinket shield of vengeance but he's so low cedar is into a stun no sanctuary they're getting cleaved behind the pillar and drake man he's got every defensive brain has every defensive prev is every defensive and mez is working with very little and he's having a tough time even getting stabilized at this point 56 percent dampening and then They've got liquid in a chokehold. Yeah, they might just kill Mez outright right now. He's caught up in the stuff. The spirit like misses, cool. but Sidhu moves it in the nick of time. Jeez, that was way too close for comfort right now for Team Liquid. And Drake, I think he's playing this one out perfectly. Don't overcommit, Drake. As long as you have the bubble in your back pocket, you can continue to fish for these cooldowns, get the spirit link, try to get the blessing of spell warding, try to get these other big cooldowns. Mez most likely is going to be able to actually get his divine shield back here 35 seconds away. But Drake, he does not want to use his bubble right Right now and then mez is gonna have his bubble so that's really the game you're playing just have drake never overextend but continue to poke continue to be effective drake now drinking out of a stun right there getting aggressive onto mez double stun coming out here see you what are they gonna trade they trade the spell warding and now they find them in that position once man. again everybody's oh, just dying man. on team liquid huge damage coming out from luminosity as they continue to dogpile onto team liquid looking to put them on match point sam might fall he uses the unending result trading earthen wall totem see trying to do what he can 
he gets the Astro Shift Samayama, 1% HP. Willie goes down, Prev is there, getting aggressive, trying to get his pets out. The Tyrant gets feared. Prev now in a stun. Mez is pushing for it, but Samayama on 1% HP will fall. Mez, though, looking for the cross kill. Can he find it? Brain Trinket, Spirit Links, and Mez will actually bubble on 1% HP. He needs to try to kill somebody with this, but he will run uh, back to Sidhu. And that is going to be Luminosity Gaming, ladies and gentlemen. Getting another win on the board. So close, though. This is what at one point Drake didn't have a bubble, Brain didn't have a trinket, but Liquid didn't act on it. Um, and they waited, and then they waited to a point where it was then Mez didn't have a bubble, and he was sitting behind the pillar. And it just seems like Luminosity Gaming have a better idea of what to do to break the stalemate. Like, I, I no. really want to pay attention to like what was the dampening percent that Luminosity Gaming decide to like make their commitment uh, and start overwhelming them. It feels like 67% is the number that I am consistently seeing uh, <laughs> at the top where they just kind of just start jumping on them and destroying them. Now. Like maybe Sam should have just walled earlier, walled high and dropped that tyrant. See, you should tremor the tyrant and they just counter engage. Cause like you can't run forever, right? There's no way you're 70% dampening. You can't just keep running. You can't just keep stalling the game. Eventually like you've got to pick a moment for yourselves to make your stand. And I think that's what we'll see in the replay here. This link was almost going to be really tragic. Um, but then they get like a gate and they gate away from everybody. And maybe that's when Sam should have just walled, sent the tyrant, you know, maybe even just like, you know, tremor the tyrant grounding to protect the tyrant from getting CC'd and get as much damage as possible out with it. Um, because it's really, this is going to be a last stand. You got nothing here. Like they gate in the middle of the map and right here, just like turn around, cast tyrant, get totems down to protect it wall dark pack tank damage and and just like send damage back at them because like how are you going to recover it, it's just not 62 yeah. percent looks like it's the number 60 percent maybe is just the, the number where you just can't heal anymore you can't recover anymore it's just like whoever can get the pressure out at that point is going to be able to win I really feel like at the start of this replay, that was the big moment uh, for uh, Luminosity Gaming. And they did what Liquid did not do, right? When they had that uh, cooldown lead, the Mez had no bubble and Drake had his bubble. Drake never went behind the pillar. He never really put himself in harm's way too much, but he continued to be kind of a threat in the match. He continued to push forward. He continued to actually poke and make sure that he was trying to get more cooldowns. And even though Mez got his bubble back, well, they didn't have Spirit Link. They didn't have spell warding. They didn't have a lot of other cooldowns, right? So as soon as that bubble did come back, well, it didn't really matter too much because all of a sudden, Sam I Am is dying. Dampening is high. cedar has got nothing. Everybody's getting cleaved, you know? And I feel like that was, uh, you know, for Liquid, they had an opening like that as well where they could have easily just continued to have Mez kind of go in, push forward a little bit with the rest of his team and try to make sure that they are getting more cooldowns. Like, sure, the bubble is going to come back, but as long as Mez never has to use his bubble, he can continue to be offensive and continue to poke for other cooldowns. And then when you do get to that 50, 60% dampening, like kind of critical mass, at least you're going to still have a cooldown lead there. So... I feel like that was a big mistake that Liquid made. Um, but um, yeah, we are already going through this draft and we have Nokud on Proving Grounds. I think it's the first time this weekend. Uh, this is the new map in Dragonflight and we're finally going to get to see it here. I actually wonder why they picked it uh, here in this matchup. It's not a map that we see too much. I don't think we've ever seen it. <laughs> in an AWC maybe. tournament? I don't think we've ever seen I it. I don't remember it at all but yeah maybe we can get confirmation on that from our admins but uh yeah i mean similar ish shape with uh you know it's got the wall in the middle so like how are we going to see the positioning be utilized here for this map super tease well typically this is a really good map to like rush down the other team um you can mm -hmm. just like swarm right away like it's a really short distance from one starting room to the other so i wonder if liquid like are they going to change comp? Are they going to play some cleave? Are they getting trill in maybe on something? Because it could be a really good map to just run somebody down. I'm a be real like it's match point now. Are you are you going to just say like we can't win the mirror? We got to do something different at this point. Like if it is a mirror, then I don't think the map really is too big of a deal. Maybe it's harder to like get a point to retreat to on this map. Like none of the pillars are really big, so it, it's tough to like completely reset. But Liquid is the team who wants to reset, it looks like. So picking a map where it's hard to reset doesn't really make sense if they're intending to keep mirroring. Yeah, yeah, kind of tough. Uh, about 20 seconds left. This was Liquid's map that they locked in. As Sid mentioned, Luminosity match point. So do they change it in the final hour when they're facing elimination or do they stick 
with the mirror? Do they stand up to the challenge once again and see if they can make things happen, tie it up, bring us to a game five? I mean, these are the these are decisions, especially in a map match like this, when you're so evenly matched, when you're on match point, you're mirroring every round. I mean, it's really the draft process that is, is where those big decisions happen and they're almost as important as they are in the game. But it looks like Zico, uh, that we are heading into yet another mirror here for game number four. It might just be one of those things where you're comfortable playing on this map. And this is a, kind of a, a map like Mugambala that really doesn't get picked too much. You know, it's a newer map. It just got added. And, and maybe this is Liquid just kind of trying to get a little bit of an edge. Uh, you know, maybe they feel really confident here. And they don't know if Luminosity kind of has that same confidence if they've played on this map enough. But as $40,000 on the line, mm. you're putting it on Nokudon Proving Grounds. You're going in in the straight up mirror. So it's got to feel good, you know. Uh, at least knowing that you know because you know a lot of the times you feel like okay you're going like liquid in the past right going up against c9 they're playing the melee cleave they're playing against the mage lock and we just we just know like it's going to be a slow painful death they're kind of countered and they don't have a better answer at least here it's a pure mirror you know everybody is kind of comfortable on what they're playing and made the better team win uh liquid definitely had a couple of close calls in that last game and they did win the game before so i definitely wouldn't count them out and um yeah for luminosity gaming this is uh just one more win and they will be advancing for that rematch in the grand finals up against where is gordy so definitely a lot on the line here for both of these teams and um yeah we're just gonna have to wait and see who can prove themselves uh, to be the better red lock you guys say no good or no kud no kudon is how i say it. i don't know if that's right i i pronounce things kind of weird Maybe, maybe that's wrong. Whatever you want. I mean, it's be. literally a made up word, so I don't know if you pronounce things weird. <laughs> but uh no, in the in the I didn't know this, but in the voice like in the in the dungeon at least, the voice characters like the NPCs say no kud, but for the longest time I've been saying no good, but it's like do you go against what everybody pronounces it or do you go with the gameplay that is saying it? I don't know. I feel like there's so many words in WoW that I just have no idea how they're pronounced. Tanner but Tanneris was the ahead. hard one for me. Which one? Tan Tanneris? Is that what it is? Tanaris? Oh, Tanaris? isn't it Tanaris? I, would say, I is it say Tanaris, Tanaris but I have no one idea. No one, pr no one pronounces <laughs> the same. That's like the tomato yeah. motto <laughs> word of World of Warcraft. It's been here since For, uh, and people still don't know yeah, how to pronounce it. Yeah, they're still getting it wrong. <laughs> or Jornai, I still... I Drainai, Jornai. That one, that one I always mess up too. I still don't know. Drainai? 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 Something. Well, maybe chat will let us know how you pronounce her. Or actually, chat, let us know which words in WoW you have a hard time saying, because I'm sure we're not alone in that. Uh, a lot of weird words in WoW. But uh, yeah, love that we're seeing this this uh, map that we don't normally get to see. And uh, we'll we'll see how Liquid, what you know they kind of have in store for us. They did lock in this one the first time in the AWC. So maybe they have something interesting planned with a uh, unique spacing of this map here with uh you know you've got the wall in the middle you got the pillars on the side so not really not really many places you can hide when you've got a warlock casting in your direction so you can bet it's gonna be some some scary damage coming from prev and or sam i am but liquid dangerously close to beginning getting knocked out of the tournament and you know whichever team does make it through this match super tease i feel like these games have been so long and strenuous and then they have to go and play yet another one and that's the one that really counts so i almost worry about the sustainability a little bit of these teams uh, i mean luminosity gaming they're the dampened lords like they're, they're usually <laughs> the team that drags the other team around forever um but yeah it is going to be a fight of attrition a fight of stamina and endurance uh making sure that you're playing it top notch throughout all of these games making the right decision at every point in turn uh because you still got a best of seven uh looking on past this series and of course liquid is in a tougher spot right now and i think the biggest surprise for me is that they won on ashamanes which is a really big map and nokudun to me is a small map um, so it seems like a completely different direction. And unless they're saying we've got more practice on this map and maybe Luminosity Gaming doesn't, um, because if you're practicing on ladder, you know, what are the odds that you get this map very much? Um, if you've got less practice on ladder, then it means that you're probably not seeing this map very much. So Liquid are really hoping, I think, that the inexperience or the surprise factor is going to give them an advantage here, um, which honestly, I think it's the right move. Like Luminosity Gaming is a team where like, you got to have some sort of edge, some sort of curveball that they're, they haven't seen before. 
uh, if you're going to be able to take them out at least more than once. So uh, it should be very exciting. I'm really excited to see how they play out the map, um, where, the, where they're going to position the Tyrants. you got that ramp on each side where the Warlocks can get their portals and their gateways. Are they going to run circles on the map, or is it going to be like back and forth between the two starting areas? Like, How are they going to navigate this defensively? Um, on either side it's going to be a big question or perhaps they just go all in and nobody pulls away i, I really doubt that but uh there is possibility mm -hmm. for that if, if the, one of the teams decides that they're just going to play fully aggressive like luminosity gaming they got a point to work with right so if they want to risk something now would be the time to just be really aggressive and risk it yeah, I think so too. And, it, you know, just based on your guys' comments, Zico, it seems like this liquid has been not necessarily holding back, but just playing maybe a little bit more defensively, a little too patiently, kind of uh, not pressing their buttons quite as much. I mean, is that something that you want to see them uh, sort of implement for this upcoming game? Well, I feel like positionally, it's been kind of Luminosity pushing up and Liquid kind of staying back. Sam, I am kind of playing around the area, like uh, the starting room area, uh, trying to avoid damage there and, and get out his damage. And it's been more about Liquid kind of just waiting for that late game advantage where uh, Sidu can potentially get some big heals out, get a mana lead potentially, and, uh, you know, win the way they did on Ashamans. And it worked for them in game number two. In game number one, though, it did not. And I feel like uh, when they have a significant cooldown lead, they shouldn't be afraid to push the pace as well in that last game they had a, basically a wide opening no bubble no trinkets of course it was still early in the match so a kill is probably unlikely but if they can kind of balance the risk of kind of exposing mez versus the reward of potentially getting other big cooldowns out of the way they can put themselves in a situation where they have a lead going into that kind of critical mass point and that's what we saw luminosity do you know they went from a situation where drake didn't have bubble and they didn't have trinkets to where mez didn't have bubble and all of a sudden and Luminosity had everything. So I feel like uh, balancing that risk and that reward is going to be key here in this mirror matchup. And uh, potentially we're going to see, you know, we did see the Warlock go down in that last game. So could see more Warlock pressure coming out from either side. Either way, we do have the gates open here. So it sounded like you had something to say. Oh, I'm just thinking, who's going to be taking the throne? Who's going to be the Shaman King here? Um, Sidu, you know, I'd say he's like the reigning Shaman King. Is Brain going to dethrone him here uh, in this game and send them out of the tournament in third place? That's a lot on the line, like personal pride and a lot of money on the line as well, playing for $70,000 in that grand final. So hopefully they can stick it through here and stay alive in this tournament. Sidu's got a Stormkeeper locked and loaded. Where is he going to send that Lightning Bolt? He's going to go after Prev with it. It looks like breaking down that Dark Pack almost immediately. Mez is charging in really aggressive here on this map and it seems like luminosity gaming they're trying to figure out how they want to play this they're rotating in a circle got the portal now on this side pillar and trying to reposition as it looks like the center wall is where Sidu and sam i am are posted up and they're getting aggressive and this is a completely different liquid before they were very passive and kind of just waiting for their opponents to make a move now they're the ones pushing the pace yeah, I like to see that aggression coming out from Liquid. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide here for Luminosity Gaming. Brain looking for the Hex here. Can he actually find it onto Sidu? Big, big Hex. And he gets the trinket out of that one, but Sidu will be able to stabilize him there with the Ascendance for now, or maybe not. A beautiful stun oh, there onto Sidu's trinket and a disastrous opener here for Team Liquid. Now, if there was ever a time for Team Liquid to just kind of kick back and do nothing, that would be it. Sidu has no trinket. Mez has no bubble. This is a similar situation to what Luminosity was in and this is early on in the game so now that the kind of tables have turned for luminosity let's see what do they actually do in this situation do they just kick back and wait for the reset or do they push the pace here Sid? all right are they going to play passive are they going to continue to stay aggressive take a neutral stance they're posted up at the small pillar sam i am behind the team so he doesn't get cleaved by the pet damage trying to free cast some spells out here um, and keep some counter pressure going for his team. Mez with the Shield Avengers up. Hex goes on to Sidu here. It does luckily for him break to some AoE damage, so not going to be too detrimental in that moment. It's a Hex like that that could win the game, but a big interrupt on to Sidu by Drake. He's getting blasted right now at the pillar, really struggling. Prev now stunned up. Mez is trying to make a move for his team. Prev repositioning here to the center wall so that he can escape any damage, and Mez looks like he's going to be forced back. It's Cap Totem stunned for a moment. He gets some damage from those pets. Getting stunned again there. Uh, Drake just posted up the pillar. Caught into a lightning lasso. Where are they going to go with this? Axe house on brain. They're chasing down Prev. It looks like they're killing off the healing stream totems. Actually, maybe not. That healing stream totem is still up for brain. CD into a hammer of justice. Sanctuary not available for one more second. Sam down at 70%. Drake chasing after him right now. The pet's getting rooted up by Sidu. Really good earth grab totem here 
uh, into a cap totem, denying that demonic tyrant, but Mez is still just dying to Drake. Double blinding light. Prev's moving forward a bit here. Are they going to commit to this? Go for a fear? Do they have any CC out of that? He's not able to find it. Mez is still just dying. It's match point. Tournament lives on the line. Mez is really getting pressured at the moment in game number four. He trades with the Shield of Vengeance, Divine Protection. Now he's trying to turn it around onto Drake. Can they crack through and force Divine Shield from Drake? No, it gets blocked. And Luminosity Gaming are looking solid. Luminosity Gaming looking extremely solid right now. Has Mez is still on 50% HP. If they can get another double stun combo, they could potentially take Mez down. He doesn't have a trinket and he doesn't have a sanctuary and he doesn't have a bubble. Cedar does have the trinket and the spirit link totem though. So they could potentially get that next. And a big stun here onto Drake now. Counter pressure onto Mez. Huge damage coming out here from Prev and his imps. There's the stun onto Cedar. There's the stun onto Mez. Do they have any follow up? Drake's pushing in. Doesn't look like he has the blinding light though. Doesn't look like they have any follow up there. Good defense here from Team Liquid. They're trying to buy enough time to get Mez's bubble back, but they are getting a man. Look at Brain. He's sitting down for a drink right now as his team is just not pressured at all. So even though they don't get cooldowns, they're still getting mana back. They're still getting something out of the way here, trying to just get themselves an edge as we are in dampening right now. 18%, and that is only going to go up and up here in match points, semifinals, or lower bracket finals, actually. $40,000 on the line here if luminosity gaming can win this one and they're gonna have a chance to go up and get that rematch in the upper bracket against where is gordy for a potential of seventy thousand dollars first place and of course the bragging rights of being yet again the na champion so much on the line who's gonna take it right now double stun coming out onto cedar and oh. Mez, no bubble for 20 seconds cedar how is he gonna respond he has the spirit link totem but he wants to be greedy with it he might actually fall for it but he will trade the astral shift as they look to make a swap onto cedar Mez still not out of the woods yet Ten seconds on the bubble. Whoa. Mez, how are you going to stay alive? He's got the wings. He's spamming out some flash of lights here, and he will be able to potentially make it out here around the corner, but Luminosity unrelenting with the pressure, pressuring Sidhu's mana, pressuring Mez, trying to get that spirit link. They do manage to get the astral shift off of Sidhu, and we have seen Swap Sam, and now double stun coming out here once again onto Mez. Full X onto Sidhu. That's going to be the trinket, maybe the spirit link as well here. Sidhu manages to get the ascendance as well, he and he should be able to, sp to stabilize Mez there, but like you said, they overlap the trinket, so they Big opening here once again for Luminosity. Oh man, they're in control. They've got a lead on mana, a lead on pressure. Everything's in their favor, and the pressure's just getting higher for Liquid. If they lose this, they're out of the tournament. They got to keep their morals high here. They're going to need a huge swing of damage at some point if they want to stay alive. Cedar's in the full blind, no trinket. This could be Divine Shield for Mez. Do they have enough damage to push through Cedar? He's got Earthen Wall Totem. He's holding on to it for now. Drake is actually forced to retreat. Finally, a moment here for Liquid to maybe strike back, but no, Drake gets back to his team uh, behind the pillar, and that Stormkeeper from Sidu not getting enough pressure uh, onto Drake. Mez can duck around the corner with his team, try and recover, try and hold on to that Divine Shield as long as possible. Drake repositioning to the side pillar to avoid stacking with his teammates. Mez is moving forward. Sam staying next to Sidu. Mez looks like he wants to make a move, but he gets stunned up. He does get interrupted on it. Sidu into his stun. Brain into his stun. Drake into a Hammer of Justice, but it looks like it is going to be dispelled off there, and no pressure going to be found for the side of Liquid. Mez in retreat. Uh, who dropped that final reckoning? Was that Mez's final reckoning? He's getting crowd controlled on it, and he's not able to connect at all. He might just die. Oh my God! Link oh, and Bubble—they no. are falling apart. This is this has got to be like a little bit of tilt coming in at this point. Like the pressure might be getting to them. Six and a half minutes into this game, overlap Trinket, overlap Link and Bubble. They got nothing. Look at Brain. He's got more mana. He's got Link. He's got Trinket. Drake's got Bubble. Prev's got everything. Like they're gonna run them over in a second. I think. Luminosity Gaming feeling the heat right now, looking to continue and knock Liquid out of the tournament. Here comes the setup, stun onto Mez, full fear onto Sidhu, no Spirit Link, no nothing here, no bubble. What are they going to do to stay alive? They need raw aggression, they need Sam I am here to try to carry the fight somehow. Big yes. damage onto Mez, Mez might just fall, and he gets the spell warding in the nick of time, but that is the final defensive cooldown that they have available on the side of Liquid. They need to get Drake's bubble, they need to get something back. Brain is just free casting heals in the back line, they win Chip Prev, Drake still on 50% HP, catches a big heal from Brain. The Ascendance is popped here for Brain. Brain and Luminosity dogpiling onto Liquid. Mez is going to trinket and use the Sanctuary there to free Sidhu out of that crowd control. Sidhu still has his trinket to work with, but nothing else left in the tank. Mana is not looking good here for Team Liquid as Luminosity Gaming just continues to snowball that lead that they got earlier on. And Team Liquid trying to lick their wounds here, trying to reset a little bit. But Prev trying to also get a little bit of work done there in the back line. 
line. Right now, Lightning Lads are coming out onto Drake by Sidu. He's got the Stormkeeper charged up, getting some zaps here onto Drake. And they hodge Drake, but oh, he gets no. dispelled instantly. Double stun coming out here. Full hex onto Sidu. He's going to trink it out immediately before he falls behind. And right now, Team Liquid potentially just on their last leg right now. And the countdown is taking 40% dampening. And they are floundering right now as they swap over to Sam I Am on the side of Luminosity. Oh, Sam drops a gateway. He's going to escape to safety. Does Mez and Sidu follow him on that, or do they decide to push forward? Like, they're, they're working with very limited options here, and they're just, it's so dire for Liquid. They're facing elimination, and they're just facing a wall at this point. they got to scour Mount Everest right now in terms of cooldowns. Maybe there's an opening on Prev. That's really the only thing I'm seeing, but if he stays in a good position, it's going to be so tough to do that. Mez gets caught in a stun in open field. Drake is charging in. He smells blood in the water. Brain's got him locked down with a lightning lasso. Are they going to finish him? Sidu blocks the kill with Ascendance. Big heals coming in from Sidu on the pillar here. Sam getting feared away from the fight, not finding any pressure, getting totally shut down. Valfiend up from Prev, lobbed in over onto Sam. I am Sam. I am trying to get a Valfiend of his own going for his team, trying to get some sort of semblance of counter pressure. Will Mez be able to continue to kite this out? They're running around in circles away from Drake. Drake gets caught in a lightning lasso, maybe an opportunity to strike back. Lightning lasso gets disrupted here, and he does manage to hold on to precious cooldowns. Mez caught in that unleashed shield, trying to escape, but now caught into a stun. Not much left for him here. Ten seconds away from Link, nine seconds, eight seconds away from Spear like seven seconds for Mez, six, five, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Is Mez going to be able to stay alive behind the pillar? Link comes off cooldown. Mez is he just dropping it right away. He's not playing any games. He's not going to greet it at this point. He wants to keep his team as ahead as possible here. Maybe they can take Prev out. They've got pressure. No one any resolve. He's down at half. Is Mez going to make a push? He's mounted up. He's going for the final reckoning onto Drake, though. He's got divine protection. He's not going to take any damage from that. Wake of Ashes comes through, but not finding any damage in Cedar, man. That mana bar is looking so dire for him. Sam is just dying seemingly to nothing they're going after sam now he goes for the coil but he's desperate bubble comes up in eight seconds bubble comes up in six seconds i cannot believe this cedar goes for ascendance sam trades on any result but dampening is so high at this point how is cedar gonna heal this how is cedar gonna pull this off for his team right now how can he carry he's coiled out he's got no mana drake. his entire team is getting ravished and drake divine shields to close out this match drake is charging in and sam is looking like he is about to drop as luminosity gaming are pushing forward for the final nail in the coffin and Sam's fate will be sealed. We have a new king. No king rules forever. Brain has now been crowned Shaman King of North America. Three to one. Luminosity Gaming get their rematch in the grand finals. Luminosity Gaming, this is a team that just comes back in every single meta. These guys cannot avoid being in the finals. It's just where they belong. And once again, Team Liquid, they are going to be eliminated here in third place. But still a great showing for Team Liquid, earning themselves $25,000, earning themselves the bronze medal. A great season for them coming in from the depths of the gauntlet and making a deep run here, playing a very respectable mirror. But it is Luminosity. City Gaming here, grabbing the win and now getting the rematch. That was a 3-2 in that upper semis against Where Is Gordy. And now, after fighting this long, hard-fought battle against Team Liquid, they're finally going to get their rematch and they're going to have to do it again in a best of seven there and get their revenge to potentially grab that $70,000 first place prize and of course the gold medal the bragging rights and we can see some of those moments here that's where they overlap that spirit link and that bubble and that's the thing you know for luminosity gaming they never ever let go as soon as they got those cooldowns they got the trinket and the bubble overlap they continue to push in they continue to get more cooldowns and as long as drake doesn't have to use any major defensives they're gonna get a mana lead at worst and at best they're gonna get you know spell warding out of the way spirit links things like that and then one of those cooldowns finally they came back up a disastrous overlap there for team liquid and Sidu here in this situation just working with basically nothing left trying to keep his team alive trying to keep them going and you can see luminosity here feeling the pressure drake just bubbling out offensively getting aggressive here trying to close out the match Sidu instantly trinketing out of that blinding light the final reckoning connecting here onto sam i am as he gets absolutely crushed here from the damage of luminosity gaming beautiful lightning lasso there by brain med sanctuary set but it's not enough actually they interrupt the brain right there but it's not enough they managed to get that killing blow and this is just luminosity gaming it's looking better and better you know they dropped that second game but that third game and that fourth game very con convincing wins for them and uh they're gonna go up against where is gordy in the grand finals
Oof, luminosity. Incredible season here, and now they're continuing on their streak to defend their title. Team Liquid, unfortunately, out of it. That's third place, though. Incredibly well done by them. This is a team that also stepped it up. They diversified quite a bit. I mean, we saw them implement a new composition here in the final hour. Played pretty solidly on it, but unfortunately, Super Tease, it was not enough up against Luminosity. Yeah, I mean, Luminosity Gaming just had way more confidence and they really pay, like pushed the pace in that game, like forcing mistakes. We saw overlaps multiple times in that game. And then knowing like we can win the game now, it's time to reach for it and go for it and committing to it and ending the match. So it seemed like they just knew what they wanted to do in every situation, that curveball map pick, not going to throw them off. They, they had confidence throughout that. So they are looking strong now for their rematch. And this is a situation where if you're where's Gordy, like, you don't want to face Luminosity Gaming twice because the second time you face them is three times as hard as the first time that you did. And I do wonder if they prepared any other compositions because if they have a clear answer for Mage Lock, I think that it's an answer that could deal with almost any other comp that they have. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that they've got something different for in the second round in the Grand Finals. Yep, I am. I'm hoping so as well. I mean, they're definitely going to need it. Here is a look at the bracket where we started off in the beginning of the weekend. We've got two teams remaining. We started off with four and it's all coming to a head here in the grand finals. Where's Gordy? They've yet to drop a game all weekend. Luminosity getting sent down to that lower bracket by Where's Gordy. So now it is going to be a rematch, which could be proving difficult for them. But I mean, Quite a lot of momentum coming from that last series. It looks like they've kind of developed potentially some new strategies. What do you think, Zico? Can Luminosity take? Where's Gordy? I think you can never, ever count out Luminosity Gaming. It's going to be an absolutely insane series. I feel like Where's Gordy have really solidified themselves as their number one competition, not just in this tournament, proving, you know, that they can beat them three to two in that semifinals, which was an absolute nail biter, but also in that last cup, Where's Gordy kind of dethroned Luminosity Gaming. But the thing about Luminosity Gaming is like you can beat them sometimes, you know, you can get a few games off them sometimes, but they always come back. They always learn. I would say they're the best team at adapting and learning kind of mid-series and learning in between, you know, games. Uh, so I feel like Luminosity Gaming, they already got beaten, which is good for them because now they know, okay, this is what they played. These are the mistakes we did. This is the comps we played. How are we going to switch this up? So it's going to be an exciting finals. No matter who wins, I don't think this is going to be like a walkover, like 4-0 grand finals or something like that. We are looking at an absolute battle through the mud. It's going to be a 4-3, a 4-2 at best, you know, either way. And I'm excited to see who actually does take the NA championship here. Yep, I'm certainly excited as well. Let's see if Luminosity can do it or is Where's Gordy going to come out on top and send a Titan to six to second place? We're going to head to a break. When we come back, it's the North American Finals for Season 1 of AWC. Where's Gordy versus Luminosity coming up next.
Welcome back, everyone. We crowned our European champions earlier today, and now we get to find out who will win the North American region. It's either going to be Where's Gordy or Luminosity Gaming, two teams that have been playing insanely well this entire season, Ben, and now it's going head-to-head -head right here in this series. Yeah, I mean, it's no surprise that these are the two teams in the Grand Finals. Uh, they basically won all the cups between them. Um, where's Gordy? They had an amazing performance yesterday with their Mage Warlock. It didn't seem like any team in North America really had an answer for them. But Lumin Luminosity Gaming kind of battling through this lower bracket, earning their spot into the Grand Finals. They will get their rematch. And if any team has something prepared for Where's Gordy, I think it would be them. I honestly wouldn't be too surprised to see them just run what we saw yesterday um, and just play it a little bit better because that was a really close series. In your mind, what does better look like to you? Uh, just like, uh, I think just a strategy change. Like a lot of it can be like tempo based, momentum based. Like I think against a composition like Mage Warlock, you really have to be pushing the pace and not allowing them to kind of recover um, and sit back and, you know, drink and just keep you at the pillar with blizzards and frozen orbs. The best defense a lot of the time is actually just being really aggressive and tra uh, training down the mage, limiting his ability to actually get cast off. Um, and putting a lot of pressure on, on them. So I think Luminosity Gaming, they need to go for kind of like a hyper-aggressive strategy if we are to see the same matchup. Yeah, and, you know, Luminosity, like this is a team that's not afraid to do that either. It seems like they never hold back. They're constantly going full throttle, Zico. They don't shy away from, you know, stuff like mirrors or trying a new composition. It just seems like they are always on it game after game after game. Absolutely. These guys, uh, I mean, there's a reason why they've consistently been the best here in North America, but it is fun to see them truly uh, kind of challenged here by where is Gordy. And uh, maybe they were paying attention to when Chan was being interviewed earlier because he kind of revealed the counter to Mage Locke saying that he really Ooh. hopes nobody's playing Resto Druid. So I wonder, like, maybe Luminosity Game was like, huh? huh? Oh, Resto Druid Noted. brain? You you got that? The little Pepe did, did you get that? <laughs> yeah, so so maybe you know they got Seralium, formerly known as the Harvester, uh, on his Enhancement Shaman. So who knows? Maybe he's been picking up the Ellie Shaman. We haven't seen him at all this tournament. All of a sudden, they have Ellie, they have Prev on the Warlock, and they have Brain. They have the the trifecta there uh, that Chan was talking about. Maybe maybe they have it in their arsenal, and maybe it's something that we see. Probably not, but it would be funny, like, uh, if they go in, get completely crushed, like, the first three games, and then they just, like, YOLO pick it and uh, kind of turn it around. It could happen, but, yeah, we're going into the blind Maybe. game, and I, who knows what they're going to do. It'd be, it'd be pretty on brand for them, I feel like, if they were to do that, but... <laughs> We'll, we'll find out. We're going to see the blind picks here. Game number one, where's Gordy versus Luminosity Gaming in the North American Championship Finals? Ooh, so it's going to be the same composition for where's Gordy, the Mage, Warlock, Mistweaver Monk, and they will be going up against Luminosity Gaming and their Cupid Cleave. So Prev's going back to the Hunter. They had a very solid game yesterday on Imperian Domain. The one time they did try it, they kind of fumbled, which made me uh, surprised to see them kind of abandon the composition. But now maybe they've done a bunch of war games. Uh, I feel like this is definitely one of those compositions that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mage Lock. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to have that permanent dot from the BM Hunter. They're actually swapping a little bit there on the flop. Drake making some damage, but manages to duck out for cover behind that pillar. Prev on that BM Hunter is going to be able to do some work. And right now they have a lot of CC right there. Or Brain actually still. Drake right now needs to be behind that pillar. Needs to make sure that he's waiting until Brain actually leaves that crowd control. Now finally he's going to catch some heals. Brain though takes a little bit of heavy fire on his way there. And look at Wealthy Man. Blizzard on one side, Ring of Fire on the other side, Ring of Peace on one side as well. And we did see Flop make some kind of MVP knock and into leg sweep play. So uh, they have to kind of be uh, on their lookout for those kind of plays as well. Now finally, Luminosity looking to make another push here, man. Yeah, definitely big pressure here on Wealthy Band. Can they take up down a stun on the flop? Beautiful cross crowd control. What are they gonna be able to do? There's the full blinding light, but it looks like Wealthy Man is okay for the time being, just kind of pausing Drake's damage with a bunch of polymorphs. This lightning lasso could easily be the ice block. Wealthy oh. Man needs to be careful, he's so low. It looks like he will greet it. Uh, I'm surprised to see that. He might go down! Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, Wealthy Man just playing so incredibly greedy. That could have easily just cost them this game number one. Make a swap on Flaw. They might be able to take him down as a trinket cocoon. The pressure here from Luminosity is immense. 
absolutely incredible pressure right now. Flop uh, already using his trinket life cocoon. Wealthman already down on ice block. This is not the start that you want to see. If you are playing that Mage Warlock, but right now Drake taking a decent amount of damage here in the midfield. Brain though is out of crowd control and able to give him a live wealthy man right now. He could still be on hypothermia here. Big damage coming out as they sneak in the wind chair onto Flop. Flop repositioning right now to get those soothing mists out onto wealthy man. Big pressure needs to come out here from Cubsy. He needs to try to shut this down before he gets going. There's a scatter shot onto Flop into the trap, but I don't think it's going to be enough crowd control here to get any cooldowns. But as I say, that Drake finally connects to his target. Wealthy man is playing the regular blink right now, so. He could be stunned up here if they have something. And there it is. Lightning Lots coming out. But a beautiful fear from Cubs. He shuts it down. They get a stun onto Flop. Beautiful damage coming here onto Drake now as well. Frozen Orb coming out. Cubs realizing he needs to counter pressure. They get the fear onto Brain right now. And they do manage to get the ascendance off of Brain. Maybe even more. Ooh. Could be the Divine Shield. Drake is so low. But he does trade the Spell Warding instead. So he's going to have that Divine Shield in his back pocket still. But that was a good kind of counter push from where is Gordy. Kind of bringing them back into the game a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Prev in midfield getting blasted here by Wealthy Man. Frostbolt after Frostbolt. This is the Icy Veins. Huge Shatter combos potential here for Wealthy Man. He's going to get the Life Cocoon, taking a bit of burst damage. Flop does not want to mess around. If you look at mana, there is a slight lead here for Luminosity Gaming. They have the late game going for them if they can get there, but Drake is just so incredibly low. Rain is actually doesn't have to trade out his trinket, just really greeting it there. At the same time, the Wealthy Man getting lower and lower. 10% health into the Whoa. Ice Block and the Gateway. And I love this aggression coming in from Luminosity Gaming. This is what I was talking about in the pregame. You have to play a composition that could potentially keep the mage on the back foot. Just keep pushing. Don't allow them to get comfortable. They have multiple range interrupts to slow down the blizzards, the frost bolts, etc. And they just have so much pressure here on the wealthy man. He's got no immunities left. And Luminosity Gaming is one setup from potentially winning this game. Yeah, there's no life cocoon for 30 seconds, so even if Flop trinkets, he's not going to have really a big cooldown to trade with that, but he does have that renewal available at least, so he's going to have that in his back pocket. But Wealthyman, no ice blocks for quite some time here. Can they get any more pressure onto Wealthyman? Drake's looking to make the push, but Wealthyman is counter aggression right now with big shattered flurry combos onto Drake. Drake needs to be careful here. He's trying to make his way to the pillar. The healing tide does get dropped, and the Earthen Wall as well. Now Drake feeling confident to push in here as they did get those kind of cooldowns out of the way here. Can they? managed to close the gap. Wealthy Man trying to stay alive, trying to get some crowd control here. Can he find it? It doesn't look like it just yet, and that's going to be the Life Cocoon preemptively traded there by Flop. Good read from Flop right there as he was about to put into that crowd control chain, and now Drake feared up in No Man's Land. Cubs are doing a great job just disrupting here as well. They're definitely playing great here on the side of Warriors Gordy, trying to slow down the game, trying to slow down the aggression, but still a long time left to those immunities, and slowly and surely they are losing out on those cooldowns. And here comes another setup. Flop is in a full blind but he have a follow-up freezing trap there's the hammer of justice if they get the freezing trap that has to be flop's trinket for sure they finally connect but that is going to be flop's trinket and that renewal as well so now no cooldowns left drake has a bubble if they can just go in press you know the, the, the bubble potentially to get aggressive and try to close out the match i think luminosity gaming has this one in the bag at 30 seconds here on the life cocoon flop with that life cocoon should be able to keep Wealthy Man alive. He can use it preemptively before the stun lands. It is a massive shield. I really don't expect them to be able to take him down through it, but all three members of Luminosity Gaming, they are going for it once again. Cubsy doing what he can to slow down the assault, getting Axe Toss here onto Prev, trying to just not allow him to get that crowd control onto Flop. Wealthy Man playing very safe behind the pillar. He could potentially get purged up here. That was his altar time. I think it does get removed by Brain. Drake is just pushing the pace. No altar time back to start. Wealthy Man crossing the map once once again, but Drake is there. Hammer oh. of Justice lands, and that's going to be game one to Luminosity Gaming. Beautifully done. This is what I'm saying. Against the mage block, you have to have these type of aggressive compositions. It looked good for them yesterday, even though they lost, but they look well polished and practiced. These pushes from Luminosity have been really successful. Really, really good game plays here coming out from the last game. Kind of navigating through the fog there in the midfield. And in this series specifically, it's going to be so important to grabbing that first map here to get that blind pick advantage because Mage Lock, you said it yourself earlier, they're going to go over to Maldraxxus. They're going to have a great time on a large map like that. They're going to have a great time on Tolvir. There's no shortage of large maps for these guys to play on. And this could very well be a series that doesn't get decided by counter comps. This could be all we see from 
either side, but it, the maps are going to be extremely important. You know, we could go to Tolvir, see the same matchup, but then all of a sudden we're going to see the same matchup, you know, on Hook Point, and that's going to look completely different. So Luminosity Gaming, you know, they played that really long series, that really kind of grueling battle earlier on, and uh, they don't show any signs of fatigue so far. And this was kind of the setup that started it all. What is Flop doing actually right now? He doesn't see. I don't know what's going on there for Flop, but he was not in any crowd control. I'm not sure actually what happened there, but Flop, uh, you know, kind of leaving that CC here now with his trinket and his life cocoon, and they got the bubble there or the block there as well. That was a really crucial moment actually because Luminosity was able to get those cooldowns and then snowball that lead, continue that lead. They got the first ice block, they got the trinket, and they're able to get the second ice block, and they're able to get the you know the trinket life cocoon again, and then they're able to actually get that uh, kill at the end. So. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Flop right there, but that was definitely quite unfortunate because that's kind of what started off this chain event here for where is Gordy. Yep, just falling further and further behind in the match, but Luminosity Gaming, this is just stylistically something that they do, even when they're playing the Shadow Priest, Rogue Shaman, just these consistent setups. When they can play, get this triple CC out, they're all doing their job. They have an interrupt onto Cubsy, a trap onto Flop, a stun onto Wealthy Man, and he's just not able to get away. Um, it can be really difficult to kite away against the BM Hunter. So I, I'm 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 wondering if Wealthy Man, Cubsy, and Flop they kind of stick with this composition, or if we're just going to see this matchup back and forth. Because I do feel like both sides can win. Um, so it, it's not one of those really really uh, it's not one of those matchups where you know Luminosity Game is just going to blow them out of the water, or the Mage Lock is going to blow them out of the water. I do feel like this will probably be back and forth and maybe map dependent. Um, but I wonder if there's something else uh, that we're going to see Flop, Wealthy Man, and Cubsy run. They can tag in Chun-Li. They do have that option. Yeah, certainly difficult for Where's Gordy. They are locking in Empyrean Domain as well. And I mean, if it does go back and forth like you two are saying, Zika, what is it going to take for Where's Gordy to win a swing match? How difficult is that going to be? <laughs> I mean, it honestly depends on the map, but uh, good offense. I feel like where is Gordy, you know, and in general, Mage Lock, it's kind of easy to play defensively, get out, spam out the sheep, spam out the fears, and just run and drag the game out. Uh, that's the kind of the easy part. The hard part is getting those consistent setups, you know, especially in high pressure situations. And that's where a team like where is Gordy has a lot of experience. They get those healer setups, they get those setups onto the red, and then they shut down their setups. You know, on the smaller maps, you just have to be aggressive. You can't really rely on dampening in the same way to kind of win you the game and uh, you're just gonna have to kind of find win conditions within the match instead so uh, where's Gordy they're gonna just need to bring their a game this is still a very open series for anybody but luminosity gaming definitely feeling confident and if they can take it here on Empyrean domain all of a sudden luminosity are gonna have you know kind of two games to play around with and they're gonna be in a really prime position here to grab potentially first place uh, here in North America yeah, that would be that would be incredible for them. But first, uh, they've got some tough decisions to make. They've got some tough games to get through. So we're going to see how they handle this in Empyrean Domain. They are the ones that locked in this map. But Luminosity, how do you expect them to utilize the space that Empyrean Domain offers, Ben? Ah, uh, well, Luminosity Gaming, they basically just have to stick together as a unit. They need to try to make the map as small as possible by just running them down, right? Like, at no point in the match do they want to really sit back, unless they're just waiting for diminishing returns, but for the most part, you just want to keep running. Wealthy Man's going to try to get away, and you just have to keep chasing him, keep making it as uncomfortable as possible, because you will start limiting the damage of the mage. If he can consistently drop blizzards, he's resetting his frozen orb. When he gets the frozen orb, he can spam ice lance, but if you limit the blizzards, then all of a sudden he doesn't have access to as much instant damage and he has to go for these casts and that's where he can get wind sheared that's where he can get kicked like exactly like we just saw yeah and uh, right now we see flop actually taking a lot of damage here flops getting tested in these setups but luckily for him he can transcend and use that kind of monk teleport in those stunts and uh, even if it just buys him one or two seconds it's usually enough to actually survive those attacks and it's going to be, once again, where is Gordy here in control? Luminosity Gaming kind of just waiting behind the pillar for that Icy Veins to fade, waiting for some of those cooldowns to fade. Actually going to just wait for the Tyrant to fade and then push in here against the Icy Veins. It's important to not allow Wealthman to kind of get those Frost Bolts out because, especially with that Icy Veins active, he's going to be able to do a lot of damage here. Wealthy Man now finally 
uh, gets rid of his icy veins, and now they're looking to push forward here. Can they find the crowd control? Break lands a kick. There's the stun onto Flop. What do they have here? They're actually going after Flop. They might have another Hammer of Justice there, but they shut it down there with a beautiful axe toss into a nice mortal coil there. Cubsy reading that situation, saving a lot of cooldowns. If that DR Hodge comes out, that could have been a really, really dangerous situation. The song of GG coming out as well there from Flop, trying to snipe it around the pillar right there, but Brain is actually in an orb, so it instantly breaks. Beautifully positioned there by Brain, realizing that that thing travels quite far and, you know, through terrain as well. So Brain just staying ahead of the game, staying ahead of the crowd control, allows him to pick up his team. But now the are going to have to make a push and look at all this distance that they're going to have to cross here. They're going after Cubsy, it looks like, but Drake has a hard time actually connecting to his target. Can they find the crowd control? Cubsy is quite low right now. Big damage coming up from Prev. Can they find something on the flop? There's a scatter shot. Can they find the freezing trap? Both man tries to eat it, but uh -oh. they do connect with it. Big damage onto you know, Cubsy here. It could be the trinket life cocoon. Cubsy is going to use that empowered health stone as well as his unending resolve. Really nice push here from Minosity Gaming, and that's going to lead Cubsy to an exposed target. He's still not out of the woods yet. I just, he might go, just down. go down here. What is he going to do here? Cubsy flop. How are you going to trade against Windshear? But Cubsy does get full HP before that point. That was such a close call. Such greed from flop. To not use his uh, life cocoon right there. And Prep now feeling the heat, using his exhilaration and his aspect of the turtle. Both of these teams definitely trading effectively. Yeah, at that, that moment, Wealthy Man had just kited a little bit too far away. And I like that Luminosity Gaming realized the situation. And they get a big win there, getting... Uh, the wall from Cubsy, they get his Hellstone, they get basically everything for him to keep himself alive. So if they go after Cubsy again, they'll likely get some of the cooldowns from Flop out of the way. Uh, but I do still think the best target in this match is going to be Wealthy Man. We'll have to see. Avenging Wrath is up for Drake. They do have some cooldowns. They are making a push. Can they get the crowd control on Flop? Look at how far away he is. Rev's going to have to move in. Can he actually find it? Polymorph's coming in from Wealthy Man, trying to slow them down. And now it's the, the game has shifted a little bit, where it's going to be Cubsy playing max range with Flop, and Wealthy Man's going to be trying to set up his team. But now they swap onto Wealthy Man. I love these constant swaps coming in from Luminosity Gaming. Drake's in a little bit of trouble right now, but he does have Brain backing him up, and Prev in the back line, just throwing out all that Hunter damage. But it can only soak so much damage. He's got the Divine Protection rotating up soon. There's the full stun on the flop. Are they going to be able to find the trap? It's a scatter shot. Doesn't look like they have too much damage just yet. Wealthy Man doing a great job staying away from the fight. And where's Gordy survive the setup? Where is Gordy live to fight another go? But right now, Wealthy Man actually taking a decent amount of damage. Flop's mana is going to be the big, big pressure point here as well. It's another win condition here. Luminosity Gaming, they want to make sure that Flop can never drink. And of course, where is Gordy? They want to get that clean three versus one where they force everybody on Luminosity Gaming to run back to the pillar. And that is when Flop is going to be able to sneak away and find that drink, potentially with a Shadow Mal. And right now, Drake actually pushing in, taking a lot of damage here, playing a risky game. But that's kind of how you have to play as the red in this matchup. They get a lot of pressure here. There's the scatter shot in, but the pre life cocoon coming out there from Flop. They're swapping the Flop. Flop teleports away. Uh -oh. They have the restun. That could be insane. And they do manage to get the renewal as well. More damage coming out. The Flop is not out of the woods just yet. He crosses the map, and that should be enough for Flop to stay alive. But they got a lot of cooldowns there. Those swaps, those split second decisions, so much outplays, right? Cubsy has no cooldowns. Flop pre cocoons him. Then they realize, okay, Flop pre cocoons that. So we're going to swap the Flop. Flop. Flop doesn't want to use his trinket, so he uses his transcendence and back and forth and back and forth. These teams are really playing their hearts out here in the grand finals. Yeah, no doubt about it. Flop taking a little bit of damage once again as he's moving closer to Cubsy. So big setup. But Wealthy Man throwing Frostbolt after Frostbolt, forcing Drake back to the pillar. And right now, Luminosity Gaming, they need to recover. Big spins, though, with the Frozen Orb. This is trouble. They don't want to have to use oh! this Fury Total, but they might need to. Divine Shield gets forced. Beautifully done. And now Brain is going down as well. And that is the meat grinder. That's the damage that Where's Gordy is capable of. If you are stacked up behind the pillar, that is sometimes the worst place you can be against Mage Lock. Uh, when the Warlock has his burst damage available, when the Frost Mage has his AoE damage available, you don't want to find yourself in that situation. They're going to make a push now that they've recovered, but it costs them the Divine Shield, and do get Life Cocoon out of the way, but they still haven't gotten a single Ice Block here from Wealthy Man.
Yeah, and I don't think they're going to get one right now. Drake in a lot of trouble. Brain's going to trinket and spirit link. That's basically the last line of defense. They still have that spell warding, but that's pretty much it. They need to make something happen right now on Luminosity Gaming. Flop has no trinket. I think he's the best target. He's got no life cocoon. What are they going to do here? They stun him, which means they can't go for him. Nice transcendence there for Flop. Actually dodging potentially the freezing trap. Prev held on to it, so he can still snipe that onto Flop. They're pushing in. Can they get a blinding light or something here to potentially ease it, make it easier for for Prev to land that uh, freezing trap. Nice leg sweep there by Flop against Sanctuary, though by Drake, as he doesn't connect it on both players. There's a stun onto Drake. Big damage coming out here. Frozen orbs are ticking, and big, big hits from that Blizzard, slowing down everybody, keeping them in place, allowing Cubsy to get a lot of value here from his pets. Flop sneaking away, trying to get a drink. That's going to be the big win condition. Now they're going after Flop. Yeah, I think uh -oh. he's out of port range. Oh, Flop might just Flop right now. Did have a restun. Big damage coming out. There's the restun, and yeah. I can't believe it. Luminosity Gaming takes that. Down flop here on Empyrean Domain 2-0 right now in the grand finals. A miracle push right there. I do. Uh, did he have transcendence? I feel like he, he ran a, a step too far there. He was too far. He's playing Eminence, so he can portal while in stun. But I think that was Luminosity Gaming. This team is so good at recognizing their win conditions. Like they. Oh my goodness gracious. In that moment when you just notice Flop is going for a drink, he's too far away from his portal. I wonder, I actually wonder if it was left on this pillar. Because if they had noticed it on this pillar and they're like, yeah. hey, this guy doesn't have a port, he's got no trinket, like we can just take him down. So I'm really curious to see if there was some sort of like visual tell here for Luminosity Gaming to actually know that he wasn't near his portal. Um, or if Flop had just like ranged it at this pillar and forgot to relay it. Like, I I'm really, really curious. So let's see exactly uh, where it is and if we can spot oh, it. We saw right it right there. there. The start. You see it right there next to Prev. Oh, no. Yeah, so his portal is just so far away. He forgot to relay it. He goes for the leg sweep here. Let's see if he does move it. All right, so he rolls away. Uh, he just used his portal. Okay. But it just, I just like, look at this. A as this composition... They're just like, hey, you know what? He's got no trinket. He's got no portal available. Let's just charge across the entire map. He's got nowhere he can go. They have the double sub combo. They get the double blinding light out and flop is just in so much trouble. There's no way you can live that setup. You can see his transcendence on the other side of the map and Aww. flop's got to be kicking himself a little Aww, bit for that man. one. I think he actually had his transcendence on cooldown though. So I think it might have been on cooldown for another like 13 seconds. So he might have not been able to use it either way. Um, but yeah, just really good uh game presence there by brain drake and prev and this is why this team is so good they're looking really good in this finals they're so exact in everything they do i mean there's any opening at all they always capitalize on it luminosity just such a scary team to face um and you know they're, they're in the finals this is it this is a best of seven game so there's a couple of more chances here for where's gordy to stay in it but they are not making it easy for where's gordy they cannot afford uh to have situations like that happen and leave it open for luminosity to capitalize it we're moving on to ashman's fall another map very similar to empyrean domain same composition from luminosity no reason for them to switch at all but where's gordy zico what do you want to see them do is just same comp clean it up a little bit yeah, I think whereas Gordy, they just need to have confidence in themselves, shake off that loss, and just bring it back one more time. The game was looking good in in general, you know. It just came down to kind of two key moments there where one time when they did that big, big push onto Cubsy, they got all of his cooldowns, then they did another push, uh, and that was Flop's trinket, and that kind of left that opening that we saw where they were able to actually close it out. So I think for whereas Gordy... You know, I don't need to say anything about how to play Mage Lock. These guys, you know, they're some of the best people to ever do it. And they just need to trust themselves when it comes to that composition. So I don't want to see them swap. I want to see them uh, kind of stay on that comp and just clean it up a little bit and play to their full potential. Uh, you know, in that first game, it looked like Flop was lagging a little bit at, at one point, And that kind of snowballed everything. And now in this game, um, I'm not sure if his portal was on cooldown, if it was just a good push from Luminosity, or if he actually had it available there at the end, if he had relayed his port. But either way, you just got to shake those off. Those were still two very, very winnable games. And uh, yeah, just uh, talk about what went wrong and clean it up. And, uh, you know, don't let the nerves get to you. And, you know, these guys are veterans and just shake it off and try to focus on the next game. But they are swapping. They are bringing in wealthy Ellie, Cubsy on the demo and Flop on the Miss Weaver here. All right. So going with. Go ahead. I was going to say a bit of a different wizard setup here. Wealthy Man's going to be 
uh, going over to the Elemental Shaman. I think I like this. Uh, I think this is another one of those compositions that could potentially be really good into Retribution Paladins. Um, I think the double caster, just try to play keep away. Uh, I do wonder if Wealthy Man is just going to be even more of a target because yeah. on that Elemental Shaman, I feel like it's going to be easier for him to get off damage. He'll probably do more overall damage, but there's no Ice Block. There's no Alter Time, right? So every setup on flop, like every time they get crowd control on flop and they connect on Wealthy Man, you better be tanky because there's no immunities. There's, you know what? You'd have no immunities. There's way less, uh, um, there's way less room to actually make any kind of mistakes. So I think for where's Gordy, this is one of those situations where offensively this could look better, but defensively I'm a little bit afraid for them. Mm -hmm. And Ziga, like, what does the the Ali Shaman offer in terms of defense? I mean, what can he do to help his team uh, maybe prevent situations like that last game from happening? Well, one of the big things is that he's going to have the Hex. So if he can get Hexes on the brain, that's going to be big for their offense. And in terms of defense, he's going to have a lot of heals. You know, if Flop, for example, gets swapped through there, they're going to need to make sure that uh, Wealthy Man is also cross crowd controlled. And, uh, you know, if Wealthy Man gets the kicks, well, that's going to leave Cubsy open to spam out the fear. So just one more person, essentially, who can uh, kind of block the kill in a way. But at the same time, um, he uh, he's going to be, like Ben said, a more juicy target to hit. He's going to have to rotate through his walls. He's going to have to preemptively wall. If he doesn't have a trinket and flop gets CC'd and he doesn't pre-wall, then he can just go down in a stun. Um, and uh, he's going to have to be on point with his grounding totem. That's the biggest thing, I think, for uh, Eli Shaman because you can actually ground those freezing traps and, you know, kind of uh, redirect the freezing trap into a totem, essentially. So when that happens... Uh, that's going to set them ahead 30 seconds, basically. So he really needs be, to be on point uh, with those grounding totems. If he can kind of deny those whenever Flop is stunned, drops a grounding totem, that's going to allow him to, uh, you know, just deny the entire setup. And then if he does get stunned, Flop can just come out and dispel him. So um, he's going to have to be on point with that. He's going to have the lightning lasso as well, potentially, for uh, Drake. And uh, he's going to have a lot more damage in general. Eli Shaman wasn't really that popular, uh, because of judgment of the pure just dispelling all the flame shocks on everybody but that got recently nerfed so uh he is going to be able to do a lot of damage and keep those flame shocks up and running so for wealthy man i don't think it's a bad pick but it is a risky pick and i feel like on the mage he's just super 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 solid so we'll have to see you know we've seen him on the enhanced shaman he's been great but how is he on the ellie shaman yeah it's a good question, and you you guys have touched on it a bit also, Ven. Like, you know, not a lot of Ellie Shamans in AWC or North America just in general, or sorry, the North American side of AWC. So do you think that Luminosity doesn't have a lot of practice against them? Is this going to kind of catch them off guard a little bit, or do you think they'll be fine? I think they'll be fine. I mean, Elemental Shaman, they do a lot of damage. That's their thing, right? Lava, lava, big burst <laughs> consistently throughout the match, but they are very susceptible to kind of being trained down. I think Luminosity Gaming uh, does know that. So if Flop's going to have his work cut out for him to keep him alive, Cubsy's going to have to do a really good job peeling because the way LA Shaman works is if the game goes on long enough, you kind of just naturally win because your pressure is just so high. You're just cleaving down everyone uh, with your damage, but you can die in just a single setup. A lot of the time, you know, you can even go down through your Astral Shift. Um, so it can be a very risky game to play, but if it works, uh, it's going to go great for them. Um, this is something that I've been curious uh, I've known that like Mage Lock has been pretty good into Rep Paladin teams, uh, but Ellie Lock is something that I've also thought could be really, really strong. So I'm really curious to see uh, how this works out. But Luminosity Gaming also, I just want to like point out how impressive they have been. I feel like for a really long time, they kind of are one of those teams that just stick to like a, a single composition, right? For their kind of yeah. tournament debut, it was all about the Fire Mage Paladin with a, a Warrior, or sorry, with a Windwalker Monk. And, Prev kind of just rode the bench for the longest time. They're just playing that comp over and over. And then uh, we saw actually uh, Drake switch over to Rogue. He played Warrior 2, played Warrior, then he played Rogue. They switched off the Fire Mage. Then they started playing, you know, the Shadow Priest with the, the Rogue and the Paladin and, and played that over and over and over. And, I, you know, I heard some criticisms from players like, hey, you know what? These guys' comps are always just so good. They can play the same thing. But mm -hmm. they're showing here that they have so much flexibility. I mean, they're playing... They're, they're playing just everything, right? Like Prev, how many different specs has he played now? Drake as well. Every single melee in the game, it seems like he's really, really comfortable with. And uh, Brain flexing over to the Shaman. It's just been really impressive to see. Yeah, definitely. I feel like for a while, it was kind of when they were sticking with 
you know, just playing that comp that they had in the beginning that was doing so well. It was always the question, like, okay, if that comp gets, you know, nerfed or something, how are they going to continue to perform? But like you said, they adapted. They're still here. They're still winning tournament after tournament. But they have to get through Where's Gordy, who kind of have a similar story as well. I mean, look, Wealthy Man, he's playing a, a, a different spec for him. Cubsy is playing a different role completely flop he's adapted to the miss weaver so a lot of these players in this series alone have really stepped up to the plate but it also makes you pretty vulnerable zico i mean you're playing triple alt on both sides so that's got to be um uh, just a lot of work to get up to the point where you feel comfortable enough and also just kind of a little bit nerve-wracking as a player when the stakes are this high when there's that much prize pool on the line um i couldn't imagine what it, what that feels like yeah, it's definitely a, a kind of a, a very courageous move from Wealthy Man to, to kind of bring in here, uh, bring in his Ellie Shaman here. But we know Wealthy Man as well. He's a phenomenal multi-classer. You know, we've seen him on Shaman before. We've seen him on Mage. We've seen him on Rogue looking better than, you know, people who've been playing Rogue for decades. So uh, I, I really don't have any doubt there, Cubsy. He's been solid throughout the entire tournament on the Warlock and Flop. You know, just one of the best healers, uh, period. So I really don't feel like there is too much of a mismatch in terms of of like alting and same thing goes for luminosity gaming you know we we heard you know a lot of oh yeah it's holy paladin for brain like brain always makes holy paladin work what happens if holy paladin doesn't work well what happens is that he wins against Sidu in a shaman mirror you know so uh brain definitely uh you know there's no there's nothing to say about this man this guy is just an absolute monster uh in general we say it a lot especially about his holy paladin but just as a healer in general super good his synergy with his team is great and that is why they are up uh, two zero in this final not one zero um, that is a little bit misleading, but uh, so this is game number three here uh, between Luminosity and Where is Gordy? The gates are about to open, and Where is Gordy swapping out Wealthy Man on the match for his Ali Shaman, looking to try to bring one back here. Can they do it, Van? I mean, I'm really curious to see what Wealthy Man is going to be able to do here on this Elemental Shaman. How much damage is he going to be able to get rolling? How much pressure Luminosity Gaming is going to be able to have on him? Flop's going to have to do a really good job avoiding some of the initial crowd control. Let's see what they can do. A stun here onto Drake as they look to get aggressive early on. Cubsy really setting his team up here with the Tyrant. They need to be very careful of the Tyrant. Big stun. And that's immediate. Oh, no. This is not what you want. You have Trinket from Wealthy Man. Trinket Life Cocoon from Flop in the first setup of the game. I mean, what happens the next time they charge in? Like, <laughs> don't really have that many answers left. That's, uh, that's trouble. That's for sure. Yeah, that is not a great opener right now. Just a huge defensive overlap for Warriors Gordy. And that's going to leave them completely exposed. You know, Drake's going to have his wings available here. And they're going to have the Beastial Wrath. And here we go. Here comes the push, though. Drake gets stunned up, though. Can they shut it down? They need to shut it down with offense on the side of Warriors Gordy. Here comes the scatter shot. Prez pushing him for the trap. He lands it. Full stun onto Wealthy Man. This could just be a KO immediately. How is Flop going to respond? He finally gets out here. Wealthy Man trying to stay alive, trying to do what he can there. There's the blinding light as well. Big damage coming out here. Oh, to wealthy man how is he going to stay alive once again kiting ah. back and forth Cubsy trying to help him out with the fear spam he gets kicked but flop is there with the soothing miss an absolutely incredibly close call right there that was just way too close for comfort a terrible opener but if they do survive that at least they could get that pre astral shift on the next setup and maybe buy enough time for the trigger but wealthy man might need to pop it right now as they look to set up another stun here but drake a lot of trouble for him here as well as he does get caught up in a stun in the midfield and drake is playing that judgment of the peer just making it so difficult for wealthy man to actually get his damage rolling he gets caught into a stun here's the astral shift a trap on flop this might be the life cocoon he gets interrupted nicely done there by prev sniping that interrupt immediately wealthy man needs that lightning lasso to try to hold on a little bit longer but i was talking about the judgment of the peer from drake it has been changed, so it only removes effects from Drake when he uses it. But every time he judges Wealthy Man, he's dispelling Flame Shock off of himself, which is a lot of defense and makes it a lot really annoying for Wealthy Man to actually try to get any pressure rolling onto this Paladin. But still doing a pretty good job at this point of the game. They get the Shield of Vengeance out of the way, but I am just so afraid for Wealthy Man in this match. Whoa! Prem should be really afraid as well as he just gets absolutely chunked right there. There's a scatter shot. There's a freezing trap right now. Wealthy man with nothing left. There's a lightning lasso. Can he get an interrupt on the floor? But at the same time, Prev taking huge damage. Wealthy man going for the X. He gets interrupted right there. Brain caught up in a stun. Prev not feeling too safe right now as he ducks for cover. But now Bra Drake getting absolutely blasted as well as Luminosity covers for their lives here behind the pillar. Brain going to be dispelling some flame shocks. Drake's going to do the same thing there with the judgment of the pure. And now finally, 
the team will recover. Flops in enough for a drink here on the opposite side of the map. Prev getting blasted off here, taking huge damage right now. Big hits coming out, but now a double stun coming out. What's the man going to be using his trinket immediately here? He has the grounding totem. He needs to pop it right now, and he does ground the freezing trap right there. Beautifully done there by Wealthy Man, keeping his healer out of that crowd control, allowing him to use that trinket later on for another push. And this is the, these are the plays that we need to see from where is Gordy, but Mana still not looking too good despite Flop getting a, a few sips right there. They need to try to make sure that they continue the momentum here on the side of where is Gordy, and build distance between Drake and Wealthy Man, and try to blast Prev once again. If they can do that, that's going to allow Flop to get those drinks, and that's going to allow this pressure to subside a little bit. Okay, let's see if they can keep it the pressure. Good double cross, crowd control, no trinket for Wealthy Man. Are they gonna be going to match point? One second left on Astral Shift comes out and Life Cocoon is now available for flop. That was a miracle moment. Wealthy Man almost went down right there. There's still more crowd control, a blinding light, but at the same time, Prev is getting blasted. Look at this damage onto him down below half right now. Is he gonna be able to survive? And a big heal comes up from Brain with that healing tide behind the pillar. Now a strike back on Wealthy Man. Life Cocoon forced from flop. And if this Elemental Shaman Warlock does not work for them, then I don't know what is going to in this series. Is Luminosity Gaming going to reclaim their throne? Where's Gordy took it away from them in cup number four, and they want it back then. Yeah, I mean, this pressure is now so solid for Wealthy Man. He's cleaving down everyone, and you could tell, I mean, if Wealthy Man can hold on, they're just going to naturally win this game. Prev and Drake and Brain all down to 50% health, but they are making a push. They want to go for it. Lightning lasso here from Wealthy Man. He gets interrupted, but that means no interrupt for Flop. He can just kind of sit back, avoid crowd control, get up those enveloping mists, and every single second that Drake, Prev, and Brain are in the open, they are going to be taking an immense amount of damage, but here comes the Avenging Wrath. Here comes the potential one-shot on Wealthy Man. Drake, can he do oh. it? He's almost enraged to close it out. 10% health. Flop is on the run. He's trying to get the heals up. He gets wind sheared. Beautifully done there by Brain. Wealthy Man doing oh. what he can, but it gets interrupted. He might go down. Trap in the it. lasso. Beautiful setup by Luminosity Gaming, and they are on match point with their Cupid Cleave. Insane place here from Luminosity Gaming. They keep finding these kind of big setups, these big openings where they get multiple cooldowns and then they just snowball that pressure. We saw it in the lower bracket finals against Team Liquid and we're seeing it here in the grand finals. One game away here from becoming the North American champions. $70,000 on the line. They are on match point and they are looking to win yet another big tournament. But let's see how they did it here, Sid. Yeah, insane pressure on Wealthy Man throughout this game. Like, they just got Astral Shift literally seconds ago before this push, and then they get Life Cocoon immediately afterwards. This was the one close call moment for Prev uh, in the game, so there's definitely possibilities uh, for this composition, but the fact that they didn't win on their map pick, I don't think they're winning on a small map uh, as Locke, Ellie, and right here, this Life Cocoon. Like, the, this is like a miracle moment. They, they're just lucky they didn't die uh, at this point, and Luminosity Gaming, what a team, man. They face up against Liquid, and they say, whatever you can do, we can do better. They get into the grand finals after getting knocked down by Where's Gordy and say, we're ready here with the Beast Mastery Hunter. And they are just running down Where's Gordy, really pushing the pace. I don't think I've seen Where's Gordy pressured like this by a team. Usually they can just kind of strangle them out, dampen the game until eventually they win. But Luminosity Gaming is all over them. To be able to not only flex their classes, uh, their compositions, like all three of them are playing alts. Like maybe Drake has played a bit of Rhett in the past, but Prevalent Hunter, Brain on Shaman, this has got to be the first time we've seen it. The fact that they're flexing everything. They can play defense. They can play aggro. They can adapt their strategy mid-game. They can beat your counters. Like, man, you, there is no denying that Luminosity Gaming is one of the best teams in World of Warcraft history. Yeah, you, you kind of said it too, Sid, like anything you can do, I can do better. I feel like that's not only applicable here to Where's Gordy, but the, I mean, they they just do it every time. Like they're kind of playing a similar composition that Golden Guardians played earlier on, and they were able to make that work. And they're doing it here in the finals against the team that sent them down here to the lower bracket, the team that beat them in the last cup in the earlier seasons. And they're 3-0 right now. I mean, that was incredibly close. Probably, I mean, that was the closest game that Where's Gordy had in this, this series so far, but I mean, they still weren't able to make it happen. They're one point away, one game away from being the North American champions. And they're just kind of making, like, walking all over Where's Gordy. But there's one more chance left. They could turn it around. They could do the reverse sweep, Zico. 
You can never count out where is Gordy. They're going to the Robodrome. This is where it all can could where it all could conclude. But uh, where is Gordy? Last time they played the Robodrome, they had success here. You know the ZY axis. You know the kiting, the teleport, the constant. You know Nox as well with the Ring of Peace. There's a lot of potential here. Or what is where is Gordy gonna do here? Are they actually gonna flip a switch and you know swap comp back to the mage lock? I was gonna say, and that's exactly what we're gonna see here. So I like this. I did, to be honest, I did not like the Ellie Shaman at all. You know, they had a game to experiment with, so fair enough for trying it out. You never know, it could be insanely OP in this matchup and you just auto win. But uh, you know, this is what they <laughs> practiced, this is what they're the most deadliest on. So I'm happy to see Wealthy Man back on the mage and. Uh, they got the Robodrome, and they have a mountain to climb, but this could be kind of like the first couple of steps of the hike. Yeah, very good metaphor. I mean, that's absolutely right. Luminosity, just like uh, up there in the in the Tetons in, in terms of altitude, because that is just, that is a <laughs> long trek for sure. Where's Gordy? Can they do it? Can they get the reverse sweep? It's best of seven. So that means they have to win four games in a row, and that is uh, going to be excruciatingly long, I feel like, for them, especially considering kind of the day uh, that this team has had. Uh, Luminosity Gaming 2, it's been a lot of games in a row for both of these teams here, so I'm I'm sure uh, that they're both kind of, you know, all right, guys, we got to stay focused. We're almost to the finish line here. But I I personally don't want to see where's Gordy then go out zero to four. I, I feel like they could get a win here in this next one. I mean, they definitely could. They got the composition. They got the map. I feel like this is a really good map for them in general. Um, if Wealthy Man wants to go up on top of the ramp, he can use Blast Wave to send Drake basically flying across the entire map and uh, give himself a lot of distance. The only problem with this is if they do win here, they have to win. All of a sudden, we're going to be going to Dalaran Sewers. And then if they somehow win on Dalaran Sewers, we'll be going to Hook Point. And if they somehow win on Hook Point, we're going to Ruins of Order on. Like, it's going to be back to back to back, small map after small map. So uh, Luminosity Gaming has definitely set themselves up in a really prime position. This is going to be difficult for Where's Gordy, but if there's a team that could pull it off, uh, it would definitely be them. Did you guys want to see them bring Chun in at all? Or where's Gordy, or is that just not the not the game for him? I don't think so. In my person, I mean, Chun is one of my favorite players in World of Warcraft. I'll just say mm -hmm. that outright. I would love to see him play, but I just don't think this is the time. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. this is not the time for the Windwalker monk. You gotta know That's what cards sure. to play in uh, these sorts of situations. And Luminosity, yeah. you, you gotta put your best ones down. <laughs> best uh, best classes. That is not me calling Chun bad at all. But anyways, let's get into this game here. Game number four, Luminosity. They're on match point. Is Where's Gordy going to turn this around here? Is this the ticket to turning it around in their favor? Let's see what they can do. They hop back to that mage lock and they make it happen. All right, let's see if they can do it. Grand finals, match point for Luminosity Gaming. $70,000 on the line and yet another championship win for them. Can they pull it off? They're up against where is Gordy's mage warlock right now. Immediately, a stun comes in onto Flop. He teleports away while he is stunned and Drake looking to hunt him down right now on his divine steed. He wants this win. He has a DR Hodge. Can they find a freezing trap out of that? They do find a blinding oh. light there. Can they extend the chain though? It breaks, it looks like, and that's going to be a nice win here in the start for where is Gordy? Oh, knocking Drake back here in that coil. Shifting power for Welt Man, trying to reset that barrier, get some defense. Drake is getting pressured right now. Down below half, but a lightning lasso gets interrupted onto Brain. Welt Man gets life cocoon. It's Drake on the back foot. Full polymorph onto Brain. This map is definitely going to open opportunities for where is Gordy to find crowd control and find pressure as they're continuing to chain it on Brain. More polymorphs, more fears. Is there going to be a sanctuary from Drake here? He's holding on to the sanctuary. He doesn't want to use it. Doesn't seem necessary. Interrupts the polymorph, just staying right on top of him. This is so important. They're actually swapping to flop. He ports away. They knock Knock Drake out into the open so they can't continue the chase. Flop ports again, and Drake is under fire right now. Down at 30%. Brain connects a big heal right there just in the nick of time. And this map is definitely working out better for where's Gordy, but still at any moment, Wealthy Man's health could just disappear. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly the case, and they are just trying to get the pressure. I think they're getting more and more comfortable making these swaps onto Flop, but Flop is fully prepared. He's got beautiful transcendence location. Here comes uh, a full stun whoa. once again. Can they take him down? He's got no portal available. He does get out of line of sight, but at the same time, they make a swap onto Wealthy Man, and this is just not comfortable for Flop whatsoever. Look at how much mana he's burned through at this point of the game. Prev is just an absolute monster on this Beast Mastery Hunter, putting out so much pressure in this match. Drake getting swapped too, though, getting blasted. Needs to be very careful. Might have to trade up the Divine Shield, but it looks like 
The Divine Protection will be more than enough. That damage reduction. Now another swap onto Flop. The constant swaps are just keeping Flop on his toes. Yeah, Flop had to use his health stone right there, but still holding on to his trinket life cocoon, which is that big cooldown that he's saving in his back pocket. He's already down his renewal, or his revival, sorry. And Flop actually looking for a drink right now, and Drake immediately notices this situation, pushes him, but Flop did manage to get a little bit of mana. Can they find the crowd control right now? They're over onto Wealthy Man, and they find the damage. They're looking to set him up right now, and they get it. Drake actually getting shot down here. Nice earthen wall totem. He knocks them out of it, though. Beautiful knock there by Wealthy Man. Cubsy trying to get some damage going here with his pets and wealthy man now caught up in a stun here he's got no blink right now and he will trinket out of that one instead there's the stun onto flop and they find the freezing trap can they find the follow-up doesn't look like they will be finding it instead they're swapping over onto cubsy here luminosity gaming showing a little bit of restraint right now they don't want to overcommit. they don't want to spend any of their big cooldowns because they use those to push forward when they're going for those kills i do believe on this map it looks like they want to kill flop but if he's playing too far away if he's playing too defensive they could easily take down wealthy man or cubsy all right, here we go. Icy Veins is up for Wealthy Man. How much damage is he going to get out? He's pressured with that Beast of Wrath. It's tough for him to turn around any sort of damage because of that Wake of Ashes stun onto Flop. Are they swapping onto him? It looks like they want to, but a Polymorph onto Drake is denying all of the damage. They're going to have to get back onto Wealthy Man as soon as possible, but Prev caught into a leg sweep. Huge swing of damage onto Prev. He gets knocked out of the Earthen Wall with that Ring of Peace, but Prev repositions back into it on the Frozen Orb, getting coiled now and passed potentially out of the Earthen Wall totem. He's able to stay inside of its defense, but Polymorph's onto Brain. It doesn't look like it matters too much as he is now out and free now into a stun swapping back onto drake trying to keep pressure there wealth man still holds on to two ice blocks but flops mana is not good and if luminosity gaming continue to keep this aggression that is going to be the main reason they win blinding light onto floppy's crowd control wealth man blinks away from the final reckoning but it's still connected and if drake does some damage here it's gonna be devastating he goes into the polymorph they need to get drake out of these polymorphs they dispel it they stop the re flops in a scatter that's going to be a block Flop is very low. Or now they're going to swap the flop. Oh, Huge damage oh. on the flop on match point. He can't afford to choke. He trades out the restoral and manages to get a big heal onto himself and Wealthy Man and keep them in the fight. This is really scary here for Where's Gordy. These constant swaps are just absolutely devastating. Flop does what he needs to, though. He holds onto his trinket, holds onto the life cocoon. He goes for the shadow meld, looking to drink really nicely done. If he can actually recover a lot of mana here, that's going to be massive. Nice defense here by Cubsy. And they might be able to get the Divine Shield from Drake. No, it does not look like they can, but so much on the line. Where's Gordy? If they have to win this game, if they want to stay in the tournament, Luminosity Gaming, they can smell that first place finish once again. But Where's Gordy is not making it easy. Drake caught in a stun right now. Forced back to the pillar. Going to have to retreat and play a little bit of defense. Going to bide his time. Wait for some of those cooldowns to rotate back up so they can actually make a push. But every time they hide, Flop is just sitting drink. down for a drink and really buying that late game potential advantage. Yeah, Flop now tied up his mana here with Brain, but Dampening is also stacking up. Oh! a real win condition. Wealthy Man with a beautiful all the time, oh, but he's oh! still getting crushed. And Flop will trade out his Trinket and his Life Cocoon right there. Close call, but they do manage to save that second Ice Block. However, that means that potentially Flop is going to be an exposed target. They've been targeting him the whole game. He's going to need to make sure that he relays his port. He just did there on that a little pillar over there next to him so he needs to try to cut away from that position so he can get a good port if they try to stun him and swap to him he's playing way too close to the port right now i feel like and that's exactly what luminosity gaming wants right now they're chasing him down where is flop's port he's gonna gate away from it beautifully done there as he does manage to close out the, the gap here and get a little bit of healing onto wealthy man and now cubsy and wealthy man they're kind of free reign with flop in the back flop potentially sitting down for a drink here as well and that's going to allow them to kind of just reset their positioning but at the same time time luminosity this is where they plot and scheme and they get ready for that next big push he has the restore all in his back pocket if they decide to go after flop wealthy man still has another ice block so the next push shouldn't be deadly but drake right now might have bitten off a little bit more than he can chew he's taking so much damage here from cubs he might just die behind the pillar and that will be the divine shield huge cooldown coming out they're feeling the pressure on the side of luminosity gaming from cubsy and from dampening now, all that little poke damage is starting to add up. Brain is struggling to heal through. He's got Healing Tide Totem down, and even that isn't completely topping his team. Drake is boldly going where no Red Paladin has gone before. The middle of the map against Mage Lock with no <laughs> bubble. Is he going to be able to connect to his target right now? He's stunned up. He just can't move. They're in the Earthen Wall Totem trying to post up for a second and recover before they continue the chase here, but they've still got to get through another Ice Block, another Life Cocoon. Wealthy Man uh, now in line of sight and in range. Drake is charging forward. Maybe they go after Cubsy here in this position. He's got his port but it's on top of brain and prev he's gonna port away from flop if he ports this is dangerous for cubsy oh, it's match oh, point oh. it's lights out here he's gonna go down and luminosity gaming are uncontested the best team in north america 
I mean, this is just absolutely unbelievable. I did not expect to see Luminosity Gaming bring in Rain on the Shaman, Draco on the Rep Paladin, and Prev playing not only the Demonology Warlock at such a high level, but also that Beast Mastery Hunter. These guys are looking unstoppable. They find these win conditions. They don't look at Cubsy the entire game, but it's this final setup to just get aggressive on him, and they are able to take him down and clean sweep the finals. Unbelievable. I really didn't think this was going to be a clean sweep, but here we are, Luminosity Gaming, proving me wrong, playing an insane game here, and we can see some of the highlights here. Flop, getting crowd control. They're going after Wealthman. I think this is where he trinket life cocoons. Actually, no, this is the first ice block. This is still uh, quite early on in the match, and then here, another close call here. This is the trinket life cocoon. I do believe this is the ultimate time. There's the trinket. There's the life cocoon coming out, and this is where they get that opening. You know, they're back at the pillar right now. They're plotting. They're scheming. Me. they're planning their next attack and Cubsy slowly rotting down here a little bit you know they're making it look like they want to go after wealthy man they're still pressuring wealthy man they're making flop very scared of these swaps here onto him as well and this is where drake actually had to use his bubble and you know luminosity starts to feel the pressure if they could just hold on a little bit longer but here they decide to go for it Cubsy has his unending resolve here so i want to know actually exactly what happened here when did he actually use that because this was the setup I feel like he used it and died through. He just dropped so low right here. A kick onto flop and right. Yeah, that's a way too late to use that unending resolve. He doesn't have his trinket. Actually, does he have his human ratio right there? Uh, it doesn't show, I think, if there if it is on cooldown from the trinket. I think that's on the UI. I'm pretty sure he did not have it. And unfortunately, there it is going to be, uh, you know, Cubsy falling. But fortunately for Luminosity Gaming, they will be the North American champions winning out another massive tournament here, getting $70,000. But for where is Gordy? Kind of newly formed roster, you know. They lost a lot of players. They lost Snut and Chanimal at the start of the year. They kind of rebuilt their team with Chan, rebuilt their team with Flop. And what a story it has been. They've you know, been the only team to really contest Luminosity in North America. Really having a great season, finishing it in second place. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm, you know, to give credit to Where's Gordy too, I feel like this is a roster that... The players individually have, have kind of always been around in the scene, but they haven't really found a team that they could take it all the way to the end to. to. And, they, and they basically did that here today. They got second place. That's tremendous for a newly newly formed roster, as you mentioned, Zico. And I, I feel like this is only the beginning for them, Ben. Yeah, I mean, there really is no doubt about it. I feel like a lot of the teams have leveled up and shown you know, their flexibility. Uh, we've thrown criticism to some teams in the past, um, you know, sometimes uh, players and teams are able to just kind of sit in one meta and pull it off. Uh, but I think Luminosity Gaming has really shown here today with their flexibility, with the comps that they run, just what a dominant team that they are. Um, you know, Brain getting off the Holy Paladin, something which is obviously his comfort pick, getting on the Shaman, Prev as well, just mixing it up. I mean, this guy, I think he started as a Boomkin, going over to a yep. Shadow <laughs> Priest, playing a Warlock. Like, maybe he'll end up playing the Mage. Like, they're just... <laughs> Such a phenomenal roster, and Drake as well. His debut on the Windwalker Monk. Um, one of the best monks I've seen do it, really, in North America. And now just playing every melee at the top level. So I don't know who's going to beat these guys, but <laughs> it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I feel like that's been the question since they came onto the scene when it comes to Luminosity, when it comes to Kawhi. Like, who's going to beat them and how are they going to do it? You know, where's Gordy? They did have them earlier today. They, uh, you know, had them in the last cup as well. But Luminosity, like, like they always do, very on brand for them, just kind of figured something out in the middle of the day um, under, on this, uh, under all this pressure. And they just do it every time. They're so methodical with everything that they do. I mean, it's just insanely impressive that they're able to take these impossible situations situations come up with a comp that we don't really see them play um, or anyone has really played too much in AWC at least for this expansion super tease and just implement it with such perfection that they're able to 4-0 a team like where's Gordy yeah I mean the fact that they were able to win mirrors uh, against liquid as well so confidently it felt like they yeah. were getting to the point where they were just going to be able to 3-0 them uh, in the future after that series they had answers for everything they all had to adapt they all had to play alts they all had to get out of their comfort zones um, throughout this season. They didn't let the the end of the cup stage get to them where other teams were starting to take uh, wins off them. They just came into this ready and prepared, homework done. Um, they knew the assign, they understood the assignments. I'm really glad they brought the Beast Mastery Hunter in because I feel like on day one, it showed potential. 
Uh, they had that one awkward moment where they died with a lot of cooldowns, but it, it was definitely the better option. And you can see it here with the 4-0 that they got with it. It's just so much pressure against a mage and the caster compositions that uh, Where's Gordy were bringing to the competition. So I'm glad that they didn't uh, kind of get scared away from doing it here in the grand finals. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I I, I do want to give a, a thank you as well to Luminosity Gaming as an org, as well as Echo for, you know, investing in WoW Esports. It's great to have new orgs come into the scene, pick up teams, pick up teams that really deserve it. Also, like Luminosity Gaming, and then, you know, they got the victory. So it was clearly a, a good choice for them to pick up that roster. So uh, that is going to conclude North America and EU. And... I mean, this has been a, a great weekend of games. I, I've been having a great time watching these games. Zico, do you have a favorite moment from today or this weekend? Oh, that's I threw that's you a, a big question one. again. I'm sorry. Did that to you? <laughs> I don't know why. Just so you know, you were you hadn't answered answered a question in like a couple rounds, so it's just a coincidence. I promise. Uh, favorite moment? I don't know. I feel like uh, I really enjoyed the Luminosity Liquid series. It was a lot of close moments there. Uh, just in general, I think it's been a great tournament. I think the semifinals, uh, you know, between Luminosity and Where's Gordy that kind of put them into the finals was definitely uh, really, really big. Um, and of course, in Europe as well, just watching the Destrolock uh, of Channel, really the only Destrolock we saw this entire weekend uh, with the Assassination Rogue uh, of Waz. Uh, also, pretty much the only Assassination Rogue that we really saw, if you exclude kind of the Gauntlet. Uh, I think actually the Golden Guardians did play it one time as well, but they lost. Um, so just in general, uh, I think it's uh, been a pretty good uh, weekend of games. Seen a, lo seen a lot of uh, different, uh, you know, flexible picks. And uh, of course, Matt on that Evoker, I really enjoyed watching that as well. Kind of seeing how far ahead he seemed uh, compared to the other Evokers. But here we have them, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, trophies of this season. North America, first place gold medal of course that's one is gonna be going to <laughs> uh, that one is gonna be going of course to luminosity and then second place going to where is gordy and third place also gonna be going to team liquid so congratulations to that the winners europe. they're gonna get their prize money uh yeah though the third place says europe yeah wait what's going on yeah, with that yeah. <laughs> does that yeah, mean it's a higher place. quality medal <laughs> maybe yeah who what read what uh what region got got second place then if if he was getting third North Mare's getting first. Hmm. <laughs> no, sorry to cut you off, though, but yeah, well, well done to everyone that competed today. Here's a breakdown of the prize pool. $70,000 for first place. It was an over $300,000 prize pool this weekend alone, and that's not to mention all the prize pools for every single cup leading up to this as well. So, uh, yeah, these players did good. There was a, you know, it was a lot of work. I know that these players um, put in just so much time. You can really tell the ones that sort of put put in the work, put in the practice, you know, made those sort of big brain plays of, of what they're going to, you know, experiment with in terms of compositions. And uh, definitely, definitely sh uh, was was exemplified this weekend, I would say, Ven. Yeah, there, there really is no doubt about it. I feel like all the teams that did make it into the top four, uh, you know, I want to say especially the teams that made it through, you know, the gauntlet, which was really difficult and something I particularly enjoyed this year, to be honest with you. I thought yeah. the gauntlet was absolutely incredible. So hopefully that continues because it's super hyped to see, you know, the eight seed and seven seed have to basically battle it out for their lives um, and make it through, you know, a very treacherous amount of gameplay. Um, but yeah, these teams have prepared a lot. It's been awesome to see uh, i think we've seen grade a performances from basically all the teams and uh, it's been my absolute pleasure to watch it yeah absolutely if you guys are watching from home let us know uh in chat who or maybe on twitter at wow esports what your favorite moment uh, is what your favorite team was who you were rooting for and uh it's uh it, it's been it's been great to see we do have more coming of course down the line and then you know we also had MDI just wrap up too. So this is kind of like the last event for, for a while for WoW Esports. So Super Tease, what about you? I haven't really asked you. What about your your uh, favorite moment this season? Favorite moment? I mean, the Waz 1 HP moment was a pretty clutch <laughs> moment. Like that's literally never happened. Somebody has actually hit one hit point. So if you missed that series between uh, Echo and Admiral's Esports on hook point, like to watch that game again, very nail biter one there. I really like the heroic moments Sidu had in the games that he won for his team. Uh, like that first round against uh, Luminosity on Ashamane's Fall, like they were just done. They they had nothing. And the only reason they got to keep going was Sidu in that one heroic moment. So definitely a highlight for me. Yeah. I wish we gave out awards 
for for players like uh, you know best rookie, big, most improved, uh, MVP, something like that. I don't know. Is there any of those kind of awards that you guys can think of? I think on the top of my head, that's biggest flop. Big one. I don't know if you want to be a little toxic. <laughs> biggest, <laughs> biggest flop. Biggest <laughs> flop. <laughs> unfortunately, like no flame. It's probably Swapsy, right? Like. No Ugh. bubble two games. I feel like it's got a. I've been there. I know what it's like. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, the down goes award. Is it? Can we call it the down goes? Yes, award? the down like, goes honorary award. Honorary Finruki award. Like, no, I don't like that. You don't yeah, want the you down have goes to be award. the one that gives them the medal. Then, then. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a. It's not a medal. It doesn't feel like an accomplishment. You know, it's more like yeah. a curse. It's the award that you try and dodge. Nobody wants it. <laughs> like, if it, if a tournament ends and nobody gets it, then you know you did good uh, in that situation. So. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think like rookie. Like, what was what, who was our newest player? That did I think really Brunetti well? is Brunetti still Brunetti. our newest player. Well, I feel like he was the most successful <laughs> rookie, at least. Yeah, rookie, rookie of the year, I think is how it's usually referred to as. Can we give it to Brunetti. All right, is that Brunetti? Yeah, we can give it to Brunetti. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Hey, boom. What are the what are uh, the other titles? I don't Channel. know. I'm just making this up. Scene. Yeah, true. Channel oh, yeah. gets the rookie of the year. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. MVP. Who's an MVP for a team? Cdu's um, got to be an MVP. Even though they didn't win, I feel like Cdu is an MVP. Like he was pumping heels out in those games, and, and yeah. like he's get his side was getting heavily out damaged. So I feel like Cdu would be an MVP uh, for this week. I feel like Prev maybe because if he didn't I was gonna play say Hunter. He didn't yeah. play Hunter and he didn't play Warlock, both of those. Like, I don't think they would have won. So, Prev would definitely mm -hmm. be one for me, too. And then Europe, uh, Europe is pretty good. Drake. Tough. I think, uh, I think Drake Luxia is the MVP. Adapting the whole team. Miss Weaver. The whole team. Looks... You're just going to give MVP to the whole team? Uh, yeah, I feel like they're all the MVP. <laughs> yeah. All right. What about, what about Seralium? Is, is he an MVP this weekend? Best. Well, yeah, yo, who's weekend. the best bench warmer? The best bench warmer. Oh, my warmer. God. <laughs> Is that the me? best I mean, water boy, the best water boy. <laughs> well, you thing just is, made like, a I, meme. I, I guarantee you that Seralium was playing for Osmage against those guys in war mm -hmm. games, like playing against yeah. them, you know, trying to help them warm up and stuff. So yeah. uh, that can be a very crucial role, also. But I also yeah. just want to give a big shout out to Meh, also. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. he plays the best preservation of Ochre I've ever seen. I played against him before in some solo shuffles. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I think he was a huge part to their team's success on that class. Yep. Yeah. I think so. And, 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 you know, also to go back to, to like the bench warming conversation, every single team that we've spoken to just kind of on like, oh, you know, how, how do you sort of help your team if you're the fourth member and every single time the team say like they're no matter how often they play that's not really the full story they're always like making plays behind the scenes uh you know like you said sort of helping with with uh war games as well and practicing and if they're there and they're ready like we saw raiku come off the bench after not seeing him for several series earlier on today and he just like jumped right back onto in into it like he didn't miss a beat so that just goes to show how important having a well-rounded roster can be all right, what other awards? We're we're trying for for context right now, chat. We're trying to convince Luminosity Gaming to do an interview. So, uh we're 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 coming up with some some awards in the meantime to see if we can make that happen, but I can't I can't think of any other fun awards. Best multi-class. I feel like that kind of went into best healer, all right? Would it be Meh? Since you kind of gave him a shout out. I mean, it's met and brain of the easy answers, right? Like they both won. Yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I don't need to think about that. Uh, it's got to be man. It's got to be brain. They both won if it's best healer. Um, true. It's got like. What about some teams that kind of stuck to their guns? Like, uh, you know, it was a really fun team. It was uh, My Way? Rat, Xenolin. I like yeah. watching yeah. the Ugly oh, this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fiends. You like the Fiends? Yeah, the Fiends. fiends. They had a great run. Though, like that. Yeah, they had a great run, and I mean, they only played the one composition, the one specific specs, and I, I think they did pretty good, all things considered. What about the best uh, tweets? <laughs> Tony, easy. <laughs> That's what I like was either, hoping you were going to say. It's either Tony that. or I feel like it's either Tony or C Do. Is where I'm leaning right now. <laughs> best hmm. tweets. Have a tweet off. So <laughs> Tony, maybe like hackle out loud a few times with some of his tweets but then also blizzo's screenshot of the one percent uh or the one the one health one percent one was a pretty good one too yeah
Okay. Well, it sounds like we have the interview ready, and I believe we're joined with Brain. Hello, Brain. Hello. Can you guys hear me? We can. Yes. How are you? Oh, How are you feeling? <clears throat> I'm good. That was definitely a very intense two series we had. I'm like so tired now. And I have a pretty bad cough, so sorry if I start coughing. No, it's all right. I'm <laughs> fine. All right, I, I'm going to hand it off to these guys, actually, for, for more sort of uh, game-related questions. Zico, Ven, do, do either of you have some questions for Brain here? Yeah, I mean, first of all, we appreciate you being here, you know. Congratulations on the win. Uh, you know, I really feel like you guys played insane. And I feel like you guys, uh, we, we've always kind of bigged you up as the Holy Paladin. But now you've been playing the rest of Shaman. Is that something you've been playing, like, a lot? <laughs> um... I did play Shaman like a little bit back in Shadowlands for like a circuit, I think, in like the finals. But yeah, pretty much ever since like the big patch came out like two weeks ago, I think, I've only been playing like Shaman and Mistweaver. Because Holy Pally is just unfortunately like not playable now. So got to drop that. No more Holy Pally for me, I think, until it's better. Uh, okay. And then. some slight buffs soon, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw slight that. buffs soon. Hopefully, we'll see Rain uh, that, back yeah. on the Paladin. Hopefully. But I, I, yeah, I was, I was just gonna say we've been talking about on the desk a little bit about you know for a long time. You guys normally, if you can stick to one composition, it seems like you really like to. You know, you pick a really strong composition that's well rounded. And you guys mm -hmm. kind of just run it over and over and over, and you're just playing a comp, you know, like the Shadow Priest Rogue Paladin that a lot of other people weren't playing. Yeah, and making it work. Uh, was it just like, was it the meta that kind of just forced you guys into picking up all these different classes? Because I feel like we're seeing everyone on your roster really like flex with lots of different roles. I think like we usually do play like one comp a lot, mainly because when we lose or if we're struggling, I feel like we usually just like know what went wrong or like what we did wrong, what we can do better. So we usually try to do better the next game until, uh, until we like figure out if the matchup is just like insanely hard or not. But I do think in this meta, like, Rogue Shadow Priest Pally is definitely not playable. Like, we're just going to get ran over by, like, Demo Locks, Reds. And I feel like those classes are just way too strong right now to, like, not at least play with one of them. So we kind of just went with the meta. Red Demo Shaman seems like a very strong, like, overall comp. And it, it feels like there's not too many, like, bad matchups for it. Except Major Lock, actually. Like, I feel like we had to kind of play Red Hunter because Major Lock was, like, just felt, like, pretty much unwinnable as a Demo Lock. What, uh, after you guys lost yesterday to Where's Gordy, um, you guys tried a few different yeah. compositions. What was the kind of, what was your game plan after that? What level of preparation did you put in for uh, today's rematch? <laughs> well, like we, I'm sure you guys remember we picked up like, where we picked Red Hunter on Imperium Domain. And I felt like yeah. we had like insane pressure. Like we were, we got block and the Misty Ray was like running out of mana, but then kind of just flopped because I definitely could have like tremored that fear that Drake was in last, or yesterday. But we just kind of died for no, like pretty much off of nothing. So we knew that like that matchup felt really good. We just kind of messed up defensively. But then at the same time, we kind of just picked like Red Demo into the small maps because we feel like we could actually like punish the mage and kind of get setups going. Whereas on the big maps, we couldn't. So we kind of just went with Red Hunter there. Yeah. Okay. To kind of... No, no, Sorry, go ahead, on. Zico. I was just gonna say, speaking of Red Demo, I know Sid really, really wanted to know this uh, earlier on. Mm -hmm. uh, he he was asked. Well, we were commentating your games against the uh, Liquid, and uh, you know, like yeah. uh, there was one game where you kind of were just like sitting back a little bit and kind of waiting a little bit for dampening, and then you kind of made a big push and started like kind of poking them out. And I know Sid really wanted to know, like, uh, what was kind of the thought process like? Like, were you guys uh, thinking, okay, <laughs> at this point in dampening, we want to go for the big push? Like, was there like a critical point, like? that you guys were trying to hit or like you know save your cooldowns for i think like in the mirror it kind of felt bad to be the team like pushing onto the team that was sitting on the pillar and i think they were playing kind of around their pillar and every time we pushed in like we just gave them kind of their setup for free almost and it was really hard for us to get cc on like the shaman or anything so we kind of just decided to like mirror what they were doing and just kind of sit back and wait for our cooldowns to come back also because we knew like in damp it's kind of just like cooldown trading whoever gets like a tyrant off and stops the tyrant is probably going to win. So we kind of just pulled back until we got our cooldowns back. Okay. Yeah, I like that. that. That was a really fun series for me to watch, actually. Yeah, that was definitely a very intense uh, series. 
<laughs> fun, yeah. fun for us to watch, but not so fun <laughs> to be in. <laughs> yeah, there's like 12 minute games. Super tiring. Yeah. Uh, well, we actually do have Supatis in voice. We just can't see him. Sid, do you have any questions for Brain before we kind of send him off? I mean, Zico just stole my question. <laughs> I, I just wanted to know if there was like a specific <laughs> number. Like, is it 50% dampening where we need to start thinking about playing to win? Because it feels like for a lot of the game, you guys were, all, both teams were like stalemate. Like, we're not even going to try and do something because it needs to be a certain number before this feels like it's going to stick for us. Yeah, I feel like it was probably like 50%. When we have like Tyrant, Wings, all our CC, we probably just send to go and then pull back if we can. And then the next year after that, at like 60% damp, I think, is when the game ended like twice. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for uh, actually speaking with us. We, we love getting to kind of pick the brains of, of you and your team. But uh, is there anything that you would like to yeah, say to anyone watching after? Um. Yeah, definitely shout out to Luminosity Gaming for supporting us and sponsoring us. And it's just sick when like orgs bring, you know, more attention to the WoW esports scene and gives like yeah. more opportunities to all the players. And of course, shout out to like all the players I played over this weekend too, because this tournament was honestly like one of the most fun ones playing on like alts and stuff. It was like super intense as always. Shout out to like Liquid, Where's Gordy, Golden Guardians, and especially shout out to like Jelly Beans too. Because he definitely helped us with like a lot of hunter things. He gave us like the hunter secret tech and everything for that last series. So <laughs> big shout out to Vince, of course. Love that, love that. Yeah, I mean, what is it like? I mean, Luminosity, you know, they're a tier one org. They they invested in WoW Esports, which we love. It seems like they've kind of treated you guys really well. They let you guys sort of just do your thing, which is really, yeah, got to be a nice sure. experience. They just let us rock and like. They're super supportive and they always have like a bunch of resources and people that are willing to help us if we ever need anything from them pretty much. So super cool work all around. Awesome. Love to hear it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brain. We're going to let you uh, rest and congratulations to you and the team once again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was Brain from Luminosity Gaming. Rare interview that we get from that team, but it's great to be able to speak with them. A lot of good insight from him as well. Super Tease, I think we've got you back now. Nice, nice to be back. I was, I was never gone. I was just lurking in the shadows, <laughs> waiting yeah. for my moment, and now is the time. <laughs> now is the time. All right, well, that is going to wrap things up for us for season one of AWC. Congratulations once again to Echo and Luminosity Gaming and also huge shout out to everyone working behind the scenes as well. It's been a like weekend after weekend with this uh, with this crew working both MBI and AWC and there's just so many people involved that made this happen from mods to admins to observers production. So many people here to make these shows possible and that is not the Ooh. end of content for wow we've got awc and the great push season two coming up of course match patch 10.1 is live on may 2nd super excited for that size season two signups open as well in may and then awc season two for june and then july of course we've got the great push season two if you don't know what that is it's it's a sort of similar to mdi it's a it's a dungeon I'll, I'll let them explain it, but uh, basically just a lot of PvE, a lot of really big keys in that one if you're interested in checking out some some sort of M-plus content. So there's a lot coming up. I mean, this isn't even a, a graphic of just all the content that WoW has coming up um, in, you know, in the next coming months. It, it's an exciting time for WoW. That logo looks sick. I didn't even know that that was the logo <laughs> yeah. for the patch. Oh, yeah. Like the I, I don't think it's often we see like the W like highlighted in a different, mm. it's like an inverted color. Yeah, it looks true. sick. Yeah, I'm excited for the cave people, uh, like the mole people in 10.1. They, they're not the drog bar, right? It's the new ones on the, I, uh, I can't remember what their names are. I, I forget what they're called. They just look like mole people. I don't know, like little gophers or something. Just hang out in the dirt. I'd be to be honest, I don't know anything about that. But what I do know <laughs> is for the AWC season two and patch 10.1, I'm really excited because we're going to be getting a bunch of new honor talents and honor talents mm -hmm. are revamped, yes. which I think is going to be a huge feature. So some really cool ideas uh, popping up, which I think is going to make for some really interesting gameplay. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I agree. I watched your video. It's very ex uh very good explanation of, of all the talents coming up. So if you want info on that, but yeah, I, I'm excited for that as well. Hopefully you guys are also, but that is it 
for us. If you would like to have updates of the upcoming content for WoW Esports, you can follow us on Twitter at WoW Esports, or you can subscribe on YouTube and follow us here on Twitch. And thank you guys so much. We will see you in June.